It's the Bob and Tom Show. Hello, everyone. I'm Chick McGee, and this is my first song. <laughs> it's a song about something I'm very familiar with. My life as a ladies' man. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. I know that. <laughs> Tell me something I don't know. <laughs> of that nasty stuff. <laughs> nasty stuff. Nasty stuff. Nasty stuff. I'm a sex machine. <laughs> Stuff. That's right. I am bad. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. You bad. Ass. You bad. You bad. You bad. I am a bad ass. You <laughs> bad. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Testify. Uh, I'd give that a right on, brother. <laughs> Word up. I, I'm sorry. I, I, I don't know what you're saying. Chicken uh-huh. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'm, I'm feeling it. I dance as good as I walk. And frankly, I'm a little frightened. <laughs> Lay it on me, ladies. He can't get enough. Give it up. He can't get enough. Give it up for the Mac Daddy. He can't get enough. I can't get enough. Nasty stuff. Nasty stuff. Oh, oh my goodness. Nasty stuff. This, this has never, this has never happened before. I, I'm, I, I apologize. Nasty stuff. Does anyone have a towel or a moist towelette? <laughs> well, thanks for the bump and grind. I've got to bust a move. Peace out. Nasty stuff. Nasty stuff. Hey, how about that damn guy, huh? Wow. Good morning. It's the Bob and Tom Show. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Jess Hooker at the news desk. Hello. There's Pat Godwin in the performance room. Hey, Chick. Hello, Pat. How you feeling? A little bit better. Thank you for asking. What's the joke there? Aren't you supposed to say, why don't you feel me? Or something like that? How you feeling? That'd be a nice why don't you come over here and feel me? I don't think that's a joke, too. <laughs> Is that a joke? <laughs> I don't think so. There's Josh Arnold. Hi. We've got Mumbling Tom today. There's Ace Cosby. Oh, I was just talking about the nasty stuff. I'm, uh... <laughs> Chick McGee, and here's Tom. Here's Walt. Hi, Tom. How are you, buddy? Good. All right. R- R- Rain her in. Here we go. Now, are we going to be able to get a song out of you, Pat? Is your voice okay? I think so. Okay. <laughs> okay. I think we're going to be okay. That's helpful. Take it um, easy at first. Okay. Well, uh, we got a big show coming up. Uh, with uh, Patty G, Willie G, Jeff Oske, Joshy, Christy, yours truly. It's going to be the evening of this Friday evening, I should say, at uh, <laughs> Charleston's the big theater there on the Charleston Coliseum and Convention Center. So this is the evening of Friday, right? The evening of Friday. Yes. <laughs> this is the evening of the day, as the song goes. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. Now, uh, but we'll be there in the morning as well with a very special live event and yeah. live show featuring Duke Tomato and the Power Trio for the morning show. I plan to move in Thursday. I'm going to get a house, marry a nice local girl, uh, mm. go, go do the show uh, Friday morning, and get divorced and come back home. What do you think? Huh. I'm going to become a part of the community. Oh, that's right. Oh, very nice. Uh, huh? Just real like quick. A full couple days. That's right. A full, a rich, full life for a couple Sounds days. Sounds good. Uh, uh, we okay. hope to see you there in Charleston, West Virginia, coming up this Friday. Now, big news in sports. Chick McGee, last night. <laughs> you mean Caitlin Clark and her 41 points, her nine three-pointers, and uh, carrying the, uh, the Iowa Hawkeyes. You know uh, what I've realized about Caitlin Clark? She's good. Yeah, she's very wow. good. Uh, <laughs> Iowa winning 94-87 uh, last night over and the, defending and the ex- champ. Shut up, and LSU. They, and they painted the court right this time. Yes, that's true. That was my favorite story yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is, uh, is going to be an uphill climb, kids, today. No, does, you you want to hear why I like the story even more? I, 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 I do, yes. <laughs> Now, once again, uh, Ace, I'll talk to you since you're reasonable. Um, you'll recall that uh, one of the courts had been painted improperly such that the uh, three-point line on one side was uh, a different distance away from the hoop. 
the other side. And at, once they noticed that after four games, they the, both coaches agreed to keep playing. Yeah. I, I heard someone, a comment, commentator yesterday saying, that wouldn't have happened in the men's division. <laughs> This well, is this is like no, because they're treating they're, they're treating the women's division. No, no, they're not. And uh, well, I just thought that. Was I think it's a, I think it's a great new rule, I, and it's a surprise which basket is a little farther <laughs> than the other. Well, that'd be cool, wouldn't it? Yeah, why uh, one not? Of, one of the sports shows they said that they actually shot better from the regular three point line than the one that was closer. Hmm. They probably, probably did. Well, that's because they're probably used that. to it. Yeah. Well. Yeah. I'm, but I mean, to say that know. it was to imply that this wouldn't have happened it was a mistake. Yeah. Every, every, everyone's got to have an angle on it. I mean, if it were a bigger mistake, the coaches would have said, we need to do something about these right. games. Yeah. Instead, they all went, eh, it wasn't a big deal. Right. Final but, scores. And, and final in fact, score. but nobody noticed it for four games. Yeah, exactly. Or whatever. So, uh, kind of fun. So, I'm sorry. I well, we all know your your eyes play tricks on you, don't they? Haven't you heard that? You know? Like, what the hell? What did I just see? You know, stuff like that? No? That doesn't sure. happen to you? Sure. Absolutely. Yeah, I was going to say. And yeah. the ball's smaller. By the way, itty That's, bitty bit, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I can, I can, I can almost palm that basketball. I can't. I have like meat the, hook the hands. The ladies' ball, yeah. The ladies' balls, I can palm those <laughs> <laughs> for whatever that, that came out wrong. For come some in reason. handy. Uh, uh, and the hey, uh, Caitlin, to come here. I want to try something. the. <laughs> Oh, Tom has his own theory. <laughs> Boy, I, uh, Not Clark. I uh, Jenner. Oh, okay. I was going to say. <laughs> the, 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 trying to make the, the national news, huh? I, uh, <laughs> she still have them or she lopped those I called this, uh, I called is that, this is, shot early. Is that I? rude? Yeah. Is that rude to ask? Yeah. No, no. I, I thought she got rid of them. Got Did rid she? of them, yeah. Caitlyn oh, Jenner, yeah. No kidding. Did you hang on to them? You, like... you know, say what you want about Caitlyn Jenner. She that's, had, a, that's a commitment. A hell of a sense of humor, too. Yep. She, sure. Well, yeah. Hey. She's funny. She is. When uh, she was in here as... Uh, as Bruce Jenner. <laughs> Thank you, Christy, for finishing my <laughs> sentence. As Bruce Jenner, yes. Uh, Tom was uh, smitten with Bruce. They uh, really hit it off. Oh, that's cool. Uh, was that was very, inter interesting guy. It was wonderful. At the time. Yeah, if you say. So, yes. I thought so. Very interesting. Did he have the classic Bruce Jenner haircut? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he was here. Yeah. That feathered sort of... Uh, the uh, 80s uh, feathered back? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Is that more objectionable or the uh, mullet? mullet? You know, I, mullet probably. personally, I think the feathered 80s is more objectionable. I but, do, too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> the, the highly uh, uh, coiffed, air-blown. Yeah. I had that for a long time. Both bold looks. Yeah. yeah. Thre brave. Yeah, yes. Brave yes. hairdos. Yes. Courageous. <laughs> I don't know how... You should uh, grow the... Uh, the mad professor mullet in the back. Don't I think you'd look good. The so-called skullet. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think yeah. you'd look real good in that. Yeah, well, I'd need a new apartment. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you would. Place to live. A little safety Probably have to sell She'd my let car. you do that. Uh, she's not going to... Does she get a... I wouldn't up let her let him do that. that. <laughs> the minutiae, really? All right, well... <laughs> Maybe I. <laughs> I'll, I'll have to trim these sideburns before she gets back. I... Oh, that is really your your thing, isn't it? The the big bushy sideburns. That's she's you. wrong, man. I, I'll you tell look her. Good. I like it. That's you <laughs> rocking yeah. it, aren't you? Yeah. Look, you're another woman, to Jess. Uh, oh, I like yeah. the sideburns. Yeah, yeah, yeah cool. always. Very yes. Cool. Why don't? Why stop where you are, man? You got to bring them on down. It, like, maybe like, on. like a chin strap. Like yeah, that. Not that far. No, don't be ridiculous. Who is the guy? That, the guy that did in the summertime. Mungo Jerry. Didn't yeah. he have the don't nothing? Absolutely. Nothing looks worse than a beard with no mustache. There's oh a, yeah, I agree. no one can pull that off. Uh, C. Everett Coop was. Yeah, rather, and that's. I think that's why he Amish? didn't get much farther. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it, it's a terrible look. Can you thing? grow a full beard? Is that your? Can you do that? Uh, I doubt it. No. I want to try. He he had a pretty good uh, goatee there for yeah, a while. It oh, yeah, it was not bad at all. Yeah. Van Dyke, it it know, filled in. Nice. Yeah, it looked yeah. good. Got rid of it. Oh, you have when you have little babies and you've got oh. facial hair, they tend to grab it and yank. Yeah. Well, as Christy you, one morning said, we all stopped having babies at the normal time, <laughs> 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 and you wouldn't have to worry about a child grabbing your goatee, I you weirdo. Sorry. I can't help it. <laughs> these, you know, these sperms are yeah. big swimmers. <laughs> right? I had a dream last night. I was given two babies. Just given? Yeah, to raise. And uh, their names were like D-103 and D-104. They were from uh, some sort of lab. Canaanite. And uh, one of them had a cold, <laughs> and they just came with a letter, and it said D-103 has a cold. Use this spray in its nose. <laughs> that is fascinating. Yes. Really? Have, yeah. Do you have baby fever that bad? 
Apparently. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you do, you'd, be, you'd be a good dad. That'd be fun for you. I wonder how many times or who's willing to admit it that uh, uh, like Tarantino or somebody who was a screenwriter dream that because that is uh, close to being an entirely fleshed out movie. If there. that started, if you the first five minutes, yeah, that's going on. You, I think you're interested. I'm in. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's a great question. The Jeff. elevator pitch is, uh, yeah, I, I'm in. I, but yeah, your uh, premise, if you will, your question rather is a good one. What great works of art? quite literally began as a as a, a sleep dream where they I'm woke gonna, up and wrote down yeah i'm less because sometimes you'll see something and go i don't know what i just watched and and then you read an interview and it's like yeah well i dreamt oh no yeah. wonder yeah it no, was but, only interesting to you no but sometimes there I, I would agree with that having people talk about their dreams is almost always not interesting but there may be great uh, cinematic ideas or novels that could be they woke up and i thought of this and there's well, always the, the, the famous, famous Keith Richards. Keith Richards on the airplane, right? Yeah. He, he had a cassette going, and he was just, he fell asleep with a guitar in his hand. But he woke up, he played it back, and he heard da 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 da. <laughs> That's crazy. Dun, dun, dun. He's and told then, that story a million times. And then didn't McCartney walk around asking everybody, where, where did I hear this song? Yeah, it was yesterday. Eggs, it was, yeah, yeah, he yeah, played yeah. it for Len Lennon. Finally, told him, no, that's that's yours. He that's he your song. And dream. then he and then he famously. He didn't have it was he was doing as you said scrambled eggs not a, not a, not a scrambled eggs and then he was I think he was on a bus or a plane or a taxi and he suddenly thought oh yesterday would fit and he didn't have a pencil or pen and right. got dropped off and ran into the place where he was going to say does somebody give me something to write with and he wrote down yes he asked Lennon about it and Lennon goes no that's your song dummy head that was his, <laughs> that was his pet name for McCartney dummy head wanka wanka and dummy head yeah wanka song you wanka um now uh, uh, coming up. Comedian Frank Caliendo joining us in the studio. The big news last night from the ladies' side is UConn upset uh, USC 80-73. to 73. Uh, Freshman All-American from USC, uh, Juju Watkins, uh, had a run at the end, but just not enough. So you'll have North Carolina State and South Carolina Friday night in the ladies' Final Four, and then Iowa and UConn in the other. And isn't Miss Watkins uh, get supposed to be like the next big thing? Yeah, she's uh, an amazing basketball player. Yes, so absolutely. That, that's that'll be interesting, fun to watch. I, now, could, um, I could not check her one on one. No way, no way in hell. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, now um, uh, we have an interesting story coming up about uh, you and your automobile. Your automobile <laughs> and <laughs> you riding around in my automobile. I love that word. Uh, now, uh, we'll talk about you and your car coming up today and I, I, how uh, fun it is. And we have something really cool from uh, Josh. The world of Velveeta. All I right. know you're a fan. I am a fan. Yeah, it has the best melt rate mm -hmm. of any cheese on the market. And I am so much a fan. I don't care how it's produced. I don't care how they arrive at Velveeta. Just as long as it's boxed up and in front of me. And I think you told me this. Mm -hmm. Well, she told me that. About actually. the color? Yeah. Yeah, about the Velveeta, how yeah, it arrives. Yeah, it comes out in clear blocks. It, it, it comes out on a clear block. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And but again, I, I was the one that I couldn't drink. I couldn't use the green ketchup. The, the, the color, the color yeah, has yeah. to be right. right? Yeah. But yeah, so we'll hear about Velveeta in the news. But right now, we're going from the color yellow in Velveeta to the color orange in your feet to keep your feet and your whole body healthy. <laughs> yes, very nice. And it's not just the color that Sit makes uh, orange insoles so special. It's also what they do for you. They offer arch support and a deep cup to properly support your heel, your feet and thusly your whole body, helping to alleviate any discomfort you have going on. Maybe you've got that back pain that nags you at work, hip pain, knee pain. Look, if you're on your feet working all day, you're putting stress on your body. Orange insoles helps alleviate that stress, especially way better than that uh, thin liner that's in your shoe currently. My gosh, get rid of those. Think of a table. If it's wobbly, it probably doesn't have proper support. The same goes with you. It all starts from the ground up, my friends. And these things are great for all kinds of footwear, work boots, sneakers, dress shoes, you name it. You can find the right fit for you when you take the insole quiz at orangeinsoles.com, answer a few questions, they'll get you hooked up with exactly what you need. No cutting required, by the way. These insoles are true to size, so keep those scissors in the scissor drawer. Do you guys have a scissor drawer? Oh, yeah. I do. Yeah, oh, sure. What else is in your scissor drawer? Oh, all sorts of things. A couple loose batteries. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> Mace. Uh, spool everything. of thread. Mace. Mace, <laughs> Mace. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and not the uh, squirty stuff, the actual medieval mace. Oh, a little tiny mace? Yeah, a little tiny mace. You don't have mace? 
I do not have mace on site. I have it in my car. You should. Well, regardless, the all this bag. stuff can stay in that drawer. I want, need, I want to be attacked. You don't need scissors, oh. spray mace, or a little knight's mace when it comes to orangeinsouls.com. <laughs> hey, head to orangeinsouls.com today for free shipping. Plus, orange insoles come with a 60-day we-want-you-to-be-happy guarantee. So, my gosh, you've got nothing to lose by giving them a try. That's orangeinsouls.com. Please give them a, a visit. Feel better. Do more with Orange Insoles. Your feet are three-dimensional. Remember that. Now, uh, I'll explain why I have mace in my scissor drawer when we come back. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Hey, this is Frank Caliendo, and you're listening to Bob and Tom Radio. And a good morning. Thanks for joining us here on a Tuesday on Bob and Tom. Okay, stop your whining. The guys are going to teach you how to drive. We can't wait. Let's get Christy in the rig. In the rig! Ooh, listen to that <laughs> right. fancy talk. You ready? We're in the truck, but I can't touch the pedals, Jim. Look, I mean, I am way far away. In between your legs, there's a lever. Well, of course, in between my legs, <laughs> there's a lot of things. I'm going to reach back. I'm going to your left, and it'll push the seat forward. In the... All right, here we go. Josh Arnold with a food recommendation for you. Gardner's Wisconsin Cheese, their famous oven baked cheese. It arrives pre baked. You just heat it and eat it, grill it, skillet, or air fry it. Check out their new oven baked cheese flavor, jalapeno. Ooey, gooey, spicy cheese. It's sure to tickle your taste buds with real jalapeno flavor and heat. Perfect for game day parties or anytime. Excuse me, are, um, are you serious with this? I mean, why are you doing this? Me, uh, the real me is right here. I could easily be doing this. We, we don't need you, man. I, uh, look, there's only room for one of us. That's Gardner's Wisconsin Cheese Jalapeno Flavored Oven Baked Cheese. It's now available in Gardner's Oven Baked Bundle Package, so try all the great flavors. Receive free cold pack shipping and free cheese curds when you spend $59 or more at GardnersWisconsinCheese.com. Click the link below and tell them your pal Josh, me the real Josh, from the Bob and Tom Show sent you. Now, are you an iPhone guy? I wasn't, and then I fell victim to the iPhone conspiracy, mm -hmm. uh, which is the, uh, you know, I've decided, my wife was an iPhone user, she's a Mac, she's the Mac one, we mm -hmm. are not compatible in almost every way. And, uh, <laughs> so your wife, your wife's a Mac person, you're a PC guy. Yes, yeah. Because you're an engineer, isn't that typical? Yeah, yeah. Most engineers are engineers PC Engineers like people. to get in and mess with things, and it's really hard to mess with things in a... In a yeah, in and a all the engineers here uh, in this building are, are PC people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you can get into the... Another reason works. I don't socialize with yeah. mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Well, they don't socialize, period, so don't That's true, personal. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, there you go. But uh, for years, I've been trying to uh, get her to PC, and she won't. So she's had the iPhone. Forever, and I decided now I'm finally an iPhone user. I was I had a BlackBerry forever, but I'm now an iPhone. The iPhone people 
it's it's a religion based. It, they are the Jehovah's Witnesses of the 21st century. <laughs> oh, it's a, it's a cult. Come up to if you have a BlackBerry. This is what happens to you. Is that a BlackBerry you have there? Has anyone talked to you about the iPhone? <laughs> yeah. Have you accepted Stephen Jobs as your Lord and Savior? <laughs> <laughs>
Is it's he from just St. Louis? Wait, wait, wait. Why do I think he's from St. Louis? Is he from St. Louis? No, that's no. Nelly. Yeah. St. St. Lunatics? No. no. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, um, that's a stunner. Hip hop guy died early. Um, let's see. Now we've got uh, uh, our Weird Al story coming up. Just banging away. Uh, uh, rock and roll people <laughs> died early. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. A fair amount. Yeah. I, th I think they're. Um, the I think the score club. is about three thousand to two hundred. I think the rock and rollers are winning. Um, the, the, I bring up Weird Al because, uh, I don't know if you saw this story, Vermont State University. VSU? Yeah, sure. They have a class on Weird Al Yankovic. Really? Yeah, their music class. Uh, it's going to be coming up this fall. Uh, it's uh, taught by Professor Brian Warwick. He has worked extensively with Weird Al as really? a recording engineer. Really? So, uh, it's cool. Hmm. It's entitled Weird Al and His Polkas. And, uh, by the way, parenthetically, I should note the following. Um, Weird Al's band is really good. Oh, sure. Uh, I mean, they are really good. They got to be able to play anything. Uh, Rick Derringer uh, playing there? Yeah, I mean, well, on the on the record, certainly, yeah. but his touring band, sure. I'm just, I, they are fantastic. They're really good players. So if you get a chance to see Al, he's he's great. He's been in the studio with us a couple times. Well, we need to get him back. I, I need to meet him. He was a childhood hero. Really? Oh, oh cool. yeah. 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 All right, all right. Remember Al TV on MTV? I do. He'd come in and take over. Yeah. UHF is one of the finest comedies of the last uh, 50 years. Featuring Michael Richards. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Doria yeah. Jackson. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This it, may be, it may be time to do a new version of Eat It in the age of... Um, What's it called? Ozempic. We had that story yesterday, mm -hmm. and whatever it's called, Zeppelin or something. Manjaro, I think it's the other one. Um, I don't know where we'd be uh, as far as uh, footing goes. Uh, <laughs> doing a Michael Jackson song of any type nowadays, I hmm. I just offer that as uh, oh, I see your point. you know something. Yeah. Well, Al didn't tend to go toward the. <laughs> Uh, edgy stuff. It was, <laughs> as you said, more like things about meatloaf and, uh, yeah. <laughs> another one rides the bus, right? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Another one bites the dust, another mm -hmm. one rides the bus. Yeah, I mentioned that. Sharona. Did you? Yeah. Bologna. I missed that one. My Bologna. Oh, certainly a classic. I, this song is just that. six words long. Do you remember what that parodied? <laughs> mm -mm. Uh, oh, this song is just six <laughs> words long. Yeah, yeah. Oh. I got my mind set on you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, 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 That's right. Uh, 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 uh. Now, uh, Pat, are you working on a tribute over there? Got it done. It's done already? Mm -hmm. oh, weird I, Al? Are you yeah. using an accordion sound effect? No, just a little guitar. Oh, okay. Oh, it's, uh, so I can't see in there. Want to hear it now? Uh, no, yeah, I thought I would, I'd uh, love to hear it now. I thought I'd build it up so we could do it later. Yeah, sure. Get your guitar out. But I'm ready to go later now. Whenever I'll do you it want. now. You know, Tom. Jeez. Yeah. Yes. Yesterday, I sick, was man. accused of being quite the dick, and I'm doubling down today, trying not to be a dick. Okay, that's and fine. And you, you've got the dick mantle today. No, I mean, I thought, of course, I wanted to play it now. Why do you think okay. I'm playing it? All right. Okay. okay. Yeah, they're teaching a little class on Weird Al. So, uh, if you don't know much about comedy, <laughs> you don't know much about parody, and you want to learn about poetry how to never change the original melody weird al teaches you that my bologna is much funnier than my sharona <laughs> what a weird owl world this will be there's a class that you can take with your pals that teaches you all about weird owl don't know much about English lit, but you can change, beat it to eat it. Okay, class, let's discuss the genius of another one rides the bus. Oh, what a weird owl world this will be. <laughs> now, I don't claim to be Carlin or Pryor, and this could be jealousy. Oh, but I never laughed once, not once, even maybe at a Weird Al parody. <laughs> me. I met Weird Al once out in L.A. <laughs> he was the nicest guy I'd have to say. Who had his movie made me laugh out loud, but not one song, not one, never know how. <laughs> like a virgin now, like a surgeon. <laughs> Learn how to take a song and make your own version. What a weird owl world this will be. Like pooping in an empty Pringles can for me. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, weird owl. Woo! 
Yeah, all right. A nice, a nice original song about about song parodies. Well, That's thank you, teaching, thank yeah. you very he much. Certainly Patty had his G. misses. Uh, I want a new duck, not uh, his finest hour. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and don't you? I forgot st- about that. One. Don't you still have the Pringles can with the uh, the, the the duty in it over there? Isn't yeah, it? I do. Yeah. Isn't that it? Yeah, yeah. But maybe we can bring that song back. It's kind of a Christmassy thing, but uh, <laughs> one of my favorite songs from last year, a parody. Do it down uh, in West Virginia, maybe. A little. You want to do that live in West Virginia? Sure, okay. Is uh, it seasonal? I didn't know nah. the Christmas angle, huh? Yeah. Okay. Right? It's not seasonal, but I'll do it. I mean, it's a seasonal. Never mind. <laughs> um, coming up this uh, this uh, Friday, once again, the show coming to you live from Charleston, West Virginia. And uh, we're looking forward to it. It's a very special morning show. We'll have a very special commemorative uh, something something for everyone who attends in the morning. Is it's that a, right? It's a poster. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> I, uh, and a puppy. Long and story. a puppy. Puppy for and everybody. A, show. And, a, and a new duck. Uh, <laughs> I want, want a new duck. duck. We'll at the theater at the Charleston Coliseum and Convention Center starting at 6 a. Eastern, Eastern daylight, daylight time. time. That's right. And Don't show uh, up Eastern Standard Time. You'll be early. No, late, late. Let's yeah. confuse no. them. Okay, okay, yeah, we'll be there. Uh, and then that evening we have uh, Josh, Jeff Oskey, Willie G, Patty G. I'll be your host with Christy Lee for a special comedy show. Ticketmaster.com for information. We now return to the sports page with Mr. McGee. Uh, last night we had uh, women's college basketball. That's right. Caitlin Clark made nine three-pointers and finished with 41 points and 12 assists. Uh, they call them uh, dishes, dimes, Tom. And uh, Iowa knocked defending national champion LSU out of the tournament. Uh, 94-87, the Hawkeyes winning and advanced to their second straight final four. Here's Caitlin Clark after the win. It's not about last year. You worry too much about the past. You know, you're going to get caught up in that. It's about being present, being where your feet are. Don't worry about being in the final four, be in this moment, being the Elite Eight. Um, you know, enjoy that and soak that in. And, you know, that's what's going to allow you to win 40 minutes. And that's exactly what we did. And, you know, I thought we just played a really good basketball game. When they went on their runs, we always had an answer. Um, and that's that's all you can ask of your team. Be here now, Tom. I like that phrase, be where your feet are. Yes, mm-hmm. you should uh, you should try that. Being where my feet are? Being in the in the moment. I have trouble doing that, but I'm going to remember it that way now. Mm-hmm. Okay. Be, be where your feet are. That's right. You don't, know where my feet are. They're right here. But don't, uh, you know, coming up Friday, or, I mean, it is, but let's, well, I'm what promoting, about today? I, 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 the, I'm present right now. I was promoting something. That, <laughs> oh, it's, it's unbelievable. It's like, I'd rather have my dog co-hosting today. <laughs> of course I'm promoting our event Friday. Are you going to be there? Or are you going to uh, be where your feet are? Partially. Okay, okay, good. As soon as I get back on the plane, I won't be there. <laughs> I'll be on the plane. <laughs> anyway, a UConn wins 80-73 to 73 over uh, USC. Somewhat of an upset. So uh, next week, uh, Friday night, actually, uh, in the uh, women's Final Four, you got North Carolina State and South Carolina and Iowa and UConn. And then the championship game will be on Sunday, Sunday. And last night, Major League Baseball time, we had a no-no. Really? That's right, Ronel Blanco, which means Ronnie White. (laughs) Uh, The Astros threw the first no-hitter of the Major Leagues this season, blanking the Blue Jays 10-0. The right-hander struck out seven and walked two. Oh. Uh, He walked George Springer who's always ready to pounce at any point. <laughs> to start the game, and again with two outs in the ninth, Vlad Guerrero Jr. grounded out to end it. Blanco, big smile on his face, raised his arms, and uh, catcher jumped into his arms. The catcher is always the glory hog. He wants to run out there. I don't think that's the case at all. <laughs> look at me, look at me. <laughs> I didn't throw a ball. What were the, what were the names there? Ronel Blanco twirled a no-hitter for the Astros. And who else was involved? Night. Uh, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Yeah, is that was, who you're looking was, no, for? No, there was one other name. That, uh... George Springer? <laughs> <laughs> oh, there he is. Hi, George. Oh, oh, George! <laughs> Worth the wait. <laughs> <laughs> I'd give you some grief on that, but that sounds exactly like something I'd do. It reminds me of my cat. You like that one better? No, the tiny one is funny. I don't I like the second uh, one. George, was... George Springer? Oh, that sounds like a wiener. Uh, I'm what sprung. Are, what the guys say they're sprung. I'm, I'm sprung. sprung. That's in Baby's Got Back. I'm right? sprung. Is it? Yeah. 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 Is it? No, you're right. Yeah. Baby's Got Back. Yeah, he says that. 
He gets sprung. I like big butts, and I cannot lie. I yes. Yes. Okay. Have we? Have we? We should. Uh, the next time we have a really good actor in here, uh huh. We should have them do that as a little kind of a spoken oh, sure. word piece. Yeah. Uh, I'm acting right now. <laughs> <laughs> You're a hell of an actor. actor. No. A very good actor. Well, try 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 doing it. We'll get those lyrics for you. You can do a, a little presentation, perhaps playing your organ while you do it. You got it. Something uh, <laughs> stately sounding. How about a uh, real quick acting, uh, Pat? Uh, you're a supervisor at uh, the docks, and I'm a police officer, and I want to talk to one of your employees. Yeah, is, uh, is uh, Jefferson uh, Rival here? Yeah, it's me. <laughs> oh, oh, it is you, sir. I see. Uh, you know, what, do you, what do you need this time? Hey, uh, where were you last night at 8 p.m.? I was right here. I'm here well, all the time. Anybody else vouch for that? I'm here all the time. Everybody knows that. All right, well, don't go anywhere. Everybody. <laughs> okay. Hey, look, we got to work well, to please do. Please put your erection away. We have work to do. Any more questions? <laughs> Dear Tom, I'm listening to yesterday's show and enjoying the jockstrap discussion. Mm. I was reminded of one of my favorite grade school jokes to pull on my friends. Uh, it goes this way, and you could use it with Tom, chick. Try this. So that's what <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm awaiting your arrival. Hey, Tom, did your dad own a jockstrap company when you were growing up? Oh, you say no. No. Why do you ask? Why do you ask? Well, then how did he support a big dick like you? <laughs> <laughs> Huh? Huh? That's grade school, right? That's a, that's a great joke. That's nice. Uh, yeah. yeah. And he obviously understands my gifted qualities. That's right. Uh, uh, the big, uh, the the big word, wiener. The word got out. The big peen. Uh, well, thank you very much. We'll get back to sports. Yeah, we will. Uh, but I've got, I like that phrase again from uh, Caitlin. What be where your feet are. Yeah. Be where your feet are. Mm -hmm. That's right. The good mantra. Be that, here now. That should be one of the athletic shoe companies. Is that where that's from? Mm, I don't think so. I See, don't that would be it's good for good. Adidas. Be where your feet are. That'd be cool. Don't don't look at it too late. The, the more you look at those words, they're meaningless. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean they're meaningless? Be where your feet are. You can say that about anything. Be where your nose is. Be where your I ass like that is. Too. I think the point is to, to stay grounded in the moment. Like, be where your feet are. Whatever. You and your, <laughs> your insightful analysis. Well, Josh, why don't you, why don't you, you can, why don't you stay where your anus is, and we'll move. Now we're talking. We'll, we'll move, we'll move well, yeah, forward. How could you be anywhere your anus isn't? That would well, be really some feet. following yeah. some kind of very tragic explosion. <laughs> yeah, I blew my asshole out. Yeah, yeah that's oh. what happened. <laughs> I mean, we got, somebody does something, right? <laughs> no, I meant like a grenade. Oh, a grenade. You're, you're, oh. you're, you're, you're the aforementioned body part is over there, whereas your legs are oh over here. I'd like to be where my feet are, but they were blown off. Okay. How you doing, Pat? You all right? <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> okay. I'm just acting over I here. somehow blame you. What about food? Uh, Josh. Uh, hey, you know something? <laughs> this is a good time for a segue. Speaking of food. Somebody's going to do something. Hello Fresh. They've got a great idea for you. Let's make meal times easier. Hello Fresh. And at the same time, make food that you're really going to like. Hello Fresh. Uh, the, uh, the simple explanation is as follows. They do the shopping for you. They've got a great menu over 40 45 recipes to choose from each week. And when I say recipes, I mean they send you the food. It's already measured. It's in the box, ready to go. And they have, by the way, over 30 calorie smart and protein smart options on the HelloFresh menu. Every HelloFresh box packed up with fresh ingredients, of course. And everything arrives pre-portioned is the way they like to put it, meaning they've done the measuring. All you got to do is put it together. What do you got over there, Jess? What's that? Sizzling shrimp bowls with spicy mayo. Simple, delicious ingredients prepped and prepared in about 30 minutes. Hmm. Um, I, I work with a guy that uh, on another little project that does HelloFresh three times a week wow. because of the convenience factor. See what I'm talking about. Check out HelloFresh.com. And there's a new a little code here. It's HelloFresh.com slash BTS. How sweet. Why am I doing it that way? Well, because that's a free dessert for life as long as you keep your HelloFresh subscription active. HelloFresh.com slash BTS. How sweet. Like Bob Tom show. How sweet. Uh, thank you very much. Do you want to do your Jackie Gleason thing? Uh, you're very good at that. <laughs> Jane King. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back with that. How sweet it is. Okay. Uh, yeah. HelloFresh.com slash BTS. How sweet. Thank you, HelloFresh. Coming right back with uh, interesting things about your car. Interesting things about um, a terrifying story, actually. Okay. For anyone who's used tools, mm. especially power tools. I mean, oh this is Lord. terrifying. 
uh, and you'll uh, you'll be going, ooh, God, that was close. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Become a Bob and Tom VIP and get your Bob and Tom fixed. Henry Phillips in the studio with us. Go ahead, Henry. All right, well, this is a song about um, one time I was flipping through the channels and it was late at night and I saw that they had one of those televangelist preacher guys. Sure. And he was talking, as a lot of them do, about uh, the end of the world mm -hmm. is coming. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want to tell all the people out there that the end of the world is coming for some of us uh, sooner than others. But um, <laughs> mm -hmm. not to be a downer in the morning, but uh, it is coming in. So this is a song about what I would do if it were the end of the world. Uh. Here we go. Well, I was flipping through the channels on my TV set last night And then I came across some TV preacher, the prettiest hooker I could find And asked if I could do a line off of her hooters <laughs> Well, much to my surprise, she said she didn't have hooters And much to my surprise, I didn't care Cause there's no need for us to not be getting transsexual hookers anymore Since tomorrow is the end of the world so have a smoke, shoot some smack, kick a kid in the face. <laughs> Steal somebody's groceries. Cause there's no need to not be a grocery stealing little kid in the face, kicking, smack shooting, smoking, <laughs> tranny hooker, getting all the other stuff I said earlier, guy anymore since tomorrow is the end of the world. But when I woke up this morning, I took a look around. And of course I saw that everything was fine. But I'm still gonna call and thank that televangelist preacher guy because I had myself a really lovely time. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, uh, ow. Oh, back. <laughs> oh. oh, well, hey, Josh. What's wrong? And my back is sore. My legs. What's in your shoe? Nothing. Mm -hmm. I mean, here, look. Nothing. Ah. Uh. Joshua, you have to have proper support. Huh. Orange insoles. Orange insoles, you say? Yeah, look. Yeah, yeah I see them. Look at this. They're great. Yeah. Orange insoles. I'll give them a shot. Great. All see right. you later, buddy. Give it a... Oh. Yippee! I can mow and dance while I do it. Ha! No more pain. Thank you, orange insoles. <gasps> oh, Josh, Josh, did you get orange insoles? Jessica, I sure did. Thanks to orange insoles, I feel great. Terrific. Give See you a... later. <laughs> orange insoles. Feel better, do more. Hey, hi, I'm Tom, this is Chick, that's Josh, and this is Christy Lee. Christy, what's happening? Hey, Charleston, the Bob and Tom Show here and our friends at Rock 105 WKLC are bringing us to town for a live show with special guests. Duke Tomato and the Bob and Tom Brass to Mouth Horns Plus. Do not miss an amazing comedy show that night. That's right, it all happens Friday, April 5th at the Charleston Coliseum and Convention Center. If you're listening anywhere within 100 miles of Charleston or Deacon, Come out and see us live on the morning of April 5th. That's a free show. And then get tickets for that night's Bob and Tom Show comedy tour event with who, Christy? Pat Godwin, Josh Arnold, Jeff Oske, Willie Griswold. All hosted by Tom and Christy. Aww. Tickets on sale now, and they're going fast. Get your tickets at Ticketmaster.com or the Charleston Coliseum box office. See you there! <laughs> Might be the first ones on Earth to hear what's going on. Well, this, uh, great. This oh, is there a, they come. This is exciting. Some, some little critter coming out of there. Uh, let's see what's going on here. Uh, Listening to Bob and Tom Radio 24-7. 24-7. 24-7. 24-7.
comedian Matt Weinhold is here with us. I think that we, you should avoid all sort of living with anyone. Even if you're married, don't live with them because that'll mess it up. That's what messes it up. Because, like, remember, like, when you're dating, it's so great, it's so fun. You go on these dates and, you you know, you go and you get coffee and you see movies and you talk and you have this wonderful sex and it's, I love you and I love you. And then you go home and you I love my cable and I love my refrigerator. I love my life. <laughs> <laughs> and then they move in, and then they're right in your face. And, hi, hi, we live together now. Hi. What are you doing? What are you thinking? How about now? Or now? Or now? How about now? That was yesterday. What about now? Where are you going? What are you doing? Who was that that called? <laughs> Comedian Nathan Trenholm in the studio with us. Now, Nathan, where where are you living now? I'm uh, I'm living in Los Angeles oh. now. Mm -hmm. And I live with a guy and a girl. And uh, actually, the last time I was in town, I had some cookies. And I offered some of the cookies to my roommates. And the girl just got all mad at me. She's like, Nathan, I'm an actress. Actresses can't have carbohydrates. <laughs> I was like, you know, you mispronounce that word. Uh -huh. It's pronounced waitress. <laughs> You're a waitress. Joining us in the studio, comedian Mark Eubanks. Did you go to college down in... Uh... I went to college in uh, University of West Virginia, Morgantown, West Virginia. Oh, really? I was a mountaineer. Hmm. Well, why would someone from Florida go to college in West Virginia? Uh, because you didn't have to be real smart to get into school. There. <laughs> Basically, showing up got you that piece of paper. Yeah. Oh. Valedictorian was a 2.0. <laughs> <laughs> On the breathalyzer. <laughs> Hi, this is Mike. All that cake before the show. Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Hello, Tom. How are you? Sir? Hey, man. Uh, now, we've got our big show coming up uh, Friday morning, West Virginia. Hope to uh, see you there. But right now, we've got our feet. What is it again? We got our feet where our head is? What is it we got? It's <laughs> as silly as that. Yeah, whatever it is. What is it again? We got my feet. Um, Keep your where, feet. Be where your feet are. Be where your feet are. I think I speak on behalf of everyone. I'm glad you heard about it. That's all I know. I got to write it down. Be where yeah. your feet are. Yeah. yeah. That was Caitlin Clark. I love that phrase. So she, she crapped it out in the middle of a press conference. That's <laughs> all that was. Last I wouldn't say she crapped it out. Josh is an ad that. bad attitude today. Not at all. <laughs> I just, I just don't like this false, this BS love for this stupid phrase. <laughs> Be where your feet are. The things you choose to like and dislike are baffling. The stuff that breaks through and he holds on yes. to is, is just... Be uh, where your feet are. <laughs> any, any other given day, if not any other given hour, you would have hated that. Oh, yeah. Tom, what did, it's actually a book. Be where your feet well, are. Well, so, so she oh, hacked yeah. it anyway. Yeah. Yeah. What did what Casey principles. Kasem used to say? When he signed off. Casey Kasem? Yeah. Oh, uh, what was it? Keep your uh, eyes on the stars and no, your... Keep your feet on the ground, ground and keep reaching for the stars. Yeah, keep oh, your nice. ass in the toilet seat. I forget yeah, what yeah, yeah. Exactly. I'm, yeah, That's oh, great, Casey. Oh, you're going to make fun of that. A brilliant genius man like Casey Kasem. That's a picture of me and Casey in the hallway. Yeah. He was in there. There was. Keep your feet on the ground and you're and reaching for the stuff. Yeah, how many indie bands did you play, Casey, that hel you helped out who had their feet on the ground and they were reaching for the stars? Oh, oh none? Wow. It was all top 40? Wow. Okay. Okay. Well, the show was called the <laughs> show was called American Top 40. Hang on a not second. American Bottom 40. I told Hang you he's on. got a Some, bad attitude. No, no. Someone's cut Josh very deep here. I'm not sure what's... Casey Kasem never played one of my requests. <laughs> <laughs> and I have never forgiven him. Just because... <laughs> I don't blame you. You know they rerun that. Uh, on they do every, every weekend. Mm -hmm. I do. I love listening. It's kind of interesting. Too. Every, yeah. And now again, number one, it's Walter Murphy and the Big Apple Band. Uh, yeah, what's really funny are the ones that fifth are fifth of Beethoven, kind of at the bottom of the charts, and you they never go any higher, and you never hear about the band again. Mm -hmm. one, one hit. One. Sometimes you're reminded of songs that you go, "Oh my gosh, I loved that." If you were writing in, you needed a sob story. See, yeah. that's the thing. My stories oh. were always about being a happy kid. Dear so Casey, right I wanted to keep my feet where where they were supposed to be, but they were. I got run over by a bus, and they're both gone. Josh, did you actually write it? No, no. <laughs> no. Remember that one hit? Uh, I'm gone, gone, gone. I've been gone so long. Yes. I've been gone, gone, gone so long. <laughs> Chilliwack. Chilliwack. Yeah. I yes, love sir. Chilliwack. A lot of uh, a lot of obscure Fly great stuff. Fly at night. That. That's a good one. Yeah. Which one? Fly at Night. Fly at a night. Chili Wax song that's just oh. great. Okay, well, uh, now, um, uh, once again, we had uh, 
Big news in the world of uh, sports last night. Yes, Iowa moving on. They beat uh, LSU last night, uh, last year's defending champ, 94-87. They're in the final four. And Be- Because they were where their feet were. Upsetting <laughs> the <That's right>. UFC. <laughs> you know what's going to make this better? If you mention it every break. That will, uh, that will really... How, think I just how, about, how, about, how about this, Josh? Pound it home. Keep your shoes where your feet are. Is <laughs> that better? <laughs> Look, uh, I, I don't fault her at all. Now, this is motivation. You play this every morning, you get up, you look in the mirror. Hang on, Sloopy. Hang on, Sloopy. One of the guys who wrote this, his girlfriend was nicknamed Sloopy. Really? Is that true? Yeah. Uh, Not for the reason I'm going to give you, but... uh, (laughs) Uh, Nevertheless, she sounded. uh, It sounded a little Sloopy-ish when he would... uh, Oh, uh, I see. What is it? Like uh, Like macaroni and cheese. Like macaroni and cheese. If it's not doing that, you're doing it wrong. Sloops. All right. I thought it was about that dog from the Peanuts cartoon. Little did I know. That's Snoopy. 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 Really? Not Sloopy. I thought it was a reference to the dog. I guess I should have had my paws where my shoes were. (laughs) You remember... Keep your paws where your feet are. Do you remember Henry uh, Gross's Shannon? Yes, yeah. that's about a dog. I think the Beach Boys dog or some. Well, no, it's a Beach Boys knockoff. Crap or whatever. Shannon, my lady, oh, yeah. my lady. They had a dog named Shannon. Yeah, that's what it says. Yeah, uh, that's what? what according to the according to the song. It sounds like a Casey Kasem background story. Yeah, it's oh, about okay. Shannon loves on. peanut butter. butter. <laughs> All right, uh, we have uh, coming up. We have uh, Frank Caliendo coming in. What? Uh-huh. Hold on, get back to the comedy. Uh, what else is going on over there? I can't wait till Frank comes in. He goes, you know, I'm not. I'm trying not to do Madden anymore. And then Tom goes, dude, John Madden. Yeah. <laughs> do it now. This is the attitude. I, do it now. Do it now. I, didn't, I, didn't, I never would ask him that. Uh, I never would ask him that. <laughs> uh, let's see. Where are we? Rowers from the University of Oxford are criticizing the levels of sewage in the Thames. Oh, really? How about that? According to the BBC... Sorry, Ace. (laughs) Crews participating in the annual boat race warned against swallowing the water splashing (laughs) up from the Thames following reports of increased E. coli levels. What's happening over there? You know, the good... uh, A. coli, B. coli, C. Those are all the good coli. Oh, really? There's only one bad coli that's... That's E. Wow. Yeah. E. coli? The others are the building blocks of protein. Yeah, did you no, know that? I did. I had no idea. Toothpaste Cam- has F. coli. It's that's a, right. It's yeah. For, for fluoride. Or enamel. The point being. Cambridge, you <laughs> want to vote. <laughs> I'm just keeping my. By where I Mr. am. Mr. Pretentious actually are. wants to hear about the rowers. According to. Well, yeah. Oh, that's he, he spent a lot of time on this. So. <laughs> No, I think it's fascinating. Cambridge won both male and female races, uh, also warned against the tradition of throwing the coxswain into the water. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Really? Uh, isn't the coxswain a, a kind of a uh, jerk, kind of a tough love? It has to be, it has to be. Usually yeah. it's a smaller fellow or lady. That, Usually uh, it's a small, yes, go on. I mean, it, 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 uh, like a runt? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. I, I, the only the, they only use the word runt for the boy like a, oh, okay. like a runt or a punk. Uh, yeah, I, I have heard the uh, I've heard the audio from uh, one of these races, and it's uh, it, it, it's uh, it, 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 I don't even know how to, some of the most foul language I've ever heard oh. in my life. Wow, they're um, That's but tough. they're keeping the cadence going and keeping them rowing quickly. It's very interesting. But yeah, the the, the Thames is just full of raw sewage. Man, gross. So I feel really bad for the swim team. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Nobody's talking about that. Yeah. Uh, the rowers. Are... Now, did you know this is a thing now for the Seine and for the Paris Olympics? No. They're going to try to do events in it. And remember this? And they did some uh, preliminary events last year, and the E. coli levels were a little too high. Mm. So I don't know if they've been able to control the sewage releases into that river. But uh, So are they going to put out reports that it's... No longer a little too high. It's just a smidge too high. Or are they going to get? There, there are that? certain levels that are acceptable for the athletes. <laughs> Aren't the opening ceremonies on the on the river? Yeah, but I mean, Ace, they're uh, not in it. Ace, th- those would be on what we call Ace boats. You see, so you could be going down the Turd River Tom, in a boat. You'd be okay. Tom, don't 
Okay. Don't engage so in the conversation. They're, they're, they're extra by some of it's the actual end, swimming buddy. events in the in the river. Leonard Jenkins of the Oxford men's team told BBC Sport that he had been vomiting before the race, adding that. Quote, it would be a lot nicer if there wasn't as much poop in the water. Oh, oh no. My gosh. So wow. Go. They can see it? It's visible? <laughs> they can taste it. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, nuggets. Okay. When we come back, we'll, uh, <laughs> be doing anything but this oh um, we're coming back yeah yeah sure we got some cool stuff in there okay uh cicadas in the news a great tattoo story i got especially for jess hooker be where your feet are because uh <laughs> <laughs> be, where be where your tattoos i don't know. Uh, this is the bob and tom show this is the bob and tom show text us at 888-262-8661 more bob and tom next We're trying to see how Chick McGee will do in the cherry spitting competition in the parking lot. I care for cherry. No, I, I, well, here, I'll eat the cherry, then I'll give you the pit. Oh, no, no, you don't do that. No. <laughs> no. I've never been so turned on in my life. Come on. <laughs> now, when no. you do it, you have to pass it uh, tongue to tongue. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, yeah. now, we just talked with one of the champions. It oh, turns out yeah. Nats, hey, Bob. Yeah. Nats love cherry. Oh, do they? <laughs> <laughs> How about that? It may just be me that they love. I haven't been able to shower since last Tuesday. Oh, so. oh, yeah. oh. Oh, don't yeah. tell us that. I can't get this wound wet. Oh, I'm that's sorry. Too there bad. may be a BO issue here. Oh, boy. Okay, so it's 50 feet to the poster of me. Right. Now, is the, the line is right here where the sidewalk meets the asphalt. So, uh, has Chick uh, popped a cherry in his mouth? Does he have a pit in there? Have you have you ever popped a cherry? No, never have the pit. Oh, come on. One time in Wells, West Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, Chick McGee is. Uh, he's at the line. Uh, he's got, now, he's remember. He's the cherry. The pit, where is the pit in your mouth right now? Oh, he, he dropped it. Oh, oh three three second rule. Oh, I'm sure there are no, I'm sure there are no goose turds. Netta, he put it back in his mouth. Oh, this okay. is where the geese poop all the time. Oh, no. yeah. No, they pooped on the it, other side. It hasn't rained in Not three in months. Lot. Okay, now, uh, is uh, is there a line that Chick ha he can't yes. cross? You, you can't cross. Plant your feet. He's got to get a toe on the line. Uh, you predicted you could spit it how far? 30 feet is what you... Okay, I think you're going to get maybe 20. Wait a minute, I have a severe crosswind. You know oh, now he's... Oh, oh, pussy crosswind. Oh, yeah, crosswind. well, you know, those crosswinds... You think can... the bullet cross complains about a crosswind? Probably. Uh huh. About a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> have we got? Uh, okay, go ahead. Do we have? Do we have our measuring tape? It's already marked on the on the pavement. Okay, ready? Go ahead. It's off and. Where did it go? It got to the second blue tape. Which up, is how far? far is that? Twenty feet. Twenty feet. Oh. That's how you. That's you said you thirty. There's a significant difference. Okay, now chick is leaning back. Uh, now, are you folded? Is the, is the pit folded into your tongue? Remember, he said the key is lung power and getting a vacuum seal. He just spit. Uh, no. How much? What do you think? What is that? That's short of 20 feet. Short okay. of 20? Okay, short of 20. It's getting feet. worse. Again, what? You're next. I think you need a. Okay. Yeah, Tom, put your money where your mouth is. I never said I could do this. Oh, yeah? Come on. Okay. Come on, these spit. cherries been washed. Come on, chick, chew up a cherry for him. They've been washed. Beat them like a bird. Cherries. Haven't you seen them wash them at the store? <laughs> okay, go ahead, take over. Oh boy. Oh. Breathe <laughs> through your nostril. <laughs> you look like. Jeez. <laughs> you look like some bad lawyer at the turn of the century in court. <laughs> Your Honor, uh, I've never in all my. Oh, 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 he's ready. I can't do that. Have you swallowed the cherry meat? No. What's the technique here? You roll your spit tongue. It. Can you roll oh, your spit. tongue? Just spit. Just well, spit. Now we could only help. <laughs> oh my God! That didn't even go ten feet. <laughs> Here comes Christy Lee, ladies and gentlemen. All she's right, got, now we have a gal. She's got on her Daisy Dukes. Great lung capacity. Okay, let me get this microphone down here in front of Christy. So uh -huh. you tongue I've ever seen in my life. Okay, well, let's All right. do that. I, I can't do this. Like I don't a, think I'm going to be very like good. a three-year-old tongue. <laughs> oh, 18-year-old tongue is what Thank you meant well, to say. Every, the all line, models the line is the where the asphalt meets the cement. <laughs> <laughs> He's out here with his cane. 
Oh, I'm sorry. I'm injured. Do you mind? Uh huh. Okay, step up. You, you, you can't take a running start. All right. Uh, is Christy eating a Christy chair? has kind of a controversial stance, Bob. She has her, her feet staggered. Okay. And uh, now the, t- the technique, Christy, you're supposed to go up and down like you're doing jumping jacks. <laughs> Remember, it's that's Brawless always, Day. That's right. It is Brawless Day. Okay, here we go. Christy leans back. Can she spit? No, she's. you can't make her it, laugh. I, what was that, two feet? <laughs> was that How far did that go? Six feet, okay. Uh-huh. I think she got a little on her chin. <laughs> <laughs> How are we on time, Bob? We don't have a score as time. Well, we, well, we have about uh, one or two more minutes here. I've never been a spitter, Bob. That a girl. <laughs> That's what I like about it. I think you. those Christy Lee, I've never been a, <laughs> never been a spitter t-shirts, t-shirts might be a big already, item for the store. Are... Tiki Barber here. Remember the days when I was a running back in the NFL? Well, if you're on your feet all day like I was, you get the struggle. The secret is orange insoles. Their insoles are like magic for your feet and body. They'll help you kick hip pain, sore feet, and lower back discomfort to the sidelines. Feel better. Do more with orange insoles. Hey, hi, it's Tom from the Bob and Tom Show. Miss some of the show? Become a Bob and Tom VIP and subscribe to the audio and video podcasts. The Bob and Tom Show, on air, on app, and on demand. Line all the time. Bob and Tom, 24 7. I was in the Marines for a while. You were. Like, wow. And it takes a while to adjust as a civilian world when you come out of boot camp because you're so fired up. When I came out that same week, my sister got married. She had me seat people at the wedding. I accepted the assignment, you know? People would come walking up to me in front of the church like, oh, you must be Patricia's brother. Sit down! I don't want to be your friend. Get your eyes off me. What is your major malfunction? 200 people showed up. I put them all in the same row. Tighten it up. Tighten it up. Tighten it up. We're not comfortable. Outstanding! <laughs> I was outstanding, as a matter of fact. Comedian oh Greg Hahn is with us. Uh, Lowell, Lowell Sanders is here with us. I'm on the road. Uh, are now, Lowell, are you, are you a single, single man? Yeah, I uh, left a wife in Detroit. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, I see how it works. Police should have found her by now. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. They won't, they won't find her. Hey, no way. You're, you're that good, aren't you? Wow. Bob and Tom. Five. Four. Three. Two. two one. one. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Jess Hooker at the news desk. Hello. There's Pat Godwin in the performance room. Hey, Chick. He'll commence to uh, perform in here in a second. Uh, there's uh, Josh Arnold. Chick's there. Over there at the sidekick chair, there's Ace Cosby. Hey. Going to have that uh, trot out that joke of the day. I'm Chick McGee. Here's Tom with our special guest. Our special guest is comedian Frank Caliendo. Yeah. All yeah. Right, Frank. Yeah, that's Frank. a good one. That's a good one. One. One of you. All right. Yeah. I'm trying to remember. <laughs> it was it was a few years back. Because when I, when I think about uh, the, you get these sort of seasonal tournaments. Right now, of course, it's the basketball. Um, when you, you had a TV show debuting a few years back, was it the baseball playoffs? Oh, that I ruined? Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah that with, the, with the commercials every five seconds? Yeah. Yeah. That was, uh, that was 2007. What are we in? 2024? <laughs> so yeah, oh, a few well, years back. Times that that is fresh as the day's headlines no, I just, for, <laughs> for Tom. <laughs> no, I just, rem- I just remember, remember all of Abraham those. Lincoln. <laughs> I just remember all those commercials and Frank TV. Yeah, yeah. We, and we had some cool props like a giant hot dog. And, remember <laughs> yeah, that? Everything was Frank's, and then there were uh, there were bottle openers. And I went to New York City, and the hot dog stands had no billboards, but hot dog stands had uh, my name on it everywhere. Nice. It, yeah, there actually was. There actually were like billboards everywhere. But there, I I remember the. Um, the commercials kept coming and coming and coming, and I, I like turned off my television. I'm like, this is a bit embarrassed. I mean, it was, <laughs> it was awesome and awful at the same time. Like, it's better than not being promoted at all. But at a certain point, when you're 
when your commercial's interrupted by another one of your commercials, <laughs> that's, you know, and at the time it was Bush, had, maybe he was just president, well, I guess it was 2007, you know, it was it was just Bush coming out, hey guys, you guys watching the baseball playoffs? It's going to be good. Then John Mad pop up, boom, he just got to third base, and I'm not even talking about baseball. You can't say that, man. You can't do that. So that stuff was just going, and it was just constant. And then there were Dish Network commercials that I did that had the same kind of thing. So then there were commercials for Dish, for the satellite system, for then me, for my TV show. And uh, it was very awkward. It was, very, <laughs> it was fun. It was and fun. I think, too, remember they had just started or it was in its infancy. They had the green screen behind the batter and they had oh, yeah, the ability of putting up a slide mm -hmm. that says Frank TV. And it was pretty much there during the entire pitch. Everything. Everything yeah. that there was a Frank TV. My face was behind home plate. It was plate, a perfect storm. Yeah. People oh. wanted to. Th I, the Internet was just starting. You know, Twitter and stuff <laughs> yep. was starting to come around. Mm -hmm. And, like, people wanted to throw baseballs at my face. <laughs> I was yeah. on the bases. It was it was insane. Well, the good thing is, uh, thanks to the internet, the hate thing is way way up oh, now. I love it. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. A whole generation of oh, just yeah. hate. Oh yeah, hate go online. Frank Caliendo is a great comedian. Uh, he's also they call him an impressionist. Yes. Who was your? Did, did you have a hero when you were a kid? Were you? Uh, did you? Did you kind of get the whole? Probably started Rich Little, and um, on the I was on the Love Boat for me. I was watching him on the Love Boat, which I shouldn't have been watching at the time because I was probably eight. Was uh, saucy. A uh, little saucy. Uh, yeah, you know, you never knew what uh, Dr. Uh, what was Dr. Uh, I'm trying to think what the doctor was, but he was always with a lady. <laughs> what, lady patient. He was also like, get away with that now. Huh? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The ship Gyno. That's a little hey, where bit. Where are you going to go, lady? We're on a boat. <laughs> what was Doc's name? It was Bernie Capel, but what yeah, was his name yeah. on the boat? Doc, Adam Bricker? Is it with Dr. Bricker? Maybe. May, may, yeah. Ace, you should know this. This is. Uh, yeah, it's bad TV. You I'm should just know. picturing Charu a lot. So. <laughs> Oh, hoochie coochie. Charo, oh my gosh. Yeah, so uh, it was that in the Muppet Show. So Rich Little was on the Muppet Show doing Muppet voices, I think. So it was it was those types of things. But it was actually, for me, I watched old episodes of the Jonathan Winters show with him just pulling props out. Oh, this one looks like, look at this one. Oh, here we go. And he's, oh, God. And he's going to the moon. I go to the moon, Daddy. That's going to be a fun one. Yeah. And, uh, so watching that, it was the Jonathan Winters stuff that really made me want to do comedy. And I... Then I remember when I was supposed to be in class. In uh, well, I was in class, but physically, not mentally. But I remember being in history as a junior in high school, and I, I saw Stephen Wright, and I started writing Stephen Wright jokes. Mm. And that's what I, you know, I, and I couldn't be further from that <laughs> now. But it was, uh, I remember some of them I wrote, uh, I bought a race car. My brother bought an e-race car. I make skid marks. He cleans them up. <laughs> it was just like, uh, that's not bad. No, they were pretty, they were pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you, professional comedian, <laughs> Josh Arnold. Uh, no, I had a couple that were like, really thought like, uh, one, uh, I got convicted of killing time. All I did was cancel my subscription, <laughs> but now they want to give me life. No. There's like uh, seven jokes. Oh, that's yeah. good. Yeah, that's very nice. Yeah. 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 But I know nothing about history. <laughs> Zero about U.S. history. Well, uh, Frank Caliendo was our guest uh, at the uh, the Bob and Tom Sports Desk. Of course, it is Mr. Chick McGee. Hi. We've reviewed a couple of the big stories in sports, a no-hitter in baseball. That's right. We Caitlin did have Clark a no-hitter. Ronald Blanco, the Astros, through the first no-no in the major leagues this season, uh, blanked the Blue Jays 10. And nothing. The right hander struck out seven and walked two. He walked George Springer to start the game, and again with two outs in the ninth. <laughs> Vlad Guerrero Jr. grounded out to. Oh, sorry, I thought you were going to the George. Kick it down, George Springer. Wasn't that the nickname for George. your uh, Vlad? Or no, you were Tex. That's right. Who was Vlad? Vlad the Impaler. Vlad the Impaler. Was that Bob? I'm not, I'm not sure with that nickname. I, 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 Lexington Steel, the uh, famous adult uh, porn star, had a series of films called Lex the Impaler for a while. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Is that right? It doesn't really fit, does it? Not really, but... <laughs> Liter I, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it was, right. uh, boy. <laughs> hey, you know Lexington Steel, I, right? I have a question. If we could back up for a second to something <laughs> more wholesome. <laughs> <laughs> why... Uh, why do baseball announcers have that voice? Where do they um, I don't know, <laughs> Frank. Uh, uh, Vin Scully, maybe? Red Barber? I don't know. But it does seem yeah. they always have that. There's an intonation. A big, deep drive. <laughs> in the center field. It's, it's gone. 
it's <laughs> it's not just there's a, a moment in the um, in the book the right stuff where he talks about how all pilots oh talk like Jaeger of yeah. a certain era all talk like like Jaeger like Chuck Jaeger. Hmm. It's just one of those things, and your chicks nailed that baseball thing. Yeah, that's your captain speaking. Yeah. And there's also there's a basketball version of that too. Is there for basketball? I've noticed that for some basketball announcers, and I love it. Is the basketball has a little bit of the Marv Albert influence? Yeah, exactly. From yeah. downtown, yes. Yeah. Which whenever I try to do a Kevin Harlan, it becomes. Marv Albert. So they must be really close because that those voices are so, so similar. Um, and you're looking for me to do the Kevin Harlan. Don't have it yet. So, uh, <laughs> well, uh, no, can, we, can we hear the Kevin Harlan beta version? The Kevin, uh, Kevin Harlan, uh, no. Uh, let me do it. Let me try it afterward because it's now just, that since I've done the Marv Albert, okay. it's only going to be, you're going to be like, oh, that's just a Marv Albert. You're right. That's on uh, Kevin Harlan, he, yeah, he's very, he's overly excited. Excited. Um, I can't get into it right now. I got it. It's it's. No, and, but I, I ruined it. I, I, for example, love the announcers that uh, are for the home team. And if you have the the NFL app, you can listen to the uh, uh, home whatever team. whatever announcers you want. Right. Right. And it's so much fun to go back and forth <laughs> because <laughs> you can hear though they go back to the one guy and it's. Well, we got the we got the ball in the fifty. <laughs> Looks like this the, one's over. Yeah, this yeah, the, the, the disappointment. <laughs> right. the, I, it's just it's really fun. But yep. uh, checks you you nail that baseball one. I I love that. Well, thank you. I I uh, I love doing it actually. And then uh, we had Caitlin Clark say this last night about um, her uh, Iowa Hawkeyes are now headed to the uh, women's final four. Uh, they beat LSU last night, ninety four eighty seven. Uh, Caitlin had 41 points and 12 assists. Here she is after the game. It's not about last year. You worry too much about the past. You know, you're going to get caught up in that. It's about being present, being where your feet are. Don't worry about being in the Final Four, be in this moment, be in the Elite Eight. Be where your feet are. Uh, you know, enjoy yeah. that and soak that in. And, you know, that's what's going to allow you to win 40 minutes. And that's exactly what we did. And, you know, I thought we just played a really good basketball game when they went on their runs we always had an answer um and that's that's all you can ask of your team she signed up for 40 her team signed up for 40 tom and i don't but i, I do what i don't approve of is the phrase a 40 burger <laughs> oh for a point i i don't know if uh, i think it starts with 50 actually you have to i don't know if it starts burger. with 40 or not yeah, it's hack it might but i'm not sure i'm not sure at yeah. this point no thank you okay no burgers no burgers at all <laughs> no Mm. I like a good burger. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, they can't do that with Charles Barkley in the studio, right? Did somebody say burger? <laughs> <laughs> I would be really, really good right now. <laughs> I believe that would be probably the best. And Caitlin, Caitlin cliche. She said every cliche you could. <laughs> oh, Charles, right I don't there. know if you can say that. I mean, she's a fine player, and she's just, you know, she's talking and making sure. Making sure what, knucklehead? <laughs> well, that, that, uh, you like Shaq, but I can understand you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, that's Frank Caliendo. Oh, I should Charles. mention this. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Caliendo will be, will be on the road. Uh, it's going to be April 12th, Verona, New York. Hey, wait, what about that website, right? At yeah. the Turning Stone Casino. Frank's website. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you're, yeah. yeah I, Remember when you guys used to laugh at me for, like, plugging, like, <laughs> it was 1999 or something like that? <laughs> yeah. I'd be looking at my phone. You're like, what are you doing? I'm, like, counting the hits to my website. You're like, that's going nowhere, Frank. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, we'll get, we'll get to all these things. But right now, right. Um, this afternoon. Simply Safe. That's right. That's where I'm going to make hamburgers in my uh, compound, Tom, because I have Simply Safe, the uh, design it yourself, do it yourself home security system named best home security system of 2024 by u.s news world report and newsweek awarded it best customer service in home security simply safe has whole home protection sensors to detect break-ins fires floods and more indoor and outdoor high definition cameras and you got to be clear when you say they have sensors they mean these, are, these are devices that sense things Day and there's night. not someone around going <laughs> Censoring Chick McGee's shows. <laughs> that would be, sorry, you can't watch that. Good clarification. <laughs> and Simply Safe, backed by 24 7 professional monitoring, less than a dollar a day. No contract, 60 day money back guarantee. I've never heard of such a thing, but you try it risk free. And if you don't love it, send the system back for a full refund. And Simply Safe, giving us many Bob and Tom Show listeners real peace of mind. And we want you to have it too. What and do right people now, do when they send it back? I, I felt too safe. 
I guess. I, I, I was too comfortable. This too worked secure. too well, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I Get 20% off any new Simply Safe system when you sign up for Fast Protect Monitoring. Just visit simplysafetom.com. That's simplysafetom.com. There's no safe like Simply Safe. Read the reviews. Everybody loves your Simply Safe. Coming up, we're going to hang out with comedian Frank Caliendo. Among the stops for Frank, uh, the Turning Stone Casino in Verona, New York, Detroit, Carterville, Chicago, Pittsburgh, Columbus. The man's going to be many places. I'll tell you where in a minute. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Morning laughter. <laughs> Just might be the... Again, Bo Burnham is our guest, and he uh, has a uh, little tour going. We'll give you some of those dates in a second. Go ahead, Bo. Every time I go to dinner, seems like I'm getting a little bit thinner. I'll sit down at the breakfast table. I can talk while they're not able. When I look at them, I find there's a single question on their mind. I wish it could go back to the way it was. It's not easy now because yeah. my whole family thinks I'm gay. I guess it's always been that way. Or maybe it's because of the way that I walk makes them think I like boys. <laughs> oh my. The goddamn question just won't go away. And I get asked every single day. But the way they ask it is uh, not a disguise. Like, uh, how was your day? Do you like to kiss guys? <laughs> this is the worst, baby. This is my fear. Now their opinions are crystal clear. Because my whole family now is shocked. I'm in the closet and the door is locked. Well, now my glory days are gone. I was John Elway, now I'm Elton John. Well, my whole family now suspects that watching SpongeBob had side effects. I'm not gay, and that's what I said. If I'm gay, hey, God, strike me dead. <laughs> that's, a, that's a joke. <laughs> Just because I'm afraid of the snow, where my favorite color is the rainbow. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> this is the worst, baby. This is my fear. Now their opinions are crystal clear, yeah. Because even my boyfriend thinks I'm gay. I'm just... Oh, God. <laughs> You all probably think I'm gay. Man, this song is counterproductive. <laughs> la, 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 la. <laughs> because my whole family thinks I'm gay. I said, what did they know anyway? You got to look right through the haze. Easy bake oven must just a phase. And my whole family thinks I'm queer. That is all I ever hear. But I've been as straight as a ramp. If you don't count Bible camp, <laughs> Bible camp. I'm not gay, I swear. Kind of. <laughs> as, as, Whoa, Burnham. As, oh, uh, ow. Oh, back. Oh. oh, hey, Josh. What's wrong? My back is sore. My legs. What's in your shoe? Nothing. Mm -hmm. I mean, here, look. Nothing. Ah, uh, Joshua, you have to have proper support. Huh. Orange insoles. Orange insoles, you say? Yeah, look. Yeah, yeah I see them. Look at this. They're great. Yeah. Orange insoles. I'll give them a shot. Great. All see right. you later, buddy. Give it a... Oh. Yippee! I can mow and dance while I do it. Ha! No more pain. Thank you, orange insoles. <gasps> oh, Josh, Josh, did you get orange insoles? Jessica, I sure did. Thanks to orange insoles, I feel great. Terrific. <laughs> See me. you later. <laughs> orange insoles. Feel better, do more. My wife can just know that I'm lonely and much rather have a conversation about her dream kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which is why I now understand why married men uh, read the paper in the bathroom. Uh -huh. We know our wives are going to interrupt us, but at least they have to suffer to do it. <laughs> 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 yeah.
Have you ever tried to watch a ball game? Just sit in chair. Something about that triggers something yeah. in my wife that immediately household chores have to be done mm -hmm. right now. Uh -huh. <laughs> immediately. So the yeah. only thing I can do to relax now is I walk around my yard with a hose. Mm -hmm. The water's not even on. I'm just walking around the yard <laughs> like a hose. <laughs> That's great. Uh, is he working? Okay, then I can be sort of happy if I think he's working. <laughs> I, I did a show at my brother's fraternity last time I was there, and they're all giving me the ideas, like how to, when they drink, how they get around. Because they know they don't, they don't, they know drinking and driving is wrong. Mm -hmm. So my, they have this thing where they get really drunk, and then they walk to Domino's, order a pizza, and then when they go to deliver it, they ask the guy for a ride. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, that's a good idea. <laughs> Home in 30 minutes Safe. or less. The drinking and driving, is a, the, the designated driver is a good idea, but what always amazes me about that is they give these designated drivers coffee all night. They're like, have another cup of coffee. Hey, Bob, that's a designated driver. Hey, that's a good thing what you do with your friends. Here's another cup of coffee. Have a soda. Here's the, <laughs> not better off than someone's had a six-pack. They get pulled over. They're wired out of their gourd. Like, officer, I'm the designated driver. I think you got to take care of these people. <laughs> 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 the cops like, why don't you let the guy in the back puking drive? You can run ahead of the car, make sure it doesn't hit anything. <laughs> so, Mark, you're a single guy. Yeah, I tell you though, it's tough because uh, <laughs> I got these neighbors behind uh -huh. me. Really? My neighbor Gail, very um, Gail. Uh, Gail is a woman who just moved. Her bedroom wall is right behind mine, and um, she has a new boyfriend. Mm -hmm. And I found this out. Uh, his name is. Tom! <laughs> Hi, this is Larry Reeb, Uncle Larry. It's a sick world, and I'm a happy guy. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Top Show. We're all here. Just look at the news desk, and Josh, Ace, uh, Pat Godwin in the performing studio. I'm Chick. Here's Tom, and we uh, do have one of our uh, favorite guests. Uh, comedian Frank Caliendo joins us here in the studio. Yes, it's sir. always good to see Frank. Frank is on the road. April 12th, Verona, New York. At the Turning Stone Casino, resort and casino. Oh, yeah. Oh, and, uh, will it, do they put you up? Absolutely. Oh, yeah? They, they take care of the Frank Kelly. <laughs> yeah, they have me. You don't sleep me. in the car? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm getting a raw deal. They don't, they don't Your give me room's going to be ready next Tuesday. They don't give right? me the Godwin. They, oh, uh, they go full out. I think uh, the last time I stayed at the Turning Stone, I think I got a massage. Did you? I think so. Oh. I'm pretty sure I did. Very nice. Yeah. yeah. It's a hell of a pretty massage. Pretty good that you don't remember. No. <laughs> I get so many massages. I was thinking more it was like a so deep many. sleep you were in. I, uh, I have something, a little something for uh, Frank. We have Kevin Harlan, one of our favorite favorite uh sports announcers here he is calling calling the super bowl the winning play second down 20 503 to go someone has run on the field some guy oh. with a bra <laughs> and now he's not being chased he's running down the middle of the 40 arms in the air and a victory salute <laughs> he's pulling down his pants put up your pants my man put up those pants he's being chased to the 30 he breaks a tackle from a security guard the 20 down the middle the 10 the 5 he slides at the 1 and they converge on him at the goal line oh. pull up your pants take off the bra and be a man <laughs> with hands on hips at the other end of the field are looking at him and shaking their head and saying, why, oh, why <laughs> is this taking place in a Super Bowl? <laughs> Kevin, if you're going to run that far, get into the end zone. Don't slide at the one. you got to score. I think that's a Once Kurt you got Warner, on the I field, should. get into the end zone, my man. Lord, now they're cuffing him. Now, <laughs> oh, they're cuffing him. Whatever you do, 503 to go, timeout on the field. Yeah, that, what a pro. Dan, He's always you, great at that. That is, yeah. that is as good as you could so get to him. Remember that guy who streaked bet there'd be a streaker? Remember that? Oh, that yeah. was one of the stories that God. came out. And they they caught him. Actually. What a pro. Yeah. That's yeah, the he's... best. And uh, you're, you're working on that voice, Andrew. Yeah. And my favorite part is that he goes, 503 left. Like, he yeah. just goes right back into <laughs> oh, it. Oh, yeah. 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 It's, oh. It, it, instead of going like, it, go, I tend to start going euchery, Bob Euchre, uh, just a bit outside. Mm -hmm. I tried the corner. It's, yeah. it's, it's in that kind of thing, but he's got that 503. You can hear where it's coming from, but I just haven't, I haven't captured it yet. It's got a... It's got to train those muscles is what it is. All right. All right. Once again, we're talking with uh, comedian Frank Caliendo. Uh, at the same time, uh, reviewing many of the things in the world of sports. Uh, anything else? That, uh, that actually wraps it up, Tom. That's okay. sports. Uh, uh, we got a Final Four in the women's and the men's, and we're all set to go with college basketball. Okay. Well, now the official uh, sports outro. All right. Here we go. Check, Roger. This is what you farted for. 
us with many, many questions. Uh, and she does say that's uh, Tom's daughter. That's Finn. And she does say, Chick McGee, this is what you farted for. <laughs> Yeah, I'd live that. I, I, I'm not sure why. And we do have a different, don't we have a different version of that? Uh, yeah, we have a, uh, a version with, uh, let's see. Um, Everybody. Uh, this is uh, yeah, Hart, my other daughter, and um, I th- well, let me let me hear this one, see what's on it here. Chick this is what you farted for. Woo! Not all the girls in there. Yeah. Uh, that's, a, that's a classic. I think Lucy might be in there, too. Well, the, uh, it could be, yeah. That's so. very, very nice. Uh, now, uh, we uh, leave the sporting scene and uh, turn to Jess Hooker over there at the Bob and Tom News Desk. Jess, uh, by the way, you're looking great. Thanks. You've got so. your, I, uh, for those that can't see you, I would say kind of a Linda Ronstadt. Yeah. Um, 1980-ish. Yeah. Uh, that, yeah. uh, that kind of a semi bouffant Very nice. Mm-hmm. What about this, Tom? How about Joanne Flug in the movie Mad? Oh, my God. Yeah. Dead on. Yeah. yeah. How about that? I'll have to see huh? a picture. I don't know who that is. I believe that Lieutenant Dish, I yeah, think. L- Joanne her. Flug in the movie version of yeah. Mash. Very hot. Okay. okay. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> very. I'll have no. to look her up. Yeah, um, I don't. Was she ever in anything else though? Um, the TV shows, I think. I, okay, so, oh, yeah, it, yeah. it was Flug, P F L U G. Yeah. Remember that? Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. Very good movie. I'm, I, so I'm, so we, oh, this has been a very unprofessional introduction. Frank, welcome to the show. <laughs> yeah, really great. Uh, uh, <laughs> hi, I'm Dr. Adam Bricker. From the Love Bug. <laughs> now, uh, what is happening uh, that is newsworthy over there? Velveeta has launched its own branded hair dye. On April 1st, the company announced that it is getting into the personal care game with Velveeta Gold, a yellow-hued, semi-permanent hair dye. In a statement sent to Food & Wine magazine, Velveeta stressed that the new product was not a joke. A four-ounce container of Velveeta Gold is available only on Amazon for $7.50, the same price as a block of Velveeta cheese. Hmm. Miss Stephanie Vance, brand manager of Velveeta, told Food & Wine, we are always looking for new ways to help fans live <laughs> La Dolce Velveeta. Ah. Oh, no, that's so nice. <laughs> La Dolce <laughs> Velveeta. <laughs> now, is that better than be where your feet are? La yeah. Dolce well, Vita? I think referencing, a, a what is it, a 60s era La Dolce Vita, the movie, that's way before everyone's time. I have no idea. What's I, didn't like, know, I didn't know that movie either. La me Dolce the, Vita means the sweet life. Right. Yes. It's a famous it's, uh, bring Italian. Bring the head of Alfredo Garcia. What are you talking about? No, La Dolce Vita was a famous, uh, what is it called? The <laughs> new wave uh, European I'm not aware of independent that cinema. Sort of like the, yeah. Like the Red Balloon or the Bicycle Thief or what do you. And uh, okay. yeah, they, d- they did this last year, right? Yeah, they, they did the um, nails, right? They did the uh, nail polish. Oh, same color. Okay. It was the same color as Velveeta. Now, mm-hmm. Frank Calendo, probably you're probably not aware of this. Uh, the color of Velveeta. Do you want to tell them? When they make Velveeta and it comes off the conveyor, it's clear. They add the color. It's artificial. Oh. Yes. So, oh, okay. So, so they've got plenty of the dye lying around. Yeah. So they're using it <laughs> in other ways, right? Okay, I'm lost. Yeah. I'm just- the brand said one jar is enough to cover a head of short hair. All users need to do is apply it evenly to dry hair, allow it to process for 20 minutes before rinsing it with a mild shampoo. Is this hmm. going to be a new comedian in Las Vegas, Velveeta Top? <laughs> oh. Uh-huh. Puts props back in the trunks. Oh. <laughs> he just cleans up, just yeah. cleans up for, for Scott. Um, oh, I bet this was funny. <laughs> the, the nail polish, the, the Velveeta nail polish, $15 for a two-pack. Um, sure. And the uh, uh, it was available in finger food red, yellow, of course, dubbed La Dolce Velveeta. Ah. Uh, so there you go. Mm. Pat, do you have a tribute? I do, yeah. Oh. She's in the strange concoction. <laughs>
I know, Frank, with your Italian heritage, I'm surprised you've never heard of La Dolce Vita. Uh, yeah, there's a few things that I haven't heard. Probably came out. A lot of them in my family we're not allowed to talk about anymore. Irma La Douce phase. And I, it was, was like was 1960, a... La Dolce Vita. I was Vita. born in 74. I just said 20. I gave, I gave the benefit of the doubt. It's a Federico Fellini movie. Oh, yeah. How'd I miss that? <laughs> You're familiar with Fellini. Oh, and here they've got uh, all these 1960. They've got it's black and white, all these Italian ladies with <laughs> bikinis on. Oh, it's fantastic. Marcello, Ma Marcello Mastrioni. That's a pretty good Fellini Little movie. I, I give okay. it eight and a half. Oh, very good. Oh, very nice. Thank you very yeah. much. Very, very nice. Nice. Another joke no one gets, but I, nope. I, I, I admire you for trying it. I enjoyed it myself. Uh, no La, one gets it. I heard four people respond. Yeah. La Dolce Velveeta. That's great. I just respond on your timing as being so. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> So it I'm sorry. Like a and this, oh, I knew it. The, the, this is not the nail polish. This is, first of all, when they do it on April Fool's Day, you kind of wonder. Yep. But they, they really did release the Velveeta nail polish. So. Mm -hmm. what, and they're calling it Velveeta. What is it again? Um, it's called Golden Velveeta Gold. That's just what it's called. That does sound like a porno star, doesn't it? Velveeta Gold. Have you seen the new movie with Velveeta Gold <laughs> and Lex Steele? She's hot. Uh, Lexington, please. Oh, sorry, <laughs> sorry. Gold, so, go, gold meets steel. Velveeta Gold and Lexington Steel. <laughs> Metals collide. <laughs> wow. <laughs> they go deep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry, Frank. Well, we're trying to keep it clean for Frank. But I mentioned that Frank Caliendo uh, is going to be? Be, be in the road. Uh -huh. uh, at lots of different places. They would include Verona, New York at the uh, Turning Stone Resort Casino where Chick McGee had a Got massage. Got a massage. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Full yeah. release. And, uh, oh. It's going to be April 12th. Woo! From downtown, oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> And uh, things are starting to look beautiful in that part of the country right now. Uh, also, uh, April 24th, Detroit, Michigan, uh, at the uh, Soundboard at Motor City Casino Hotel. And then May 2nd, Carterville, Illinois, Walker's Bluff Casino Resort. May 3rd and 4th, Chicago, Illinois, at the Chicago Improv. Four shows. Oh, that'll be cool. You know who's working with me there? Mm. Willie Griswold. Willie G. Oh, All right. Fun. And then Pittsburgh, PA, at uh, the Pittsburgh Improv, May 10th and 11th, and the 17th and 18th, Columbus, at the Columbus Funny Bone. So you got some big casino shows and some nice club shows yeah. with Frank Caliendo. And um, Frank, uh, now, I can remember back in the day when you'd come in here talking about the website. Yeah. And then your brother would be on the phone the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> we used to just tabulate something. You could see how many people were w looking at the time, and it was pretty amazing. Is it downloading the... Uh, the uh uh, oh, yeah, that was part answering of Answering machine thing? The, the downloading, yeah. The Everyone websites yes. had counters? Yeah. Like at the bottom of each one? Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's what you were watching? Yeah, we could watch that. <laughs> you could go to a certain, like, backslash counter or something like that, and I'd be actually looking at it, and everybody would be looking at it like, you're paying too much attention to that, Frank. And I was like, I was. I mean, I was like, <laughs> yeah, I yeah. was more into the game of the web. Like, like, listeners would send in faxes and stuff like that. Caliendo, <laughs> do more voices, less uh, tallying. <laughs> And, uh, <laughs> but turns out that I was ahead of the game and now I've dropped way behind. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's the Caliendo curve. That's what happened. What are, now, you said you're, you're working on a few new voices. Yeah, there's always, uh, you know, I was talking about that. See, the Kevin Harlan thing, I, I've ta I probably talked about this evolution of stuff before, the, how I work on them, but people always find it fairly interesting, I guess. So it's like when you work on certain, when I work on certain voices, some are very close to each other. I didn't, you don't always realize that, but when I would do the John Madden kind of thing, I, you just take it out of your, this glottal area and you bring it up, it becomes Bill Walton. How great is that? <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> this is the greatest voice in the history of Western civilization. <laughs> so those voices, and a lot of them, we, we, people, when they want to work on them, because I would get that type of stuff, and I started to put this stuff on TikTok and, and uh, Instagram, that there's two Muppet voices, because Muppets are not actual voices. They're like cartoons. They're put on by a person, so they're not their actual voice. They're a character, which is more uh, exaggerated than the person's real voice. So Kermit the Frog, hi, hello, Kermit the Frog here, <laughs> and Fozzie Bear, ah, waka, 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 which are also Bert, oh, Bert, Ernie. So those two <laughs> voices. If you can do that stuff with your throat, you start to figure out different things. So the first one I realized was John C. Riley. So if you, did you touch my drum set? <laughs> Does everybody yeah. ever wonder how a Dallas come from? That's what that's all about right there. I see Pat, he's doing songs about Velveeta. That's pretty cool. Uh, that's, last, so that's spot last on. Last time I had, last time I heard a song about Velveeta, 
I, I, I fell off my <laughs> dinosaur. <laughs> I was going to say, I was trying to think dino nuggies, but it didn't work out. <laughs> so that so now if you add some air, it becomes Mark Ruffalo. I, I see this as an absolute win. I had no idea wow. that's even weird. Wow. That's amazing. Now, wow. now if you bring it down even more, it becomes Paul Giamatti. <laughs> I believe that was probably the greatest pasta song I've ever heard in my entire life. Bring it back with a side of broccoli and we'll be working together forever. Okay, that is the one of my favorite moments in the history. That was fantastic. That was so good, Frank. Thank you. Bravo. Frank Caliendo. God, I love that. Yeah, so those, and if you bring it down, it becomes Patrick Mahomes. If you put a little bit in there and act like a little kid and just trying to figure out where, and then every once in a while you get this going right here. That, and that, that oh. thing happens. And, uh, <laughs> that, thing that, happens. that thing happens. And they call it frog, frog in the throat. That's why they think it sounds like Kermit the Frog. But it's not. Dries and I are selling insurance. Insurance probably is how you pronounce it. And then, uh, <laughs> and then see that's the, that voice in there can become other people too. Uh, that's that's the that's the Fozzie Bear in in there. People say Kermit. I think it's more Fozzie Bear. And then. Then if you get rid of the rasp, it becomes Joe Rogan. Wow, Jamie. Oh, my gosh. Pull that up. That is <laughs> effing. That is effing nuts. Who would, who would do something like that? That's crazy. That is crazy. Frank, that is fantastic. Uh, John wow. C. Riley. Yeah, I don't even know. I mean, who, who would even think of doing that? That's it's so almost the, it's almost a Warner Brothers character. There's a whole lot of lumps. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, how many lumps would you like with them? A whole lot of lumps. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Why is that? Why is that bunny dressed like a girl now? That's kind of interesting. I was watching one of your videos, and you go, and you're like, "Yeah, I was doing Giamatti," and, and people kept commenting, "You sound more like Jack Nicholson." And you go, "Actually, I think Jack sounds like this." And you did the greatest Jack Nicholson I've ever heard. Yeah, Paul Giamatti is very. <laughs> it, the interesting thing about him is he kind of becomes Heath Ledger, the Joker. Oh, oh yeah, 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 it's yeah. not that far off. Yeah. <laughs> but there's another Joker that's living inside, and that's Jack Nicholson. <laughs> Which, of course, was the original Joker in the movies. So, if you believe these two voices are the same, I've got a really great piece of land to sell you. Just west of California. And I will not take it from you. Are you still working on Paul when he... He suddenly gets very like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's it? You? Uh, it's the. It's the. Uh, what's the movie you love? The wine tasting movie. Uh, the Paul wine. Giamatti. Sideways. Uh, Sideways. Sideways. Yeah. yeah, I love that movie. Yeah, but I'll memorize it. <laughs> yeah, that. Uh, what's the? What's the thing? He. What's the kind he doesn't? The, the, the Merlot. Oh, I will not have a thing Merlot. <laughs> So that's that's such a great movie. I've watched that movie probably twenty times, and that I love that scene. And he's terrific in he's that. So in, good. in the in what's the new movie? The, the holdovers. holdovers. Yeah. yeah. He's good in everything. I don't know. Yeah, he's, he's the greatest actor. He's yeah, so he really incredible is. to just watch. He he can contain. It's like a lot of stuff going on all brought it into just his face and body. Like, he doesn't have big movements, but they feel like they are. Like, remember when Michael Richards, people would do those... Um, People do Kramer impressions, and they'd be all over the place with their arms and stuff. And I was like, no, he he does big movements in small areas. Yeah, he, he hey, tightens Jerry, up. Yeah, it's yeah. right in here. <laughs> like you just got punched in the gut. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's it's, it, and that's what I try to do with impressions: is find what's the what's the moment of the person. Paul Giamatti's waiting to explode, right? It's a ticking time bomb. <laughs> but by the end of this, three, two, one, I am going off. <laughs> and I will not be able to contain these headphones on my ears. I will lose these cans. <laughs> I will be gone and out. I will hit my head and be knocked out like Chick McGee at the Turning Stone m m Casino <laughs> laying on that massage table. And I will wake up two days later. In a way, You've never seen. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost uh, Mar it's Curry. What's his uh, Tim Curryish? Like uh, there's something there too. Uh, <laughs> We've been schooled by uh, Frank Caliendo. God, I love that stuff. Did you obviously Paul Giamatti for that movie had to have a uh, some kind of appliance in his eye? But what I was wondering, uh, if you remember the movie, the character is supposed, supposed to have terrible body odor due to some illness. Mm -hmm. I, I, would, I, would, I would kind of wonder if he would douse himself in some kind of 
stench just to be <laughs> make his fellow actors he a little bit uncomfortable did. being around him. I hope he wasn't that much of a method actor. He wore a he there was a prosthetic or something yeah, like an eye like a contact, a contact type machine. of thing. Yeah. It's great. That it's like the first person I ever saw do something like was Kevin Pollack. That's his, amazing. Right? Excuse me, pardon me, sorry to bother you. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like he was the first guy I ever saw move an eye. Yeah, I was always afraid that it was going to get stuck. We'll come back with more. We're hanging out with comedian Frank Caliendo. This is the Bob and Tom Show. For a complete copy of the Bob and Tom Show contest rules, go to bobandtom.com. So we have uh, invited um, Leslie and Lindsay, two uh, beautiful young women, oh. to uh, uh, volunteer to get a tan. And I believe uh, Leslie, is Leslie ready to come? Oh, okay, here we go. Leslie is, um, uh, how can I word this? Deli it appears that you have not been in the sun at all. I'm fair skinned. Mm -hmm. But I mean, yes. you're, but you have virtually no tan no, lines. No, I haven't been in the sun in a couple of No weeks. swimming, no, okay. Mm -hmm. Very light complexion mm -hmm. uh, with dark hair. So, Leslie, this is sem a semi personal question. When you go on a regular basis, do you go with the bikini on or do you go uh, with... I, I with do not. I wear the paper panties. Paper panties. We disgusting. Okay. So everybody likes yeah. the no tan line mm -hmm. look, huh? It's like a map. She has a tan line. It's just not up top. I'm a tan line fan. I have to but now, uh, Noted. Now, presumably... <laughs> Presumably, then, you're going to have a tan line now. You know, even she's caught on to you. Yeah. Even Angie, our guest. Even our well, guests noted. are like, yeah, noted. Whatever, move on. Tom, uh, let's bring in Tim Cavanaugh. <laughs> Lindsay is another gorgeous woman. Uh, step right up there, Lindsay. Come uh, on in. Uh, to my office. She's, uh, she's wearing a Bob and Tom bikini. Is that me on your breast? A Bob and Tom, <laughs> Bob and Tom <laughs> bikini with Bob and Tom on her buttocks. Who, who is the genius? I don't know. But How is she going to get more tan? <laughs> she's lightly tan. She does now. have some tan. So what are you going to do? pretty tan. So what do you do to, what do you do, uh, to Lindsay when you're already a little bit tan? It's just going to enhance her color. Okay. It's just going to make her even tanner. from the Bob and Tom Show. Miss some of the show? Become a Bob and Tom VIP and subscribe to the audio and video podcasts. The Bob and Tom Show, on air, on app, and on demand. People who each brought something very interesting to the mix. Vanderpump Villa streaming now on Hulu. And that's a look at your entertainment news on a Tuesday. More of the Bob and Tom Show coming up. Ladies and gentlemen, Bob and Tom. I thought it was so cool <laughs> because they had wall-to-wall -wall carpeting in oh. the bathroom. Oh, yeah. Oh, I thought that was so cool. After about two happened? months, there was a mushroom growing out of the carpet. <laughs> had to pull the, all the carpeting out. Sure. Then they had to take the subfloor up and reinforce the joist. It was yes. perfect. Yeah, if you have wall-to-wall -wall carpeting in your... Uh, Bathroom, uh, look forward to uh. harvesting some mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> Bob and Tom in the morning and highlights all day long. The Bob and Tom Show, weekday mornings at 6 a.m. Eastern on Bob and Tom 24-7. Hi, this is Kostaki Economopoulos, and you're listening to Bob and Tom Radio. Hi, I'm Bert. And I'm Ellie. And we're proud to announce our new breakfast treat, Bert and Ellie's Muffin. The Bert and Ellie Muffin is delicious, but don't take our word for it. Here's our spokesperson, Eddie Van Halen. Hey, thanks, man. Hi, Eddie Van Halen here. You know, I love munching on Bert and Ellie's muffin. In fact, I was just telling my wife, Valerie, Bert and Ellie's muffin is the best thing I've ever put in my mouth. 
Ah, man, this is finger licking good. I bet. This muffin is so good. Mm. I just can't keep it to myself. Oh. Mm. Yeah. I suggest you eat Bertinelli's muffin today. <laughs> Pick one up on your way home, dude, or stop by Bertinelli's spot. The next time you eat out, <laughs> look for the big pink smiling lips downtown next to the Y. Mm. Thanks, Eddie. Mm. I can't stop mowing down on this thing. Oh. 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 Eat all you want, Eddie. Oh. You'll make more. Bertinelli's muffin. Oh. Come by and shove one in your face today. Oh. Hey, we'll leave the stereo on for you, and we'll turn it up real loud so you can hear it. <laughs> You're listening to Bob and Tom Radio. 24-7. Do I, actually, I'm doing a CNN interview at 10, or else I'd go with him. Do Larry King. First time. I'm very Larry. excited. Yeah, I just want him to go, Saskatchewan, hello! <laughs> <laughs> Can you turn down the electric blanket? <laughs> I can't turn off the fan above the oven. <laughs> I go, you know what I'm going to do, Larry? We're going to try to get your shoulders a little higher. Can you do that? Why are my suspenders so tight? Because <laughs> they don't go around your <laughs> Larry. That's why they go up. See, if you let them go, the shoulders will do that. You won't look like a, you know, you look like a vulture in heat. <laughs> Muncie, hello. Question for the skinhead. <laughs> Hi, who's this? We'll go with Kevin. Okay, Kevin. All right, Kevin. We'll accept that. I, uh, couple, about a month and a half ago, I walked in. My fiance walked in and found me looking at some uh, adult entertainment on the laptop. Yeah. I picked up the laptop and chucked it at me. Ooh. My cat-like reflexes. I moved. Uh -huh. A brand-new flat-screen TV took it right through the middle of it. Oh, <laughs> man. Wow, I guess there's no more <clears throat> solo uh, work by uh, <laughs> Wow. Well, yeah, well, I should, I should just take it in the face because then I could at least watch the DVDs I have. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, but, but yeah, that's broken it. eyes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, take it. Yeah. 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 It's easier yeah. to sure. replace the TV yeah. than it is your face. It broke a nose will heal. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. you could never find yeah. another flat screen TV. Ooh. They quit making yeah. them, right? <laughs> <laughs> and Jesus said, take this bread and eat it. It is my body. And the disciples said, Jesus, we're all on low-carb diet. <laughs> <laughs> We appreciate you dying for our sins, but we're all trying to slim down. Like <laughs> we want to look good in the painting. Bob and Tom, you can pick your morning radio show, and you can pick your note. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom show. We're all here with our special guest, Tom. Would you introduce our special guest? Well, the handsome factor in this room is unbelievable. Oh, it's off the chart. Every day. It's because Ace is here, of course. I Jesus. I, 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 is he here? <laughs> Look busy. Oh, no. Isn't that how that works? <laughs> Frank Caliendo is our guest. Frank's a great stand-up comedian, and he also does impressions. Frank's also just a great pure stand-up. Uh, but uh, he's going to be doing a bunch of shows, including Verona, New York, at the beautiful Turning Stone Resort and Casino, April 12th. That'll be a great show. I'll also coming up Detroit, Carterville, Illinois, Chicago with the Improv, May 3rd and 4th, featuring Willie G. And then uh, Pittsburgh, May 10th and 11th, and Columbus, Ohio, May 17th and 18th. Speaking of shows, live show with um, Patty Godwin. That's right, Patty G. Willie G. Josh E. Christy Lee. <laughs> and uh, let's see, uh, Jeff Oski. Is there any way and me, that, that you would stop that ever? Mm. Which part? I mean oh, the fun that, part? All the rhyming and stuff. <laughs> you mean the part that brings people joy? <laughs> Does it, though? <laughs> I, it's going to be... I envy you thinking It's going that. to be in West Virginia. <clears throat> thank you. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Wow. Coming up, coming up, coming up Friday. Uh, Friday you know, night. hearing stuff that we're not... Privilege to, yeah. oh, that's my, else. my background as a poet. I uh, uh -huh. hope to see you in Charleston, West Virginia, Friday night, and a special show Friday morning with Duke Tomato and uh, the boys, including the Brass to Mouth Horns. So that's going to be a fun show. So we've got, uh, 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 we just were schooled by uh, Frank Caliendo. If you missed that, you've got to go check it out on YouTube or whatever. Frank's great. He did, just showed us how he, some of these voices are interrelated. But uh, Frank, even, uh, I know you've done a lot of uh, great sporting events in your career. Uh, uh, you, for all I know, you've met Tiger Woods. I don't know. Uh, Tiger. I have never. I've not. I have not met Tiger Woods. Uh, but no. uh, well, uh, but uh, Tiger, even at the, the peak of his career, would have a coach, a swing coach. They called it. 
uh, much the same way uh, as, 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 as uh, yes, or just a swing. Uh, just a, uh, yeah, but, <laughs> knowing yeah, some yeah, of his yeah. past, I'm thinking that <laughs> fair. Hey man, fair. we're swinging, man. That's yeah. fair. But uh, in, in the case of a comedian such as yourself, uh, it's uh, you need a little schooling, and that's where <sighs> that's where that's where ice comes in, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Who's that yeah. sexy man with a deep voice? Ace Cosby. Here he is with his joke of the day. Hey chick. Yes, Ace. <laughs> what's a what's the cannibal's favorite noodle? What's a cannibal's favorite noodle? I don't know, Ace. What? Ramen. <laughs> that was Ace Cosby's joke of the day. Ramen. <laughs> now, would it not have gone better with raw men? Maybe. And is it the pronunciation problem? Or let's see if think? it works better with Paul Giamatti. <laughs> <laughs> hey, chick. Yes, Paul. What's a cannibal's favorite kind of pasta? I don't know. What's the pasta? Ramen. <laughs> <laughs> mm. uh, thank you very much. All right. Uh, it's thank you, uh, very inexpensive as well. <laughs> I believe we um, can no. <laughs> eat this all day long. <laughs> Hello, Clarice. <laughs> you, um, uh, you have a lovely wife and two beautiful children. Does your wife have a favorite voice that you do? Uh, uh, d d does she ever weigh in on the professional side of your life? Constantly. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah, and it's never good advice. It's just bad. I mean... <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what it is. Uh, she has had she, she's had a couple of fantastic ideas, um, but uh, yeah, I'm trying to think if there's a voice she no. Does she I, hate any? Most of them, especially <laughs> mine. Mine is a big one. She's not a fan of. Uh, yeah, I don't. No, I I don't think that. I'm trying to think if there's anything there. When the kids were little, they like stuff. Now I just embarrass them. So it, there was a show called Phineas and Ferb with Dr. Doofenshmirtz. Sure. That, oh, very interesting. That kind of thing right there. So I would do that for the kids they, and then their friends, but now they don't want me doing any of that kind of stuff. <laughs> so uh, my wife, I'm very antisocial, so my wife would just wish that I would talk. I will go to a, a neighborhood thing and I'll just, you know, complain to the neighbors about them, <laughs> their faces, which is a problem uh, in itself. Um, so, no, I don't think she has a favorite voice. I don't think there's anything that she really likes. When I first started dating her, I did the John Madden impression. He was, you know, on TV at the time. And then her dad was watching, you know, she's, uh, you know, I was 25. She's 20s. No, she's over 21. So I was probably a little older than that. But, um, she, she was watching a football game. She goes, that's Frank there. And her dad was like, what? Like, you know, when John Madd was talking on the games, like, well, it's, that's the voice he does or something. He's like, oh, okay. This, is, this was getting weird for a second. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I don't think she has anything that she... Yeah, I don't think there's anything she likes about me anymore, to be <laughs> honest with you. Oh, I think oh, it's a, we're past that. I'm sorry I brought it up. <laughs> um, uh, and then, obviously, you don't... The voices stay out of the bedroom. Oh yeah, I mean, I mean that would be very awkward. Yeah, you, that's always one that uh, <laughs> I was just trying to think of what's a good one. Robert Downey Jr. Oh yeah, idea. sounds like a great idea. Uh, we're done. <laughs> there you go. It's good for me. Good for you. Uh, good for both. She of us. pepper pots. Is you, pe you, you can rest now. You can, yeah, it's, uh, it's, yeah. <laughs> we're all fine. We're all fine. Yeah. Uh, this, face it. This isn't the worst thing you've caught me doing. Uh, well, yeah. So yeah, I'm trying to. You know, the Morgan Freeman obviously, and that's when they realized this was over. <laughs> Well, well, he was done. Yeah, he was yeah. not quite done yet. <laughs> I, I wish I could tell you. I wish I could tell you, I wish I could tell you what happened. Yeah. <laughs> now, we have uh, Jess Hooker sitting in for Christy Lee over there. We have time for a quick news story. Have we missed anything? A new survey of 2,000 American car owners reveals just how attached people are to their vehicles. Oh. According to the poll from Meineke, 50% think of their car as a part of their family. It's ridiculous. Huh. 50% of respondents also said that they would hold on to their current car if given the option because 60% said it because it's reliable. 45% said because it gets good gas mileage. They have a fond memory of the car, 25% said. Hmm. Okay. Mm. Like maybe doing it in the car, you think so? Oh, I don't yeah. know. That could be for some. Yeah. I know where that's where Pat likes it, in Love the car. Yeah. Back what? Backseat yeah. in a parking lot. Oh, yeah. He, he is a backseat it. lover. Loves yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Did you have an attachment to a car? Do you? Uh... 
Do I? Yeah. No. I, I, I mean, I like cars, but I... You drove a different car this morning, and you told me you kind of missed that car. I did. I, I have, I've had a Jeep for a long time, and then I got a sedan, and I kind of miss my Jeep. Oh. Yeah. 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 Um, some people just have emotional attachments to their car. Have you ever had a car so long you grew an attachment to it? No, I've liked cars I've had, but for yeah. me, most of my life, cars have been a source of financial pain. Yeah. And so I, I do not look at cars fondly at all. I look at them as something that's eventually going to cost me money I don't have. Okay. Not just how I've lived. I always love cars, even when I had no money. I Can't stand great it. Great yeah. car. <laughs> Can't stand it. No. Oh. And I don't, like, I don't like all the stuff on the car. The only good thing that's come out of car technology in the last 20 years is the... The camera for the backing up. Yeah. Oh, okay. Other, other than that, I, I give me roll down wind manual everything. No kidding. I, I, my dad. I hate all that stuff because no again, kidding. it's it, it goes wrong, and yeah. then all of a sudden you can't start your car. If my window goes down and I can't get it back up, at least I can still start my car in one of those older cars. Now crap goes wrong and it shuts the whole effing thing down. I hate them. If you were the only one with the window roller, you'd be like, oh, I'm so tired from the window roller. Like, you, <laughs> come on. I swear to God, I'd would. I, I, I prefer all of that. Just yesterday, I had this conversation with someone. They were concerned about if their car went into a river or lake. Yeah. I'm not kidding. And they were going, oh, that's why I'd like to have the roll down windows. That way I could get out. <laughs> What's and, wrong with that? Uh, well, first of all, I remember when Mythbusters did the thing where they sank the car. Did you see that episode? Mm -hmm. First of all, the electric windows still work. And uh, Really? Yes. Mm -hmm. and as part of this problem. conversation, I went online, and for, I think, $7, you can buy a special hammer. Yeah, yeah, yeah those are good. That'll bust out the window <laughs> in case. But uh, what are the odds of your... <laughs> Well, recently, while driving into a pond, I, uh, uh, now, uh, when we come back, we're going to hang out with comedian Frank Caliendo. Uh, coming up in the news, we have um, an interesting story about a cruise ship and people getting stranded on an island in Africa and a terrifying headline with the words, Runaway Saw Blade. Oh. <laughs> that is terrifying. A big one. What is this, a cartoon? Uh, yeah, it's wow. terrifying. Uh, this is The Bob and Tom Show. Thanks for listening to The Bob and Tom. Have to do a little stunt here. Uh, we're going to try something. Chick McGee, we wow. have a new story about a woman that uh, tried to steal a case of beer between her legs in a grocery really? store. In Did Zach you see yeah. that? Zachary, Louisiana. In Chick's defense, uh, this is bigger than a case. Now, well, is, you know, we have uh, some Keystone Light there. And Chick is a, putting on a, uh, it's a 30 pack. It is a 30 pack. I've yeah. noticed that. So that's, uh, that's six a, more than what she was trying to steal. Well, that is one great looking dress, Jake. Where'd you get that? This you know what a, you need? One of those uh, magic turbans that the uh, ladies would wear. Uh -huh. Is that what it was called? It's called the turby, right? Yeah. Oh, I yeah. have one of those at home. I could have brought it in for oh, you. Oh, look at you. If you had that, you. you'd look like say a chick has, a, has the mumu on. Uh, Can, is that a... Go ahead. Yeah, a chick is removing his trousers because they were holding back Oops. on the... Uh, uh oh, oh well, oh, oh, a little uh, too much. A little too much. Too much, too much. Okay, right. so you're leaving your underpants on because that's right. kind of see-through. We don't want to scare anybody. All right. Look at that. No, no, we don't scare anybody. Do you want to try the 12-pack first? Uh -huh. Soda. Uh -huh. Okay. All right. Well. Uh, okay. Now we you're nonchalantly pack. walking through a convenience store. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. you reach over. Uh, you cram the 12 pack between your legs. Uh huh. And then now you try to try walking. No. Oh, a little easier without the pants, isn't it, Chick? Okay. Yeah. He's, oh, yeah. He, he, he's walking. That's how she was walking. Oh, yeah. I know. Look at that. You're walking real, you. real slow, that short steps. That is exactly what uh -huh. you look like. for me today. <laughs> <laughs> you look like, you're, look like you're trying to hold back some kind of bowel yeah, eruption. Yeah, can I get the door for you, ma'am? Uh-huh. I'll have a little trouble. I can see that. Uh, Could let you, me help uh, you out. Thank you, thank Once well, again, once again, this is a... You look a little uh, like an old lady. This is from Zachary, Louisiana. Now, how Louisiana. long could you... Well, that's can a, I see the 12-pack? That's a 12. See, she should have gone. With a twelver. Lovely day, thank you. Uh huh. Now, could you uh, make That's it? That's a magic. Could you make trick. it to your car? Do you think? Mm. Wow. Say there are no stairs. stairs. Say there are no stairs, and you can make it right to your car. It's starting to chafe. Is it? Okay. Well, you know what? I'm starting to lose it a little bit. Okay, I'll try try removing this the twelve pack. Okay. Let's try to go with the case. Well, all right. Oh. Is the beer is the case of beer cold or is it warm? I'm not stealing anything. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Well, that's hey, 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 it looks like your water broke. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now, once again, Woo. 
We're trying to duplicate a, um, a robbery now here. This. Now, this is going to be a challenge Th because this, this actually is, is <laughs> that is uh, heavier. That's a, th we have that's a, a 30 of 30 Keystone pack Light. Of Keystone and that's Light. probably, that's probably, well, I'll bet it's darn close to, well. 30 pounds? 30, 30 pounds. shoving it between us. By the way, I, I need to say this. The Moo Moo is courtesy of Dean, Dean's oh Aunt Rosetta. God. Aunt uh, Rosetta, wow. A chick has bent over. He's cramming the 30-pack oh, yeah. between his legs. Try uh, you walking. Know, you know, I just, I just oh. saw that. Oh, Walk that, over to the yeah. microphone over there. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want me to do? You're doing okay. Oh, mm -mm. Ow. 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 Oh, oh, man. Yeah, see. Can't do it. It's too okay. Heavy. It's too heavy. I think it's too wide. You think because, you can do 24? Uh, she had the narrow... Uh, yeah, she Gates. had the twelve pack of cans. the The nice thing about the the Keystone Light there, it's a it's, it's more like a thirty big big and wide it's like a cube. Six heavier. Yeah, yeah. well, you, of course you, it is. You have to hand it to her though for not just grabbing a six pack and going for it. She went all the way, right? Mm -hmm. By going for the twenty four twenty four can pack. I can't tell you how striking you are in that outfit. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you have to watch our TV show just to see it. It smells womany. Yeah. Uh -huh. It smells old. <laughs> <laughs> well, again. Hey, did you enjoy those videos played in that break? Check out the Bob and Tom YouTube playlist for more great stuff. Important job interview. Hey, Brenda, how'd it go last night? <laughs> well, my knees feel great, but uh, <clears throat> do the Atta Girl people make lozenges? <laughs> you whore. Atta Girl knee pads. Order today and you'll receive a free head helmet. You'll love wearing this stylish tabletop helmet with its flat, level surface, big enough to hold his beer, remote control, and a magazine. Atta Girl knee pads. Protective goggles sold separately. You're listening to Bob and Tom Radio. <laughs> You're so weird. You have no idea. Essential Morning Radio. <laughs> this is Bob and Tom Radio. 24 7. 24 7. Uh -huh. Tommy and I, I actually met in Ireland at the Cat Laughs Festival. Really? We've known mm -hmm. each other for, for a very some long time. For some time, huh? Yes. Back in the day. Do you go to Ireland a lot? I yeah, do. Right. Well, my family is actually from Kilkenny, and then they happened to put a festival right in the town, which was highly convenient for me to still go back and visit and my... you actually uh, see relatives. I do. Mm -hmm. But, like, the last time I went, my brother and I got there. He, my brother and sister went with me, and we went out drinking. We, we weren't drunk, but we had drank a lot of Guinness, and, I, and for whatever reason, I kept seeing a lot of dwarves. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> and, uh, well, I'm, I'm glad not, you weren't I'm drunk. Not, uh, uh, I, I, yeah. And I said to my aunt who lives in the town, I said, hey, is there an inordinate amount of dwarves in this town? And she goes, well, Kathleen, I suppose it would depend on your definition of inordinate. I was like, wow, 38? I don't know what. And she started, she's like, well, there's Maybe a murder. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, I'm like, that's where this whole leprechaun thing got started. People uh -huh. just got hammered in the bar and went, he was magical and he disappeared. And no, that was Dave and he's a dwarf and he went home. That's all. Paid his tab. Walked out went through the home. night. Didn't, uh -huh. didn't even do a card trick. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Just went home. <laughs> John Joseph is our guest. Uh -huh. Try to figure out the words. Nobody. Dylan. Do you know the words to Dylan songs? Not, Not a one of them. Here's every song ever written by Bob Dylan. Uh -huh. <laughs> Did I get them all? Did I miss any? You got them. Uh, Holy <laughs> mackerel, Andy. Is that really his voice? I think it is. Come on. You, you think when Bob Dylan was in kindergarten class, he was saying stuff like, he took my glue. Hi, this is Augie. Shortly. 
Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show at the news desk. It's Jess Hooker. Hello. There's Pat Godwood. Hey, Chick. Josh Arnold's here. Chick, you old so and so. Oh, you piece of. Oh, yeah, thank you. No, no, no. Yeah. It's oh, oh, it's a positive. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> there's Ace Cosby. <laughs> I'm Chick McGee, and here's uh, Tom Griswold with a Bob and Tom comedy legend. That's right. He is uh, comedian Frank Caliendo. And uh, Frank is uh, doing some road work. Uh, among other great places he's going to be stopping in the near future, it'll be uh, the showroom at Turning Stone Resort and Casino on a Friday night, Friday, April 12th, to be precise. That'll be a great show. And then uh, Frank Caliendo is also going to be doing some stuff at the Motor City Casino Complex in Detroit, Michigan, coming up on the 24th of April. May finds Frank at the Chicago Improv with Willie G doing shows May 3rd and May 4th. Get all the information at... Uh, uh, Frank Caliendo's... Uh, Frankonstage.com. Frankonstage.com. You didn't have to spell Caliendo then. All, All right. right. Is that why you did that? Yeah. Frank on stage, because people are always, and that's that, you know, go back to the old see alien do. That's how you do Caliendo. Oh, yeah. See alien do. Yeah. Uh, but it's just easier to go frankonstage.com, and it gets you there. There you go. Frankonstage.com. And you're looking good. Thank uh, you. I, I, I've been waiting the whole time for you to notice. <laughs> Like every other time I've ever been here, the handsome quotient went up when I was fat as I could have been. That was now, the first line I said. I said, the handsome quotient's way up in the room. And then Ace oh. chimed in, yeah, I'm here every day. Every day yeah. Oh, but I oh. thought it was for Ace. That's oh, no, good. see, that's, no. Ace is no, so no. good at that. <laughs> yeah. At taking the compliments from others? <laughs> yes, yes. I'm oh, so, yes. so sorry. I've got mirrors. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't lie, do they? And uh, one of the, obviously this is radio, and uh, people can actually watch this, and, and, but uh, primarily radio. And when you were doing your little hunk a few minutes ago, the faces I've always that you could you could do your famous uh, uh, the younger George Bush W. You can do it without even saying anything. Yeah, you know, just have make it happen. Yeah. <laughs> it's so it's the, it's the triangle face. And your and your Jack also had a. a yeah, a, it's a, got that in there, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's amazing. And then to become the Joker, <laughs> you just bring it back all the way. <laughs> oh, that's so fun. That's so fun. And speaking of the Joker, I got it. Somebody tweeted at me the. Uh, the, the Joker to do the Heath Ledger because I said Paul Giamatti. Listen how close Paul. This is Paul Giamatti doing the Heath Ledger Joker. You want to know how I got these scars? <laughs> <laughs> My father was a drinker and a fiend. <laughs> and one night he goes off crazier than usual. Mommy gets the kitchen knife to defend herself. He doesn't like that. Oh no, uh, no. <laughs> not one bit. <laughs> so me watching, he takes the knife. Uh, to her laughing while he does it. He turns to me and he says, why so serious? <laughs> <laughs> Comes at me with a knife. Why so serious? He sticks the plate in my mouth. Let's put a smile on that face. <laughs> and in the end, why so serious? <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's fantastic. That's Which would be totally different as John C. Riley, right? <laughs> Well, you want to know how I got these scars? <laughs> <laughs> My father was a drinker and a fiend. Yeah. And one night he goes off crazy with the usual. And one night she goes off to defend herself. Uh, I don't know the rest of it, but it ends up pretty bad. <laughs> and there's something about being serious at the end, which I don't want to be. <laughs> That's pretty cool right there. <laughs> how many of the folks have you met that you've done impressions of? Uh, so I think it's funny because people have started following me on like Instagram and, and other social media sites when they see that stuff it's fun. mark ruffalo one of the i don't know if he follows me or not but one of the things he does like if you can speak spanish you got the job <laughs> because they always have to dub everything right so um another one seth rogan did follow me mm -hmm. uh which uh, i thought was pretty good uh, i had no idea if it was even doing a seth rogan <laughs> <laughs> is uh willie griswold around i heard he's got some good stuff uh, <laughs> i don't know uh, just uh speaking of, see he's another one that's if you go the burt laugh <laughs> you know that laugh right there if you slow it down that's seth rogan's laugh that <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's pretty good there, I guess. I don't know. Uh, try it again. Um, we're speaking with comedian Frank Caliendo. 
and uh, Mr. Caliendo on tour. We'll get to those dates again in a second. Or you can um, go to the aforementioned um, place. Frankonstage.com. <laughs> Just picture me on the stage. I, I, I had the wrong piece of paper for me. Or you can go to GregWarrenComedy.com. <laughs> yeah. That won't help you. Uh, no, no, so it's sorry. Great. Uh, I'll have Warren redirect. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, we have Jess Hooker sitting in for... Christy Lee right now, and uh, Jess, what do you got over there? Several Norwegian cruise line passengers were stranded on an African island. Jill and Jay Campbell told WMBF. Oh, you don't want to know what this one stands for. <laughs> no, the M is fine. No, the, the M BF is a little rough. The B and the F. <laughs> really? Well, boofu is what it means. Okay, oh, thank you. Oh, okay. Okay. We have a guest, please. Okay. Jill and Jay Campbell I'm said that they... I'm still trying to figure out all the letters. I get yeah, that. WMBF. That's mm. that's the name. Anal sex. Is I got, the, okay, yeah. <laughs> I got that part. It was the earlier letters oh. I was struggling with. Oh. Mm. You're crushing me. <laughs> crushing me. They were eight days into a 21-day cruise in South Africa when they stopped on the island of Sao Tome. The couple said that they were on a private tour of the island, but the tour ran late, causing them to miss the ship's all-aboard time. Despite help from the <laughs> island's Coast Guard, the cruise ship refused to let them and several other passengers back on board, leaving them stranded without any of their belongings. The island's Coast Guard. What do you think the Coast Guard of <laughs> South is? Just one guy with a, an oar? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, ready positions, every, everybody. Uh, you're stuck here. <laughs> a, Nor or a Norwegian cruise spokesperson told the station, well, this is a very unfortunate situation. This is a very unfortunate situation. <laughs> Guests are responsible for ensuring they return to the ship at the published of time. Of course. And are responsible for any necessary travel costs to rejoin the ship on the next available yes, port call. this is their fault. Yeah, they're, they went on a private thing, so they're late. Uh, Pat, you're the one that's been on the cruise ships the most. That's how it works. People uh, get left behind all the time. All it's the time? It's your responsibility. you got to oh. fly yourself to the next place. So, wow. you know, do you have your passport with you, presumably? Some people do. Maybe people don't. So if you don't, are you stuck on an African island? Oh, you're stuck. Yeah. The Campbells say that a number of other stranded passengers are elderly, with one having a heart condition, <laughs> one was a paraplegic, as Jeez. well as a pregnant woman. Okay, uh, this, this almost sounds like an April Fool's gag. Wow. They've got the, the cast of very needy people. Uh, <laughs> oh, jeez. Well, I'm, you know, I don't yeah. feel sorry for them. You gotta, they gotta, the boat's got to go and it's got to go. Snooze, you lose. I feel sorry for the old man and the paraplegic because they're stuck with a whiny pregnant woman. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure she wasn't quiet about being stuck there. Pat, do you have, <laughs> you're the one that's been in the cruise boats, the cruise ships, rather. You got a tribute, Pat? The worst place to be stuck is uh, down in Mexico in one particular city. You do not want to get uh, stuck in this. Really? The ship just left without us in Ensenada. <laughs> we were drinking tequila and eating enchiladas. Now I'm running in my Tommy Bahama and her in Prada. A couple of fools who missed the boat in Ensenada. Oh, Ensenada, pray for us, Heavenly Father. <laughs> this is where the cartel is, mind your business, or your tostada. <laughs> Why couldn't it be Cabo, a Puerto Vallarta? No, we're stuck in crime ridden downtown Ensenada. Our passports are back on the ship and we are stranded. We have to make it to the airport empty-handed. It happens. <laughs> then try to fly to catch our ship's next destination. With no ID, no cash, and suspicious medication. Oh, Ensenado, keep your rotten avocados. We could be robbed and left for dead this time tomorrow. Why couldn't it be Cancun or Guadalajara? No, instead we're, st instead we're stuck in dirty downtown. See, my stunk was stuck. Instead we're stuck in dirty downtown Ensenada. Get us out. Oh. <laughs> so you've got no passport, no money. You're on some little island. Can you get off? 
What are you doing? Well, well yeah. <laughs> you can get off anywhere, really. Yeah. Yeah. A little imagination. Yeah. I bet there's a phone booth down there you can call mm-hmm. in. Certainly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Very helpful. Okay. Uh, uh, right now, the Bob and Tom Show is brought to you by BetterHelp. BetterHelp is about gaining easy access, easier access, certainly, uh, to your own mental health, of course, but to uh, getting therapy. And BetterHelp has uh, uh, come up with a great way to provide you with an option to do therapy online. The way it works is you will... Uh, do a little quick questionnaire, and they will hook you up with uh, one of more than 35,000 participating therapists. You can switch therapists anytime, by the way, should you desire to do so. But the point of the whole exercise here is that the therapy itself is done online. So it's a lot more convenient. You don't have to get in a car and drive to some office and sit there wonder what that guy's got going on. No, you just uh, do it wherever you are. Uh, so uh, it's much, much more flexible and much more convenient. See what I'm talking about and find your social sweet spot in life by working on your head with BetterHelp. Go to BetterHelp.com slash BT Show today to knock 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P, BetterHelp.com slash B-T show. Work on your own self-awareness and uh, work on work on your head a little bit. It's good for you. BetterHelp, H-E-L-P, BetterHelp.com slash B-T show. And this portion of the Bob and Tom show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Coming up, uh, opinions about April Fool's Day and a very scary story involving a uh, loose and large saw blade on the loose. This is the Bob and Tom show. Hi. This is Andy Kindler, and this is a different... This is one that I wrote, and we'd like to play it on your program. Okay, right. go ahead for it. The full moon lights enough for me to see how oh, the woman in you got the wipers on with the heat on your feet. You're about to blow my fuse. <laughs> I won't put it in park until it gets dark. Cause baby, you know the rules. I can't get off with the dome light on. <laughs> I can't get home with the dome light on. <laughs> Shut the door, you stupid whore. They're playing our favorite song. Ain't no need to fiddle if you can't find my fiddle. I can't get home with the dome light on. I can't get off with the dome light on. I'm kindly old fashioned when it comes to certain things. Never wore a pair of short pants and always catch up on my onion rings. Some things I can deal with, baby, I don't care if you chew. Even let you take your shoes off But there's one thing I just won't do I can't get home With the dome light on <laughs> Shut the door, you stupid whore They're playing our favorite song Ain't no need to fiddle If you can't find my fiddle I can't get home With the dome light on With the dome light on I don't oh. believe oh. when you tell me that you're saving up for beauty school. <laughs> and I don't believe a word you say about meeting that motley crew. <laughs> and I don't believe when you tell me that you don't believe I'm a fool. But I do believe if that light stays on, the cops will see what we do. <laughs> I can't get off with the dome light on. <laughs> Shut the door, you stupid whore, they're playing that favorite song. <laughs> Ain't no need to fiddle if you can't find my fiddle. I can't get off with the dome light on. Oh. 
playing now. All right. Hey. Hey. Hey, it's Josh Arnold with a food recommendation for you. Gardner's Wisconsin Cheese, their famous oven-baked cheese. It arrives pre-baked. You just heat it and eat it, grill it, skillet, or air fry it. Check out their new oven-baked cheese flavor, jalapeno. Ooey, gooey, spicy cheese. It's sure to tickle your taste buds with real jalapeno flavor and heat. Perfect for game day parties or Anytime. Excuse me. Are um, are you serious with it? I mean, why are you doing this? Me, uh, the real me is right here. I could easily be doing this. We, we don't need you, man. I uh, look. There's only room for one of us. That's Gardner's Wisconsin Cheese Jalapeno Flavored Oven Baked Cheese. It's now available in Gardner's Oven Baked Bundle Package, so try all the great flavors. Receive free cold pack shipping and free cheese curds when you spend $59 or more at GardnersWisconsinCheese.com. Click the link below and tell them your pal Josh, me the real Josh, from the Bob and Tom Show sent you. Tiki Barber here. Remember the days when I was a running back in the NFL? Well, if you're on your feet all day like I was, you get the struggle. The secret is orange insoles. Their insoles are like magic for your feet and body. They'll help you kick hip pain, sore feet, and lower back discomfort to the sidelines. Feel better, do more with orange insoles. Clothes on, you realize it's not your girlfriend, it's just a woman on a bus. So <laughs> that's how you know you're too high. Bob and Tom. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. All kinds of guests this morning. If you go by voices you're hearing. Oh, of course. Oh. Tom, explain that. Well, that's because uh, <laughs> the guy that does the voices is Frank Caliendo. Yeah. <laughs> now, um, we're also going to have a, a little stop by with Etta May. We'll yeah. talk with her on Zoom, which uh, leads me to a quick question. Frank, you do so many great voices uh, and, uh, as a comedian. Do you do any women? No. No. Have you, I, have you ever tried? Uh, yeah, I just wasn't good at it. I just didn't have the register for it. So it, it, I, it always... Sounded like an effeminate guy, so that was it never really could make it work. Um, it's easier for women to do men, like Melissa Via Senor can do. But even then, it sounds like it sounds like a little kid more to me trying yeah. to do an, a, like a, 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 a like she does. A, she's people don't know this. She, my show is the first show she ever got on television with. Oh on no, Frank kidding! TV, yeah, oh. so. It was funny because when she did America's Got Talent, somehow NBC erased my show. <laughs> like, <laughs> she's first time ever on TV. Uh, they have a habit of doing that. Yeah. <laughs> um, but Melissa's, like, told people since then I, she'd actually done, mm. you know, my show. Because it was, there were some people telling me about her, and I was like, I, I had her on, and she was fantastic. Like, unbelievable. Kind of kind, kind of green. She was new, but mm -hmm. I was like, these are really, this is amazing Oh, and stuff Wilson is doing. a lot of fun. Yeah. And, yeah. and um... But she was, you know, she was doing some of her, you know, early ones. And I was like, she's so great. And then she was gone for a little bit. And then she did America's Got Talent and got Saturday Night Live. She was actually doing a sketch with me for the NFL on Fox when she got the call about Saturday Night Live. Wow. So I don't know if it was the, it, that was the final audition or if she just, I think she got it that day. Like the manager or agent called her and told her she got it because she just like, like, she had this look on her face, like, why am I here with Frank? <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm doing this. This could be so much better. Oh, it was actually at ESPN. I was doing an ESPN sketch with her. So, uh, but I remember that that she got a call and, like, ev like she didn't talk about what it was, but then a couple of days later I heard, oh, I think she got that. Oh, that's that, cool. That day. Yeah. Pretty Have you ever right. been approached to play uh, a famous person in, like, a drama? All the time. Oh, okay. Uh, they always send me auditions for that stuff. And uh, usually it's, 
I don't know. I, it's it's not like super famous people. It'll be somebody in a mafia movie or something. You got to do the research and try and do it. That that's a very different thing than a lot of times they don't even go with a person who sounds like the person though. So mm. it's just like what's the take on it? Um, I even get that for cartoons. It's funny because they'll send you cartoons like, can you do a Scooby Doo? And like, ruh, ruh. yeah, everybody can do that. But then it's weird because they're like, well, try and do it a different than they normally do it. Do Shaggy, but don't do Shaggy. Like, you know, to, to do it almost like John C. Riley. Hey, Scoob, uh, <laughs> you want? Would you do that for one Scooby snack? Would you do that for two <laughs> Scooby snacks? <laughs> you know, so. <laughs> But then they and you let you find, you see the cartoon and they went with the person who just sounded like the Scooby Doo. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, why did you have me do this so differently? Then uh, that yeah, happens. Frank Welker's still alive, I think. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's a weird thing where they always say, "Try and do it differently. We want to go with something different this time." And like, then they do that one time, and everybody was like, "That doesn't sound anything like them." So yeah. they never try it again. Yeah, ask Brian Henson how that worked. Yeah, out. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, I don't. As far as the famous people, yeah, they do send they send me more of those than I'd like because I'd rather get like characters to just create and do something small oh. and serious as opposed to trying to do some impression in a movie, which is you know like I said that's what they throw at me most of the time, mm -hmm. and then I'm trying to do it more seriously and good, and they're like that's not very good. <laughs> oh, well, thank you very much. Uh, we're talking with Frank Caliendo talking about voices. Frank does many. What was the first one you think you perfected when you were young? Uh, I Madden kind of launched you. Yeah, more. Uh, Jay Leno was the, one of the first ones that was like a. I looked in the mirror and he was doing the, the Doritos commercials. Like, hey, I'm Mike from Nacho Cheese, Five Doritos, Crunch Me One. We'll make more. Me, me, me. Then I turned into Beaker from the Muppet Show. But, <laughs> um, yeah, so there were. I mean, there were some. I'm trying to think. I was trying to do different ones than other people. I did a Dodie Dids. <laughs> Johnny did Samantha, Lola. and then when somebody would come from the like the the old town for where Tony supposedly grew up and who's the boss like mm -hmm. Mrs. Rosini, like that, was his, <laughs> like that was his acting like he would go full on it. Hey, me, how are you doing, Angela, <laughs> Samantha, Mold, Mrs. Rosini making the meatball. <laughs> Uh, today, uh, with uh, narrow casting being what it is, there aren't as many famous people that are. I mean, there are a lot of famous people, but not anybody it's, that's. It's very way way up there. It's very different because you can find the audience finds you because people can pass it around. It used to be that if you went and did a club or theater, or whatever, you'd have to do a person general enough. That the whole audience would get it. If you did, like, we always talk about the Jim Rome, just do this. I can only do this for a few seconds because only five people are getting it. I that. <laughs> but then you'd have, I'd have to go to a break to a doctor, feel, what were you thinking? So more people would get something. So it goes from specific to generic in my act. Well, on the internet, people get, you can do something very specific. So I did a, like, a, a while ago, I did a, um, uh, a Saul Goodman. Did you know that you have rights? The Constitution says you do. And so do I. Hi, I'm Saul Goodman. And that got passed around like crazy uh, by people who uh, are the fans uh, of that. Yeah. And Odenkirk loves it. So it's like one of those things where, you know, people see it and then more people see it because of that. But the fans can pass it around to each other. That was something we didn't have, you know, coming up. So, um, I do think you can get more specific with it, but it's just weird. What do people with algorithms the way they are the weird thing about impressions is one impression might hit one audience and then the next then the algorithm will send a different impression that's not the same audience to the same people and it'll just die on the internet and then it might come around later where a bunch of people see it because the right group sees it eventually mm -hmm. but it's a very it's a very interesting thing where like i said you can be very specific a very odd impression and then do you know which ones right now are getting the most circulation uh Probably some stuff with the Paul Giamatti does do well. The, the uh, different things with I broke down Robert Downey Jr., which is uh, if you're counting, it's one, two, burp, three, four, five, six, seven. That's the cadence. Um, <laughs> wow. yeah, he's, wow. he's a human Twitter feed. 140 characters, 280 characters less. Everything's about himself. He could be giving out an Academy Award, which is supposed to be about the nominees, but turned it back to him. Like these people deserve your applause. Oh, much as, oh, as much as I do. <laughs> Hashtag awesome. Um, so, those are those are the ones. For some reason, the 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 Seth Rogen does Joe Rogan ones. I mean, when it just depends. I mean, 
uh, sports guys, I do less of the sports people than I used to because I'm trying to just get out of that. Like, I, I just that was, I just felt like I was always doing the same thing. But even, uh, you know, I threw out something the other day, a Barkley thing. That's because Charles Barkley watches less college basketball than the average person. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's the it's an unbelievable situation where he's the only guy who can do that, be totally unprepared, and it's better, right? It's, you watch him, he's like, what's the guy's name? He can't get names right. He's like, Flipadowski. It's Filipowski. <laughs> Filipowski. Yeah. He's been one of the top college players all year. Flipadowski. Flip, how do you say that, Ernie? Uh, Flipadowski? Phil, Filipowski. Oh, that's what I meant. Phil, Filipowski. <laughs> Filipowski did a, did a really nice job. You know. <laughs> And he, then he passed it to the guy with the headband. You don't know any of the players. Is that number 75? There's no 75 out there. 75 had the headband with Flipadowski. None of those things are real. <laughs> and you're still throwing it out there. So, But that's what makes him great because nobody's watched college basketball all year. And then for March Madness, everybody watches and has an opinion. And it's perfect. for. If you ever notice, they go to Jay Wright first or uh, Clark Kellogg to actually have insight on, and then it becomes entertainment because they go to Charles and Kenny. So they'll do the insight with Clark Kellogg and then it becomes good. You know, And I think he does a really good job. He did this earlier in the year. He hasn't been playing until just now. <laughs> <laughs> so that's because Flipadowski <laughs> you created, that's a character in your head. That guy doesn't. And then Shaq said, Shaq's not on this show. <laughs> well, Gail told me. That's a different show too. <laughs> uh, Frank Caliendo is our guest. Uh, Frank's going back on the road. You can you can see this uh, this uh, stuff live, and it's great. Uh, Frank's going to be in Verona, New York, at the Turning Stone Resort Casino, April twelfth, ladies and gentlemen. That would be on a is that a Friday night? Uh, that's very nice. Uh, yes, yes, Friday night. Okay, cool. Uh, and uh, Frank's got a bunch of other stuff coming up, including Chicago shows with Willie G, May third and fourth. I would be remiss if I did not mention our big show coming up in Charleston, West Virginia, Friday night. Uh, featuring uh, Patty G, Willie G, Jeff Hoske, uh, Josh Arnold, right over there. Uh, and I'll be your host along with Christy Lee. So hope to see you there on a special edition of this program that morning from the same location, the Charleston Coliseum and Convention Center, the big theater there. So look forward to seeing you in Charleston. Right now we return to the uh, news desk. I see over there sitting in for Christy Lee, it's Jess Hooker. According to a recent poll, most people still enjoy April Fool's Day. The hmm. survey found that nearly <laughs> April Fool's <laughs> <laughs> nearly sixty five percent of people said they enjoy the holiday. One in three respondents said that it is always fair game to prank someone who pranked you first. Oh, ah, okay. Fifteen percent of people believe no one deserves to be the target of a prank. However, sixty percent said it is possible to go too far with a practical joke. Oh, sure, sure. The most taboo pranks were mm -hmm. pants. Pantsing someone. Oh, you pants them. Have you ever been pantsed in public, Tom? <laughs> yes. Really? Yeah, way back when. Yeah, do you do All that the way these down. days? You do that these days. You're looking at HR. We always called it de pantsing. We never called it. That pantsing. makes more sense, but yeah. we always yeah. called it pantsing. pantsing? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Really hip guys say. Oh, okay. My pants bad. him. You know <laughs> stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, catfishing someone is oh, is considered taboo. Seems that's, particularly cruel. That's yeah. illegal. Yeah. <laughs> what about leaving someone stranded on an African island? Is that in there, is, is that in there at all? Faking mm. a proposal or a breakup. Oh, there you go. Boy. Could you imagine faking a proposal? That that's is awful. Just See, I, 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 I've gone on. I hate April Fool's Day. Yeah. I hate practical. Jokes what about know. faking a uh, pregnancy test? Is that on there anywhere? Boy, no. that's rough. Also. People, they don't. They, that's yeah, kind you of. Send the you send the boyfriend. Do that at all. You don't yeah. do that anymore. I yeah. bet they do. Yeah. Uh, changing someone's phone settings or contacts. Annoying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tampering with someone's food or drink. Oh, yeah, poison. Yeah. 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 Hey, isn't that funny how that poison doesn't taste well. like that fluid you put in your windshield wiper oh, thing? He, yeah, yeah. He, he's foaming at the mouth. I didn't expect that. Funny stuff. The I'm not allergic to Belladonna, are you? <laughs> the most acceptable pranks are. Oh, here we go. Filling a room full of helium balloons. Okay. Putting okay. googly eyes on unexpected household objects. I've seen this in the grocery store recently. Everything, oh, really? everywhere, all yeah, at once. Somebody yeah, somebody put googly yeah. eyes on a baby on a diaper, on a on a package of oh, diapers, hilarious. which is kind of I don't funny. mind. Then yeah. you pick up your stapler that has googly eyes. Yeah, yeah, I like like it. That. yeah Mildly amusing. Yeah. <laughs> Posting something false or fake on social media is, is an acceptable prank. No, that happens every day. <laughs> yeah, I mean, our president is <laughs> got the wrong name. Here are the there. kids. Here are the kids getting on the school bus just for it to blew up. <laughs> Funny stuff. 
No, it's awful. Just before that's, it blewed up. I mean, you co-opted the characters yeah, and you turned them into that. Then you tell them to stop, to stop <laughs> doing it. And then... I forgot it. Sorry. Uh, messing, with some, forgot. Messing, with, messing with someone who's fallen asleep. Maybe like the uh, whipped cream in the hand and the feather on the nose. Is fair they, game? Yeah, I guess so, right? Uh, we did the classic... Post-it um, note. Seems mild. Or classic, Sharpies. Uh, we yeah. did the, uh, the, the, the bowl of water oh, yeah. and the hand in there and they wet their pants. Which oh, right. sure. Very, we, elab very elaborate. Never works. We put the post-it notes on the guy who fell asleep outside the uh, shacks, the studio. Remember that? We covered him in post-it notes. Really? <laughs> yeah. All right, cousin Heather, we put her hand in a bowl of ketchup, and she had her period. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that works. See? Hang yeah. on a second, Josh. <laughs> hey! There you go. It worked. Yep. It uh, totally worked. Uh, intentionally <laughs> scaring someone, which is my personal favorite. I love, I think it's hilarious when I love scared. it, too, yeah. I love it's it when so they, much. They seize their chest and go down. <laughs> My family, that's well, all we did all every we did. day. That, we used to hide My mom would the sneak up on us. Yes. She, we would sneak yes. up on her. And have uh, um, pans. Lids, oh, really? Lids from pans. <laughs> I, yeah, I did that a lot. bang on Just them. walk behind somebody and bang the pans <laughs> Oh, I'm, I'm more of a subtle. Oh, no. Just a, uh, no. Like I'll, I'd be behind my mom for so long, and she'd be doing laundry, and I would just go, Hey, Mom. And she would. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh -huh. It's finally happening. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, well, interesting stuff. No, thanks. I'm not a fan. No. Okay. Not on April Fool's. Guy. No. I just don't like it when like news people do that. Yes. Yeah. I think if you if you are known for breaking some sort of news or you're in the news business, yeah. don't just to stay. <laughs> yeah, that. exactly. That's yeah. There's already enough per, per issue. Like, just. Rely on credibility. <laughs> right, right, yeah. right. NPR famously did a story about. Um, people having their belly buttons removed and it was an april fool's prank oh, npr yeah <laughs> they don't do that anymore they, I, bet not. They're, 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 well, I think a comedy i looked yeah at, <laughs> yeah NPR. yeah uh, i was uh, not <laughs> not very smart <laughs> <laughs> although i think there probably would be people who'd have their belly button removed now that i think about it yeah a smoother sleeker it wouldn't be the dumbest surgery we've heard about oh. recently <laughs> uh i picked one story just for you jess Oh, I see that. A Norwegian man got a ruler tattooed to his finger to make his life easier. Oh. Mr. Stefan Carlson asked his wife, tattoo artist Julie Stromson, to do the tattoo for him. She inked 10 lines one centimeter apart onto Mr. Carlson's right index finger. That's a long finger, isn't it? Yeah. That, oh, yeah, I guess. Would that be? 10 centimeters? There's no yeah. way my finger's 10, 10 lines centimeters. one centimeter apart. Yeah. Hmm. Um, the naval officer, the naval officer from Trombheim, said he loves his tattoo and can't wait to use it whenever he wants. Huh. <laughs> Mr. Carlson is not alone. Adam Savage from MythBusters tattooed a six-inch ruler on his left forearm. Huh. Forearm, okay. Yeah, makes sense. I mean, if you're doing a lot of carpentry and you want. Well, what do you do with the one on your finger? Like, see how far you get it up your nose or something? Uh, yeah, I'm not sure what kind of work this guy does. I imagine, sadly, this may come in. Handy for the... Uh, Bedroom? Uh, oh, there yeah. he is. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Hmm, looks like... I mean, Navy work, uh, he probably does all the time. Yeah. Something. He's, he's got to know how long stuff is all the time. <laughs> I mean... Yeah. Got to do a lot of measuring. Tying knots. You had to measure knots. Oh, you got to measure yeah. those knots. Don't you? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You ever have that happen, Tom? Pull a knot out, you know, make a yeah, knot and no, shove it in no, and pull no, it out. No, slow. No. No. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right, never mind. I, uh, uh, I mean, yeah, for yeah. the so-called dick pics, is that what you're suggesting? Yeah. I had a tattoo removed from my, <laughs> my uh, index fingers. And explain that to Frank. I, I would love this story. Uh, when I was in college, I thought it would be funny uh -huh. to have uh, Fu Manchu tattooed on my fingers. I, yeah. 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 Well, because doesn't Jack Black have... I think other people uh, do have one finger. Mustache. I thought it would be I thought it would be really funny to do it like this and have curly mustache on the palm of my hands. Luckily, a friend talked me out of that. Wow. I just did this. But so you, you would hold your you would hold your fingers under your nose yes. around your mouth and it and you had them rem how long did it take to get those taken off? Uh not long because tattoos on your fingers wear very fast. Did know? it hurt? Did it hurt? It was it was the most painful. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, it was it's awful. Worse than childbirth? Um, yes. yeah, because I didn't get an epidural with this. I see. Ah. Yeah. I see. Well, that's that's interesting. I um we well, use enough carpentry. You, I know guys that can eyeball it. Eyeball really, really well. I'm not mm. one of those guys. Oh, my shop teacher could do. He was amazing. He could look at a table and go, "Yeah, that's 64 and a half inches." No kidding. Yeah, 
Uh, he's measure twice, cut once. He was the best. Uh, Jess, don't they say that epidurals are for weak women? They do, <laughs> but, uh, and I am very, very weak. <laughs> yeah, wimps yes, is yes. what they say. Just a big baby. Have the emails started coming in? <laughs> so, so it's still from the ketchup. <laughs> Still coming from there. <laughs> Bowl of ketchup and they have their period. Man. Instantaneously. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, speaking of discomfort, yeah. there are certain things you can do during different types of discomfort. The discomfort of childbirth, of course, an epidural can help out with that. But if you have something simpler going on, perhaps some knee pain, hip pain, back pain, well, I say simple, but it can be annoying, can't it? Super frustrating. Perhaps it's because your foundation is unsound, much like my mental capacity <laughs> <laughs> go to orangeinsoles.com see what they can do for you if you work on your feet all day you're putting stress on your body orange insoles offer arch support and a deep cup to properly support your heel your feet and therefore your whole body helping alleviate that discomfort you have think of a table my friends if it's wobbly it's because it doesn't have proper support if you're feeling a little wobbly it's because you don't have proper support i know how that is i I work with these people. <laughs> great. Just get on with it. <laughs> See what I mean? They're great for work boots, sneakers, dress shoes, you name it. And the fitting is perfect because what you've done is you've gone to orangeinsoles.com and you've taken their insole quiz. That's right. They also come true to size, so there's no cutting required, and they get you hooked up with the right size and the depth of the arch and everything. So, as, as you can see, as you can see, Frank, what's happening is he's going without a net. Yeah, I like <laughs> he's to currently plummeting toward the circus floor. I like to hold the parachute and see if I can get it on before the end of the ad. Oh, good. Oftentimes, I pass away by hitting the ground, <laughs> but you won't. Head to orangeinsoles.com today for free shipping. Plus, orange insoles come with a sixty-day. We want you to be happy guarantee. That's orangeinsoles.com. And a big uh, thank you to Orange Insoles for helping us out. We love to help you out because it's a fine product. Feel better, do more. Orangeinsoles.com. Thank you very much, Josh. Uh, by the way, uh, just a little parenthetical note here. Um, if you're uh, giving birth, Orange Insoles um, <laughs> might help you before and after, not during. Just want to <laughs> clarify. Yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> you're dumbass. <laughs> I had my Orange Insoles on while pushing. <laughs> no, it's not going to help you there. Sorry, ma'am. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Got something to say? Send us an email. Bob and Tom at bobandtom.com. It turns and sways. Okay. Well, thanks for the call. Uh, have a great day today. We're going to move And I've got forward. one more thing. May I say one more thing? I, I I've been guess. waiting 20-some years for this. Is, uh, <laughs> is everybody listening? Yeah, yeah we're yeah. listening. Uh -huh. Okay. Chick, go back 20-some years, 1998, Fort Wayne, Indiana. All weekend with me. <laughs> what? There we go. Yes. Well, finally. Finally. I have. Okay. Whatever you say. Okay. Remember and listen to this. You ordered. You or you went by your la your real name oh, when you checked oh, in, and you geez. invited me for the weekend. Now wait. Oh God. I'm gonna get shot for this. And you ordered grapes and Miller Light beer. Yeah, that sounds like me, all right. That's right. Yep, that's oh, me, okay. I'm okay, yeah. Deborah. We got to go here. <laughs> Christy, give me the teaser. <laughs> that couldn't have gone better. <laughs> yeah. Somehow I blame you. Ah, <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, where do we go from here? Hey, hi, I'm Tom, this is Chick, that's Josh, and this is Christy Lee. Christy, what's happening? Hey, Charleston, the Bob and Tom Show here and our friends at Rock 105 WKLC are bringing us to town for a live show with special guest. Duke Tomato and the Bob and Tom Brassamouth Horns Plus. Do not miss an amazing comedy show that night. That's right, it all happens Friday, April 5th at the Charleston Coliseum and Convention Center. If you're listening anywhere, than 100 miles of Charleston or Deep. Come out and see us live on the morning of April 5th. That's a free show. And then get tickets for that night's Bob and Tom Show comedy tour event with who, Christy? Pat Godwin, Josh Arnold, Jeff Oske, Willie Griswold. All hosted by Tom and Christy. Oh. Tickets on sale now and they're going fast. Get your tickets at Ticketmaster.com or the Charleston Coliseum box office. See you there! <laughs> Okay.
kids are, what, 11 is your son, right? Yes, correct. How old is your daughter? Six. Six. Okay, mm-hmm. great, great. Yeah, she, and, uh, she I'm, still gets away with stuff, probably. Six years she's old. She's so funny she's that cute. I just refuse to punish her for anything. <laughs> right. She came up from kindergarten one day, and she goes, Dad, Stacy and I were playing catch, and she hit me right in the balls. <laughs> <laughs> she only has an older brother. She's only heard that area right. referred sure. to right. as that. As, right. uh-huh. uh, a good dad would tell her that she's wrong. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. I am not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I have chosen to use that to my advantage. Uh-huh. She'll be on her first date and making out with some dude, and she'll be like, <gasps> Touch my ball. <laughs> <laughs> Guess who's done making out? <laughs> Until at least college, because now everyone in high school thinks she has ball. <laughs> Thanks, Facebook. The best daddy. Come on. <laughs>It's Josh Arnold with a food recommendation for you. Gardner's Wisconsin Cheese, their famous oven-baked cheese. It arrives pre-baked. You just heat it and eat it, grill it, skillet, or air fry it. Check out their new oven-baked cheese flavor, jalapeno. Ooey, gooey, spicy cheese. It's sure to tickle your taste buds with real jalapeno flavor and heat. Perfect for game day, parties, or any time. Excuse me, are, um, are you serious with it? I mean, why are you doing this? Me, uh, the real me is right here. I could easily be doing this. We, we don't need you, man. I, uh, look, there's only room for one of us. That's Gardner's Wisconsin Cheese Jalapeno Flavored Oven Baked Cheese. It's now available in Gardner's Oven Baked Bundle Package, so try all the great flavors. Receive free cold pack shipping and free cheese curds when you spend $59 or more at GardnersWisconsinCheese.com. Click the link below and tell them your pal Josh, me the real Josh, from the Bob and Tom Show sent you. Do you have a straight job? I mean, like a normal day-to-day thing? Do yeah, you do? I actually do. I'm actually a CPA, believe it or not. Oh, ah, yeah, um, that spells party. Yeah, it does. Most people find it think uh, CPAs are hysterical. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, of course not. Uh, we're dorks, uh, big dorks. But uh, uh, And honestly, on behalf of all accounts out there, I'd like to say that we don't all do taxes. Some of us prefer to embezzle. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's much more lucrative. <laughs> I read recently uh, Willie Nelson wrote a song called called Whatever Happened to Peace on Earth Mm -hmm. as his little protest to the war in Iraq. Mm -hmm. And my immediate thought was, why does he care? It's not like it's his tax dollar being put to (laughs) use. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, I think the U.S. US government should write a song called Whatever Happened to Willie's 1040. (laughs) That is a tax joke for the accountants. Stocky Economopolis joins us in the telephone. It ain't over till the fat lady sings. That's something you hear a lot, right? Uh Now, that's definitely true, but if you're at a meeting for bulimics, you just have no idea when it's over. <laughs> uh, no man is an island. So that's a phrase you hear. Sure. Uh, what if you drop Michael Moore into a shallow lake? That maybe? <laughs> <laughs> Even mocking your liberal brethren. Yeah, I like yeah. that. I admire oh, you for that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Try not to put your foot in your mouth. Mm. Unless you're a stripper and it's part of your show. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey. Where, where are you hanging out? <laughs> the way to a man's heart is through his stomach. I guess, you know, if you're born without a vagina. <laughs> Harvest stars out tonight. I don't care if it's cloudy or bright. Because I'm blind. (laughs) Jeez. Good good morning, sunshine. Bob and Tom. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Jake, I have a letter for you. Let me hear it, Josh. It's titled Sports Oversight. Uh Uh-oh. 
Uh, that, luckily, <laughs> that's my specialty. <laughs> As usual, it begins. Chick Sports News continues to ignore the sport of hockey. Oh, hockey. While pointing out the final four is set for men's and women's basketball, oh. he neglected the fact that... This the, better not have the word frozen in it. It sure do. <laughs> The Frozen Four is set for this weekend. Boston and uh, Boston College and um, I don't know. I'm surprised that Josh, being the hockey fan, hasn't pointed this out to the Chickster. Well. That's what you're uh, doing now. I, see, what happens is I point it out to Chick. He talks about it. Tom gets real, real mad. Yeah. <laughs> How I, dare you do sports during sports? Yeah. It is, it is a battle I have lost, so I apologize, but I... Yeah. The Frozen Four. Yeah. I did not realize college hockey had that yeah it's pretty cool yeah college hockey's fun it's like minnesota state and yeah they're badass hockey schools man yeah they really are all right so, uh, did you mention that joining us in the studio is um uh, sports fan frank caliendo <laughs> oh no i did i and, forgot uh, to talk did, to... did you say to frank hey frank do you do any hockey players <laughs> i frank, believe uh, frank geez. earlier said he's trying to get away what would it be sports? like if jeff goldblum watched hockey oh <laughs> look out look out look out he's going around the net and scores yes <laughs> I, I like <laughs> see there you go <laughs> yeah. You, re you, you, re you reeled it back in. I, I, I appreciate that very much. What is the rule, Frank? And I think I know the answer to this. But what is the rule if someone comes to you and says, we couldn't get Jeff Goldblum, would you come in and do an invitation to him for our product? Or would that be... Oh, oh yeah, you can't, do, you can't that. do that. Yeah, yeah that's that. Morgan Freeman, I think, has um, uh, lawyers on speed dial. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. then you're not trying to sell it with a cool voice. You're trying right. to actually present it as Morgan Freeman. So. <laughs> Yeah. And I've, I, yeah, I've, I've, I know people who have been sued for that, and I would never, yeah, even if you get yourself indemnified, there's, a, there was a, I did a video game where I did a Madden type of character. He was the coach, mm. and it was, uh, they, they, they tried to sue for that. I don't know what happened because I was indemnified for it, and I, but I was named in some things, and they. They were like, well, it's kind of like him, but it doesn't look like him because they do, drew a different face and stuff like that. Animation was completely different, but he was going, boom. I mean, hey, you're on the sideline. You know, <laughs> right. Yeah, right. So I, I'm always, I say no to everything. I had AI people try to no. have me do some stuff where they wanted to use actors. Downey was one. Morgan Freeman was one. They wanted some others where they wanted me to help the AI learn somehow. Wow. I'm like, absolutely not. Because, yeah. and the agents are presenting to me. I'm like, but they get, I get sued for that and never work again. First yeah, of all, it's yeah. like the people would find out about that, and that's just a bad idea. And like, well, there's the people doing it. Were like, there's nobody to sue. I'm like, there's definitely people to sue. They just haven't figured out who they are yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. good uh, move. Eventually, yeah. you're, somebody's going to get mm -hmm. sued. So I, yeah. yeah it's a, so it, me, I stay away from doing any. A lot of times, I did a local. Houston ad for something with John Madden 20 years ago mm -hmm. and they just asked that they do celebrity voice impersonated. Okay. But if they if you do something on a bigger scale they they tend to to look into it a little bit more. Do you know that uh, we know a guy I won't say his name but he did uh, Sam Elliott remember mm. the, for like a major beer oh. sponsor. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I think he I don't know if he's still doing it or not, but I well, know there was he did a, there's it. also a case in which um it sounded just they like they couldn't Sam. get they they couldn't get a specific actor. He was work he, he'd done a movie. But they couldn't get him to come back and re loop the dialogue. Right. And they finally just gave up on trying to get the guy, so they hired this friend of ours who I won't say who it was, and he went in and did it and no one knows including the actor. Well, sometimes what they'll do is they'll then pay the actor, like they'll 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 settle it hmm. under you know under okay. the table or something. not on the table, but secretly they don't make big news about it because they don't want to draw more attention to it. But they'll say, "Listen, we want to, they either cease and desist or they come after you and say, just give us.' I know somebody that got a that Morgan Freeman got paid a million dollars for the other person to do his voice. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. I mean that because you're again you're selling with the person's voice. Yeah. Wow. You're not you, you're picturing Morgan Freeman talking when you hear right. mm -hmm. that. So it's it's a calling card. I mean it's their own thing. It's a it's identifying them. That's what uh, Tom Hanks has his brother Jim do all of the um, Toy Story, like the games. Oh, and like the, the toys. Disney stuff. Yeah, his brother Jim does his voice no as kidding. Woody. Yeah. For me, when Frank is in, in the, on the air with us, because I always want to do the one hack thing, which is what would it be like if. Fill in the blank. Right. Did fill in the blank. I swear to God, it's that, irresistible. That, that is such me. a hack equation that I love. I, yeah. I will, see. That's the thing. <laughs> I love it too. Here's the yeah. thing, though. It's it, now it's hip. 
Yeah. That is, like, it used to be in stand-up comedy, if I did something like that, people would be like, why do you do it? Do, do something original and different. And now the internet is filled with, right. what if Seth Rogen worked at Chipotle? Oh! I don't know. Just throw some rice in there, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You want to? Who doesn't love that? Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, so that's the thing. I know. Yes. I just love that. You exactly. want white rice or brown rice? Uh, now you got to choose a meat. <laughs> <laughs> you want the smoked ham? Uh, we don't even have that, but I've got some in the back. <laughs> that, impre you, that impression I appreciate so much because it's dead on, and it reminds me how much I actually like Seth Rogen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's, that, there are some that do that where you actually think of the person. Yeah. And that's that's a that's a fun element. <laughs> and I, I've still told the story 50 times before, but when I saw Frank in Vegas, um, uh, it was a big the big room. Right. And at least a third of the crowd was from Japan. Yep. I mean, oh. from Japan. And guess right. what? I'm not huge in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> but they they lit up. Right. When Frank did Arnold Schwarzenegger and yeah. when he did Robin Williams. Mm -hmm. yeah. Those were the two that they, uh, even if they didn't speak a lot of English, they got. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's that was always that if you did big movie stars. Now, that's what I'm talking about, being broad in that kind of a, a setting. Vegas, people don't always know what they're going to see. So uh, they have, a, they have a, a vague idea. But again, most of the time, impressionists, if you see them in Vegas, they're singing impressionists. So they're singing songs that everybody knows yeah. with voices they know. Not doing... Comedy, you know, comedic versions. No, of can them. you sing? I never answered. I could that. a little bit, not as well as like a Pat Godwin, uh, but uh, but I I never worked on it, so I could sing some. If I really worked on a song, uh, I could, but I can't. If, as soon as you put the music on, I'd have trouble staying with the music. So mm. that that would be that would be a maybe you could do a spoken word like a Shatner thing. <laughs> yeah. those, those, those serious things where yes, of course Shatner does Dylan. <laughs> Why not? That's one of my favorite stories: is sitting down with William Shatner for forty-five minutes, and it seemed like seconds. <laughs> That's how good it was. I was like, I was at, I was, I was by your house. Oh, really? Do tell. <laughs> Why were you there? <laughs> I was there at the Bertinelli's house. Valerie Bertinelli and her husband at the time I went to visit them, and they lived right next to William Shatner. He goes, he didn't mention the fence, did he? I'm like, what about the fence? <laughs> well, we're trying to get him to rebuild it. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. We're gonna come right back with a little bit of a visit with uh, Ms. Etta May coming up as well, and Frank Caliendo. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Thanks for listening to the Bob and Tom Show this morning. Catch any part of the show you missed. Well, we were talking about uh, it's wonderful. Yeah. You you fly all over the place. You're, you 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 work a lot with uh, yeah. the comedian uh, Jeff Dunham. Yeah. So you, and you guys are always flying, but uh, uh, you're famous on this show for your discussion of of, of flying. Wow. I, well, I it was uh, it, it I, you know I, I know a lot of comedians do the stuff about you know airline uh, you know uh, jokes about mm -hmm. uh, you know everything from flying and uh, so this was just my experience was that I started to notice uh, some of the pilots uh, there were those who didn't say anything to you really they would just say hey how you doing you know and uh but then i always i had uh, noticed the ones who love to talk and yeah. point out things and give you a little sure. tour in the sky <laughs> and, sure uh -huh. and uh, i always thought those were guys who were frustrated uh, radio guys they wanted to be on radio you know there's your caption here to cockpit uh, and, uh, and they always sound so cool you know uh -huh. <laughs> You know, and uh, so he always, first of all, he has to tell you he's in the cockpit. Oh, yeah. uh, like, where else is he going to be? Uh, yeah, we know. Yeah. We know. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm in the can right now. I uh, <laughs> just wanted to say hi. Uh -huh. so if you guys uh, don't form a line while I'm in here, please. Uh -huh. So he's in the cockpit. Okay. And then they always tell you how many feet were going up. I never understood why they had to share that with uh, all of us. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's great. We're going up to 36,000 feet. Uh, you know what? Uh, I'm just a passenger. I'm not writing this stuff down. Uh -huh. You know, uh, what did he say, 36,000 or 33,000? Because I need to know. Uh, do you? Do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I want to know what the gauge says because uh -huh. this is, uh, I can't see it. I mean, I need to know. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, he's given us all this information we really don't need uh, as passengers. You know, uh, all I know is, uh, you know, 36,000, 40,000. Just go high. That's all I really. <laughs> go, go above the trees and the mountains and clear that stuff. And yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm happy. Yeah. Have a couple of drinks and. Uh, but then uh, the, some of these guys, I've noticed, also will keep going. The, the ones who like to point out everything, you know, uh, for those just sitting on the left side of the plane, if you look out your window, there's a clown shaped like a duck. <laughs> wow. What? I, oh, good. I, I'm glad he woke me up for that because 
Uh-huh. You know, I mean, I, <laughs> and of course, those people on the right side of the plane, uh, they never get to see anything sometimes, right? They'll, they'll point yeah. out stuff, you know, if, if you're on the left side, you can see the Grand Canyon. Mm-hmm. If you're on the right side, you can look at the people looking at the Grand Canyon <laughs> on the left side of the plane. Fascinating. Fascinating. Yeah. So, oh. so I, I just noticed those guys. Uh, so I started taking notes about what they would say, and it was just unbelievable. And then uh, uh, and the, the funniest, or, or, or it's, I guess it's not funny, is when a plane goes down, of course, they would look for the flight recorder. And oh, I was sure. always like, and they always thought, I, I always wondered, like, what do they expect to hear on this thing? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the, I mean, the pilot's not cool enough to just explain what's happening, is he? Is he just going <laughs> to, oh, just hit a mountain? Uh, my fault, my fault. I, <laughs> I was pointing out something to the people and uh, <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. clipped the wing. And, uh, uh, yeah. There you go. <laughs> anyway, I, I, I know I sound cool right now, but I've just evacuated. Uh, <laughs> like you wouldn't believe. But, <laughs> so I just want to apologize to everybody. Uh, we're uh, spinning out of control. I just want to thank all our passengers for flying with us. Uh, we realized you had a choice in airlines. And, uh, well, you picked the wrong one. <laughs> well, we're going right down. We're going down. We're going down. <laughs> so, you know, you're not going to get that. No, you know, no, you're no, just free gonna, drinks. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Free drink. But, uh, yeah. Just uh, hurry. Oh, hurry. Uh, free drink. Uh, <laughs> the cart should be uh, flying around. Any, just reach up and grab something. Oh, oh man. I don't know. The, mm-hmm. I, I figure that it, I, mean, I guess when they find the thing, all they really hear is, you know, one big, uh, well, you know, yeah, screaming. Yeah, screaming. Yeah. Curse. Oh, screaming. Yeah. Curse. One big curse word all the way down. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm sure. You know, if I, and if I was on the plane going down, I my last word would be, you know, my, my wife would be going, I, you know, she'd be saying, I love you, and I'd be going, sorry, honey, I'm going to have to curse with the pilot right now. <laughs> won't be saying I love you right now. But. <laughs> Jeff Roth band. Oh, uh, ow. Oh, back. <laughs> oh. oh, hey, Josh, what's wrong? And my back is sore, my legs. What's in your shoe? Nothing. Mm-hmm. I mean, here, look, nothing. Ah, uh, Joshua, you have to have proper support. Huh. Orange insoles. Orange insoles, you say? Yeah, look. Yeah, yeah I see them. Look at this. They're great. Yeah. Orange insoles. I'll give them a shot. Great. All see right. you later, buddy. Give it a... Oh. Yippee! I can mow and dance while I do it. Ha! No more pain. Thank you, Orange Insoles. <gasps> oh, Josh, Josh, did you get Orange Insoles? Jessica, I sure did. Thanks to Orange Insoles, I feel great. Terrific. <laughs> See you a- later. <laughs> Orange Insoles. Feel better, do more. Hey, hi, it's Tom from the Bob and Tom Show. Miss some of the show? Become a Bob and Tom VIP and subscribe to the audio and video podcasts. The Bob and Tom Show, on air, on app, and on demand. Starting to eat meat again. A second one? Uh, now going uh, away from everything I've ever loved. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> everything. Like it's no meat, it's no dairy, it's no alcohol, what do you eat? no caffeine. You can't pet A puppies. lot of fruits and vegetables, whole food. You're supposed to drink like uh, uh, non fluoridated water that oh has minerals Lord. added Boy, this into really it. This really sounds so dull. So it's no tap it, water. It doesn't sound like you're going to make it. No, it, really it doesn't. doesn't. Right? It, no. It's like, uh, you know, you have to like, you know, you have to find joy in the little things. But don't you find eat yourself, the uh, like, say you're on a date and your your date is. I heavy. make a date exception. Oh, you do? Yeah. I so sure there do. are exceptions. I've had to 17 all rules. dates in the last <laughs> weekend. <laughs> Jim McHugh is our guest, recently married. Uh, we've established virtually nothing else about you. You're tall. Um, I'm tall. I'm I know you were, you were very successful in the, the, the recent uh, Boston comedy competition. Are you from Boston? Is that uh, You know, I'm a transplant. I'm from Connecticut. Because mm-hmm. uh, so you, really, you don't have a discernible Yeah, Boston I don't talk like accent. a retard. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> That's like wicked smart. Wicked smart. Well, What's hey, nice you way? don't sound like you're from around here. Nice way to embrace the community. These guys don't sound really smart around here. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's, it's, always, it's really sexy with the women, too, you know? Which one of you retards is going to buy me a beer? <laughs> you know? Hello, this is comedian John Evans, the High Plains thrifter. Let's stay bash. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Jess Hooker at the news desk. Pat Godwin in the performance room. Hello. There's Josh Arnold. 
At the sidekick chair. I'm just I'm reading a... Yeah, I caused some trouble. Oh. <laughs> Reading an email. Oh, right. now what? There's Ace Cosby. I'm Chick. Here's Tom. Okay, before we get into trouble, we Tom, have... Tom, uh, we have a special guest. A couple of them. Oh, we have we, uh, we have a comedian, Frank Caliendo, has joined us in the studio. And uh, someone that Frank met years and years ago is joining us on the Zoom. It's the uh, gorgeous Etta May uh, joining us. Hey, Etta, can you hear me okay? I can. Oh, I can see you. Uh, let's see, how do I word this delicately? You look so skinny and gorgeous. What's going on with you? <laughs> Thank you. Um, it, you know, uh, here's the thing. I'm I'm in my 60s now, and uh, I lost a bunch of weight. And in your 30s, 40s, and 50s, when you lose weight, people go, oh, my goodness, you look great. Well, when you're in your 60s, people go, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> Can you sit down? Can I get you something? <laughs> I tell you what, though, I've lost all this weight, but... The elasticity in your skin is not the same. Oh, uh oh. Uh, no, uh, um, uh, my skin did not bounce back. Um, it's kind of hanging on me. I'm just like hanging meat on mm -hmm. a skeleton. <laughs> and um, my okay, I'm going to put it this way, Tom. My knees look like they need circumcised. <laughs> oh, <boy. Well>, I, <laughs> that'd be quite a look. I uh, I need to take my knees to a brisk. I say, I say, that's never been stated before in the English language. I know. Um, well, we certainly appreciate you know, I'm it. I'm a trendsetter. Yeah, well, good. It's good to see you. Uh, Adam May, by the way, on tour. I know Evansville coming up Thursday evening. Uh, the famous Effingham, Illinois on Friday. Saturday, the Paramount Theater in Anderson. And uh, Sunday, Wabash's Honeywell Center, all featuring Etta May, Jacksonville, Florida, and uh, Lady Lake, Florida, also in the offing, coming up in uh, coming up in uh, in April with Etta May. So tell us about what else is happening with your life. Um, uh, you mentioned your age, a birthday recently by chance? Yes, I just had a birthday and I turned sixty. And you know what they say, um, sixty is the new fifty nine. Ah, uh, yes, <laughs> yeah, pretty much by definition, really. <laughs> yeah. Feeling good about it. Five more years, I get insurance. Well, that's right. What is it? What is it? Uh, Medicare. Uh, Medicare. Medicare. Yeah. Medicare. Um, if I make it to sixty-five. Yeah. Oh, you got this. You got this, Zeta. <laughs> yeah. You things going okay in your uh, personal life? Everybody, uh, everybody, all right in your family? Yeah, I'm still, uh, still married to the same old man. Uh, Forty-two years. Wow. Oh. Yeah, 42 oh. years. You know what, Tom? Uh, trying to find a good man nowadays is like trying to find a sales clerk at Kmart. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of deep. Or anywhere else. Yeah. Uh, do they still have Kmarts anywhere? <laughs> that really makes I it tough. <laughs> I, I think you they know may. What? I tell you what, you, you, I, if I wear red in a Target, I'm going to get asked for a price check. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to. And in something. <laughs> now, what are you, now, what are you doing to keep busy these days? I'm touring. Uh, this tour coming up in Indiana and Effingham, Illinois, um, is Southern Fried Chicks. Oh. So um, we've been going strong, and that's Sonia White and uh, Jody White, who uh, Jody White is also married to Dale Jones. Oh. So. Yeah, two comics living together. I can't believe that. <laughs> I bet that's a million laughs. <laughs>, <laughs> Have you had Dale on your show? That guy's a riot. I saw him get a standing ovation in a casino once that lasted longer than any other standing ovation I've ever seen a comedian get. Yeah. Wow. He's been a yeah. I haven't seen him for a while, but absolutely. And yeah, the uh, the Southern White Chicks uh, starring Etta May. How, how did you first become... Uh, how, how, yeah, Southern Fried Chicks. What did I say? You said Southern White Chicks? <laughs> <laughs> now, you're not necessarily wrong. However, uh, but, tic are tickets, are, uh, tickets are available to everyone. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> how how badly can you screw up? We want, we want to let everyone know that they're welcome to see the show. Yes. Yes. 
Come on. Yes, please. Uh, do you know what? I just had a terrible experience. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was sitting well, right here. Yeah. Me, yeah. 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 Thanks, Chick. I, I am right here also. Thank you, Chick. Thanks, <laughs> man. <laughs> <laughs> um, Southern fried chicken. Fried. Yeah, th sorry. Southern fried. No, a month, a, a month ago, um, a month ago, I was doing a show, and this little twenty-year-old came up to my merchandise table, and she was waiting for me oh. when I came out of the theater, and she said, "I was so offended by your show. You are so unwoke." Oh, oh, yeah. And I went. And I don't know what that means because I'm 60. And um, so I just pinched myself and I said, no, I'm up. <laughs> and, and I thought she was kidding with me. And and she just, you know, did the pouty face. And so then I pinched her and I went, she jumped and I went, oh, you're up too. <laughs> um, and, and then she said, you had so much, um, was it micro, micro, abrasions or micro oh, 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 microaggression aggression yeah microaggression yeah. which i thought was a facial <laughs> <laughs> i'm going what show did you see and um and then she said i bet you don't even use the right pronouns mm. and that's when i snapped i mean i have my pushing point and i looked that little girl straight in the eye and i said let me tell you something little missy i went to public school in kentucky I don't even know what a pronoun is. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, on that Welcome note, Etta. Mike, Tom. Yeah. Welcome on that Mike. note, the the Southern fried yeah. chicks. Yeah. Fried. I, yes, fried. Not to be confused with a movie from the. Uh, Okay. Uh, Wayans Brothers uh, from a few years back. <laughs> uh, I believe. Was that correct, Ace? Thank you very much. Uh, Etta, thank you so much. Good seeing you again. Give our best you to the uh, Southern Thanks, fried Eddie. chicks, et cetera. Okay. Thanks, Etta. Thank Bye, Etta. Thank Take you. care. Bye. Well, that was a slip. She's a some... sweetheart, isn't she? Oh, mm -hmm. she's so nice. She's lost a ton of weight. She was. Uh, oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You could see. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I honestly, that was the first time I've met Etta. Oh, yeah. oh, 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 yeah. Yeah, she was. Uh, Bigger gal, if you will. Oh, okay. Not to, not to, not that there was anything wrong with that. You're beefy. killing it over there. <laughs> yeah. Beefy. Are you? Uh, <laughs> are you okay? Yeah, I'm all right. All right. <laughs> Didn't have a lot of paperwork in front of me to confuse me. <laughs> <laughs> How many times have I said maybe radio's not for you? I've told you I can't think and talk at the same time. This, this is see? not the place for me. Frank Caliendo, how does it feel to be canceled just by sitting in a room? <laughs> <laughs> he didn't even do anything. No, he didn't. He did nothing. It's lovely. And you're the most famous in here, so it's going to be Frank Caliendo was part of yeah. <laughs> <laughs> racist comedy tour <laughs> sweeping the country. I mean, it is an, an appropriate apt description of the sure, roster sure, but it, it infers. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, right. Okay. Southern fried chicks. <laughs> okay, they're fried, you said. Hey, guys, just got back in the room. What's hey, been going on? Hey, hey, Frank, hey, Frank. hey you missed it, Frank. Yeah. I got a request for you to do uh, Stephen A. Smith, funny enough. <laughs> I don't even understand where I've been for this time. <laughs> Heaven help me. Hey, here's an idea. Maybe you could uh, rewind that last part and listen to it on your Raycon earbuds. I, I will, Ray I I will be. I will be. <laughs> many, many times. That's right. Uh, Raycon's everyday earbuds are the perfect perfect way to tune out all the noise nowadays and tune into something great like the Bob and Tom show. Their audio quality rivals all the big audio brands you know and love at a price you'll love even more. With eight hours of playtime, 32 hours of battery life, seamless Bluetooth syncing, Raycons are there for you up to the task. Raycons optimized gel tips fit every ear ever made comfortably. They stay in your ears and they stay in place. Additional features like the earbud tap functions and noise isolation, they'd really make the best Mother's Day gift. Buy a pair for mom and buy a pair for yourself. And Raycons offer easy 30-day returns just in case. Go to buyraycon.com slash Tom today, today to get 20% off your Raycon order plus free shipping. That's 20% off and free shipping at buyraycon.com slash Tom. That's by Raycon.com slash Tom. Well, thank you very much, Chick McGee. Mm -hmm. uh, coming up, <laughs> we're going we're gonna to hang out with comedian Frank Caliendo, <laughs> should he decide to stay. Uh, Frank's going to be in Verona, New York at the uh, Turning 
Stone Resort and Casino. Coming up on April 12th, and on the 24th, it's Detroit, Michigan, then Carterville, Illinois, May 2nd. Chicago at the Improv with Willie G. That's May 3rd and 4th. Also coming to Pittsburgh and Columbus, Ohio, including the Columbus Funny Bone, May 17th and 18th, for some great live stand-up comedy. We're coming right back with Frank, etc. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Hey, everybody, this is Todd Snyder, and you're listening to Bob and Tom Radio. Hey, Todd Snyder. I don't mean to be mean here. You know what? You can ask me anything. Okay. I'm an open book. <laughs> Just throw, throw questions at Do me. Do you eat uh, 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 kangaroo? I personally don't. I'm vegan, so oh, so okay. I'm one of those folks. Sure. How how far into the interview did I manage to get that grandstanding in? Um, <laughs> okay. No, but kangaroo is a is a delicious lean meat. People people love it down there. Oh, uh, Tom, no, Tom can't eat uh, kangaroo. No, it right? makes me, makes me jumpy. <laughs> well. <laughs> Randy. Uh, uh, I pulled that joke out of my pouch. Okay. Yeah. Good lord. Uh, good, so good lord so indeed. I was, Randy. I was trying to. I was trying to. I did, see, this is the thing. You're trying to set me up for for gags. I'm just dead bad. I'm now the straight man. I'm playing the. I'm I'm not the wacky character on the side. I'm just going to set them up, lob you some big balls, and you can knock them out of the park. <laughs> Thank you. Which I guessed. Is uh, is Randy Feltface, uh, Mr. Feltface? Is, uh, do you have brothers and sisters? I don't. I'm an only, and an, an, I'm like the last of my species. You're I'm the a, last. Of I'm the a critic. Yeah, I'm a critically endangered species. Are you on Felt Facebook? I am on Felt Facebook. Okay. I started Felt Facebook. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's just me and Grover. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh! Yeah. And Sometimes he's near and other at, than other. at Randy yeah. Feltface. At Randy Feltface. At uh, Randy Feltface on all of the socials. Instagram. I just put him up on Instagram. TikTok. Yeah, nice. Are you TikToking? I'm not TikToking. I'm Instagramming. Get on the TikTok. Oh, okay. We'll make one right after this. We'll just dance around like a couple of <laughs> boomers trying to get attention. All right. <laughs> how, uh, how old are you? I'm 42. Oh, okay. Great. Yeah. 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 I'm 44. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. How are you finding your 40s? I love them, man. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, it's mate. Like a good mix between being an adult and still being, identifying as younger than that. Right, right. Yeah. You can still get away with, uh, I have no idea where you are, by the way. I'm just looking generally in the studio. Um, Are you uh, are you finding, like, you've changed? Have you grown? Have you matured? I have. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Like a fine cheese. <laughs> exactly. Okay. And the the, uh, the aroma is there, too. Yeah, yeah well, well, there you go. That's the state aroma of you, is an, is an <laughs> aging right. cheese. More sort of a limb. Burger. Yes. Mm. Finally, I feel seen. <laughs> Thank you, Randy. I oh, smell wait. like a gym sock at this point. I've been on tour for so long, I'm literally just a, a yes. felty, my, the sweat just seeps into my felt. <laughs> <You are. laughs> the puppet is dancing. I've never been happier. Mr. Felt face to you. There is Pat Godwin in the performance room. My chick. There's Josh Arnold. Hello. The I Hate Steven Singer sidekick chair. There's Willie Griswold. <laughs> <laughs> Willie can't speak. He's laughing so hard. Yeah. There's Ace Cosby. You gotta watch this tonight on YouTube. It's so I'm Chick funny. McGee. Yes, you can see all this on YouTube. And here is Tom. Yeah. Now, now, where do you find that on YouTube, uh, Ace? YouTube.com. Okay. <laughs> now, um, I thought we would introduce our guest once again. He is Randy Feltface. Um, are you self-conscious about not I, having ears? I work great on radio. Okay. It's literally just me dancing. <laughs> yep. Tune in on YouTube. It'll make more sense. Yeah. yeah true. <laughs> No, I, I, you probably have trouble hearing me since you don't have any ears. I do. They're just very small. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> really, really the tiny. Yeah. Yes. Little, little ears. Same goes for the nose, obviously. Yeah. yeah. No, okay. I, I don't have a nose. Okay. Oh, Randy, right. you don't have a nose. How do you smell? Uh, terrible. <laughs> bow, bow. <laughs> Chicka down, down, down. <laughs> Woo. Oh, does that mean I'm officially part of the team yes. now? Yes, you are. <laughs> yes, now, I did uh, it. Hey, it's Josh Arnold with a food recommendation for you. Gardner's Wisconsin Cheese, their famous oven-baked cheese. It arrives pre-baked. You just heat it and eat it, grill it, skillet, or air fry it. Check out their new oven-baked cheese flavor, jalapeno. Ooey, gooey, spicy cheese. It's sure to tickle your taste buds with real jalapeno flavor and heat. Perfect for game day parties or any time. Excuse me, are, um, are you serious with it? I mean, why are you doing this? Me, uh, the real me is right here. I could easily be doing this. We, we don't need you, man. I, uh, look, 
There's only room for one of us. That's Gardner's Wisconsin cheese, jalapeno flavored oven baked cheese. It's now available in Gardner's oven baked bundle package. So try all the great flavors. Receive free cold pack shipping and free cheese curds when you spend $59 or more at GardnersWisconsinCheese.com. Click the link below and tell them your pal Josh, me the real Josh, from the Bob and Tom Show sent you. Going so fast. I didn't know you were going to go so fast. Oh, well. And I said, I didn't know you were going to go so damn slow. Yes, sir, if I were you, I wouldn't be taking my time because you don't have a lot left. Yeah. <laughs> well. You know, if I were you, you might want to yeah. uh, seize the day, as yeah. they say, before, <laughs> before yeah, you Let's go, America's best. Let's go here. <laughs> Greatest generation. Yeah. Morning laughter <laughs> just might be the best medicine. I can hear you. Oh, no. You're talking out your ass again. Bob and Tom. Thank you. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Hi, Tom. How are you? Doing great, thanks. Boy, you dumbassed all over that first half hour, didn't you? <laughs> boy, I, I oh, would boy. say the first 20 minutes. Okay. I think we'd be more precise. Uh, Still uh, throwing uh, wrenches. Uh, yep. Uh, yep. Joining us in the studio, <laughs> it's uh, comedian Frank Kelly. I, no, I left a while ago. <laughs> He's just back after missing the... How's your water, Frank? Really good. <laughs> Room temperature and flat. That's what he wanted. I got him nice, <laughs> nice flat water. Um, now uh, 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 we were talking off the air uh, were, with uh, with uh, Patty G and Mr. Frank Caliendo. Oh, somebody's got a tune. And um, I asked uh, Frank if he could sing, and uh, the answer is not really. Probably correct. But um, <laughs> uh, I thought uh, if we provided you with some great song lyrics the song Piano Man, you could perhaps uh, go through this with your various uh, famous people doing it. Uh, um, and um, I have a random list here. So um, I hope this isn't uh, unfair, but let's just let's just try this right now with the lyrics to Piano Man. Ladies and gentlemen, it's uh, comedian Frank Caliendo. Uh, uh, oh, I'm sorry, it's John C. Riley. Oh, I think I could probably sing of this one. It's nine o'clock on a Saturday. The regular crowd shuffles in. There's an old man. It's better than you thought it was going to be, isn't it? <laughs> well, to me. How about, How about, nice job. How about Morgan Freeman? Love to his tonic and gin. <laughs> he says, son, can you play me a memory? I'm not really sure how it goes. But it's sad and it's sweet. And I knew it complete when I wore a younger man's clothes. How about Tracy Morgan? La da 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 da. That would have been better as me. Da 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 da. Okay, uh, Paul Giamatti. Sing us a song. You're the piano man. <laughs> Sing us a song tonight. Well, we're all in the mood for a melody. You've got us feeling all right. <laughs> Adam Sandler. Ah, uh, here we go. Now, uh, John at the bar is a friend of mine. He gets me my drinks for free. And he's quick with a joke with a light up a smoke. But he's someplace that he'd rather be. Okay, uh, Jeff Goldblum. Uh, he says, uh, Bill, I believe this is what? It's killing me. Uh, there's a smile. Uh, ran away from his face. Well, I'm sure that I could be, uh, what, a movie star if uh, I could get out of this place. Yeah. How about uh, John Madden? <laughs> oh, la, 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 la. Well, speaking of sports, um, Mel Kuyper Jr. Uh, oh, now Paul is 
uh, talking about real estate novelist who uh, never had time for a wife. Uh, spent too much time with her doing a thing, and he's talking with Davy, who's still in the Navy. You know, the, the fact of the matter is, it's probably going to be for life. And the waitress, you know, <laughs> tremendous job talking politics and uh, the businessmen, who they're slowly getting stoned. Tremendous job, probably going to keep them lower in the draft. Yes, and sharing a drink they call loneliness, uh, but it's better than what? Drinking alone. Uh, it's, uh, Seth Rogen. Uh, 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 sing us a song here, the piano man, I guess. Uh, <laughs> a song tonight. Uh, we're all in the mood for a melody. Uh, and you've got us feeling all right. I got something that makes me feel all right, too. <laughs> uh, how about Al Pacino for a, a, a ending here? It's a good, pretty good crowd for a Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> and the manager gives me a smile. Because he knows that it's me. They've been coming to see to forget about life for a while. <laughs> and the piano, it sounds like a carnival. I thought it was going to cut me off, so I got big. And the microphone smells like beer. De Niro time. And they sit at my bar and put bread in my jar and say, man, what are you doing here? Oh. And Stephen A. Smith. Oh, la, da, 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 da. <laughs> Sing us a song, you the piano man. Sing us a song tonight. Ah, well, we're all in the mood for a melody. <laughs> and you've got us feeling all right. <laughs> Very nice. Frank Caliendo does Billy Joel. <laughs> the piano man. Thank you very much. Yes. That was great, Frank. Oh, I feel so good. Oh, you're welcome, guys. Very good. Very good. Uh, Frank, once again on tour. The showroom, Turning Stone Resort Casino, Verona, New York, Friday evening, April 12th. The next big show for Frank Caliendo. And beautiful, Keith. Uh, Sorry, beautiful. Pat was beautiful on the oh, piano. Thank, yeah, thank you for, yes. thank you for following amazing. me as opposed to the way it's supposed to be done. You were great. Oh, that's very nice. Thank you. Thank you, Pat Godwin. Pat Godwin will be on the guitar when he joins us uh, for a special event this Friday night. We will be um, in West Virginia doing a special show that morning with Duke Tomato joining us in the band. And then uh, that evening, it'll be uh, Patty G, Willie G, yours truly. Uh, let's see, Josh Arnold, Jeff Oske, and uh, Christy Lee. It'll be a fun show. Uh, those tickets are available at Ticketmaster.com for Charleston, West Virginia. Now we return to the news desk sitting in for Christy. It is Jess Hooker. What's going on over there? Experts say men go through their very own version of menopause hmm. called andropause. Oh, yeah. Shouldn't it be menopause? I would think, think that'd so. be the easy right there. Yeah. Right? Yeah. According to study finds, andropause refers to the age related decline in male hormones, resulting in depression, waning sex drive, sexual dysfunction, loss of muscle mass and tone, and increased abdominal fat. Hmm. A man's gradual loss of testosterone can begin as young as the age of 35 with a loss of 1 to 1.5% of total testosterone per year. By the age of 80, most male hormone levels decrease to pre puberty levels. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> That's very cheerful hearing that. <laughs> yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get an Android and a cell phone holster, okay? That's how old I am. I'm going to wear a sweater vest and. Do you think you'd ever do that? Get like a holster for your phone? No. Yeah. Or nor would I wear a sweater vest. <laughs> What's wrong with a sweater vest? Nothing you know he hates them. It just means you've you've reached manopause or whatever. A sweater vest and uh, sweat. You don't like sweatpants either, do you? No. Uh, Man. Uh, no. You're you're really missing the boat. I, no, I, I imagine Frank Kelly, you're probably a sweatpants guy, huh? Probably, yeah. Four or five. Uh, pairs. Yeah. I, I wore shorts today just to to uh, mix it up. Mm. Ah. I, but I do a lot of I do a lot of like uh, Amazon super cheap. Apparel, mm. so really? I could just throw it out. Because <laughs> <laughs> so, you, you're at your house a lot, right? Yeah, too much. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you have like an area you can go where your wife isn't? I used to, but now there's some of her junk in there. <laughs> oh. so it's slowly but surely. We've had a lot of rooms that uh, I I'm huh. told that I've got all these places that are just mine, but I look around and it's all her stuff. So do you want out? <laughs> <laughs> I know a guy. You, you need a safe house. <laughs> No, I love it. I love it. I love it. Frank, right, didn't you it. have a second house? Yeah, that, yeah, that's, yeah. I think that's what he's talking about. Yeah, yeah my son's out there, though, now. No. So. No, no, it, yeah, no, the second half, yeah, yeah. I, I'm even just talking about a little <laughs> no. office now. It's I've moved past owning oh. that and understanding. Yeah, it's a place you can go. I, I, this manopause thing, this sounds kind of fake. 
Um, I don't think so. I mean, I don't, I don't think so at all. Yeah. Been don't around you, all of all. you enough. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you have a certain uh, cyclical rhythm with whatever you all planet do. you yeah, want but to Yeah, but I think this is... I, I think uh, menopause can be a lot more serious with... Don't you think that a lot more... I, I think, think it belittles I, menopause a little bit. Yeah, I, th I think but that the, I think that the symptoms of of menopause are more extreme. Yeah, and, yeah, and, I, yeah, and they're and obviously they affect us more. All this is saying Whatever. is that the the, 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 the gradual. <laughs> Josh, how could you say that? <laughs> the, the gradual decline, I think, is is the, I think yeah, as Josh, you put it best. I think this is kind of saying, okay, we have it too. Yeah, no, no uh, let's relax, guys. I, but I don't think any guys are going, I'm going through menopause or, or andropause. Yeah, or... no, I don't think so. <laughs> He's going, yeah, I'm getting older. Yeah, at least I don't have my period anymore. That was a hassle, huh? Right, yeah, Josh? No kidding. Man, this, yeah, no. What does uh, yeah. menopause, yeah, is a real legit oh, yeah. Yeah. thing yeah. It will, that affects... It will wreck your life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 What does... I've never seen a woman suddenly go, I'm going to go get New Balance sneakers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what does oh, my doll have in it that helps with... Uh... I know uh, it's a, naproxen, napro but that's a and caffeine. Yeah, that's a a painkiller. But what does it have to? I guess I. It does. Anything, I think it has a really good ad agency mood? behind yeah, it. Yeah, I maybe. don't really think there's anything else yeah. in there. Yeah, okay. I think it's just a probably helps some, but yeah, yeah, hmm. Hmm. yeah. This is one of the like it reminds me of those things like. Uh, Oh, I'm a chocoholic. Oh, really? You're oh, God. addicted to chocohol. You, you've lost your family and your job. <laughs> really? you know. Yeah, I heard there's fentanyl in it now, yeah, right? Not. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's not, let's keep the alcoholism analogy out of our. Desserts, it is odd. Please. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Although Nikki Glazer had a great joke once. If she doesn't mind me, she goes, "Yeah, my mom is a shopaholic. She's addicted to shopping for alcohol." <laughs> <laughs> Well, why did they ever put the the, the suffix on alcoholic is just ick, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It's not a holic. A hall is right. part of alcohol, right. right? So it would be chocolate ick. Yeah, exactly. That's what. Yeah, yeah. Right. that's what it should you don't be. Need chocolate. I'm a, I'm I'm chocolate ick. It's like when they put gate on the end of stuff because of Watergate. Uh, yeah, the name of the hotel it has nothing to do. It's not a suffix yeah. that actually right. means something. <laughs> right. So ick is the only alcohol, and if you're addicted to alcohol, it's ick. Yeah. Alcohol ick. I'm yeah. a chocolate. Chocolate ick. Sugar ick. You, you, you're not a hall. But you got to hand it to him for the gate thing sticking around. That it's was pretty than, amazing. That's true. Yeah. What yeah. was it 60 years ago? I mean, it's all, and it's still being a, a, a lopped on the stuff. Deflate gate, Tom. <laughs> what about yeah. deflate gate? Deflate gate, absolutely. Yeah. Where the cheating New England Patriots put the balls. <clears throat> all right, sorry. I uh, good morning, Tom. My name is Jim. I live in Ohio. Sweet baby Jesus. <laughs> Can you watch it next time, please? I damn near drove off the road when you said the white chicks thing. Just a Will you watch your mouth? If, if, had it been written down in the sheet, I probably wouldn't have. That's Jim. Oh, wh what are you blaming? You the mistake? It's it wasn't written it's not down written for here, It's not written. There. No, I had no idea this was part of that tour. Really? The white chicks are. You're the, really uh, blaming? Jesus. What's it called? Again. Yeah. But had it been written down, he wouldn't have done it twice. <laughs> it's not inaccurate. Oh, Tom. It isn't inaccurate, but it's the wrong name. <laughs> because it sends the wrong message. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, yeah. Don't you envy him to have that kind of attitude about yourself? <laughs> well, it's not my fault, certainly. It was written down. Yeah, nobody's going to get a joke anymore. Well, nobody, and, uh, and don't blame me. Uh, a joke now. <laughs> not a mistake. No. It was a joke that nobody can take. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. Um, <clears throat> Everybody loves white. What are the signs of aging for you and a man, uh, Miss Hooker? I mean, you th there's certain things you see and go, okay. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I have one. I, I, for me, it's just, um, I mean, I know women complain too, but when guys complain, like, I just feel like that's that's kind of oh, old. Oh, you're, you're about getting anything? old and crouchy, that yeah, kind of thing? Yeah, that kind of thing. Right, right, right. Oh, yeah. Geez. Yeah. Keep it to yourself. That's right. <laughs> yeah. I don't, yeah. So like the fact that I want to get a lock for my thermostat, does that mean I'm getting old? Yeah. Oh, that wow. Must. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I would say, you're going to get one of those clear panel boxes that goes over <laughs> oh, it. Oh, yes. And put the little. I think they'd sell those in uh, packs of twos with the giant sunglasses, too. <laughs> yeah, and I, yeah. But I would need that for my new apartment I'd have to move out to right. move into. Maybe Frank and I could become roommates. Yeah. The new odd couple. Aren't Sex you, drive uh, is for me. That's, that's really yeah. yeah i had a buddy recently go uh, hey i got a 
Pornhub subscription. You want my password? Uh -huh. And I was like, eh, I'm all right. But if I were 24, oh, right. sure. I'd be like, yes, and I'll see you in three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> no. What happened? This is your uh, aches and pains, right, Tom? I mean, he gets some aches and pains. Yeah, give, just, get yeah. going. Yeah. Um, yep. Well, the, I'm trying to think of what else. Uh, needing a lot more sleep and not getting it, that's a problem. The monochromatic clothes, I feel like that happens a lot. Like, it's, mm. it's yeah, I'm looking you mean at like you. Me? Then yeah. I've been dressing like an old man my whole life, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, right, yeah. Well, in the winter, I wear the Carhartts, and they're, you put the, yeah, you're colorful. Flair, yeah, yeah, yeah. One does want a hint of color, Frank. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was just trying to think. I've started to. I'm trying to think of some of the things that I. I've actually started to go the opposite way, where I've tried to start. I've realized I'm getting older, so I'm doing more things to take care of myself. Yes, yes. Uh, that's that's more the way I've gone. Like I hadn't been to the doctor for maybe a couple decades, and mm -hmm. then I went. I had to get. I had to have two teeth removed. Oh, so I'm like, I better go and have a physical. So I went and had the physical. And uh, I was worried what the numbers were going to come back. I thought my, what is it, your... Uh, A1C? A1C was going to come back as syrup. I thought <laughs> <it was> gonna... <laughs> Yes, yeah. <laughs> um, but it came back good, but it came back fine within, rel you know, good numbers because I exercise so mm -hmm. much. Uh, but uh, my blood pressure was crazy. My mm. blood pressure was very high. I was like 175 Ooh. over 90-something. Oh, that's high. Uh, wait. Wait, the story gets better. <laughs> so um, so I did that, got it done, um, got, uh, got on a, a medication. Then I went two weeks later to go have my teeth extracted. Um, and uh, I sat in the chair. And blood pressure, because they were going to put me under. First of all, I, I, we're driving. My wife's driving me there. It, we're in traffic. I don't like traffic. I like, that's why I like being a comedian. You drive at weird times. Traffic was bad. Michelle's uh, the, the head of the HOA. Queen, I think, is her title. Uh -huh. And she's talking about all the problems in the HOA. I'm starting to build up anger and stuff like that. I oh, get man. there. <laughs> and uh, they say, oh, we didn't know we were putting you under. Because I didn't listen to everything they said, like the important parts. <laughs> so uh, they... they Put that down, then they can do it. And Michelle's making a fuss about it, my wife, and a little bit. Not a bad, but just like, how could you not know that kind of a thing? I'm like, because I'm an idiot and I need your help on everything. <laughs> uh, so I sit in the chair. Blood pressure goes to 232 oh. over 130. Oh. And he goes, you, uh, they tested it a, a bunch of times. It went up gradually to get to that point. And then he tested it, and he's, the, the oral surgeon was kind of laughing because he's like, it might be a record. You know? yeah. <laughs> he's, like, he's doing bits, which is great, which I kind of like because it like, broke it a little bit for me. But he's like, you need to go to a hospital uh, now. So I went home. Uh, <laughs> and I, what I did was I just relaxed myself to get myself down, uh, and I, um, I took a warm shower and a bunch of things and just tried to breathe. I breathed through it. And I got myself down to my normal numbers, which is still fairly high, but like 135-ish over 80-something. So I call the doctor the next day, and he goes, no, you did exactly what you should have done because if you go to the emergency room, your blood pressure is going to go crazier while you're sitting there worried, and you already had the anxiety. So Frank's experience may not be your own. <laughs> <laughs> we have to... <laughs> yeah, it's, I, I, I have a, a question that's kind of not on topic but is. Were you concerned that with the teeth taken out, it would affect your ability to do voices? Yeah, 100%. So I had remember done, this, remember the teeth? Freddie Mercury thing? The yeah, singer what? Freddie Mercury didn't want to get his teeth fixed because he was afraid it would ruin his singing voice. Right. One of my teeth had been actually broken. They were both molars. One of them had been broken for 30 years. And they... They, they couldn't believe there was so little bone loss. I'm like, that's because I'm Cro-Magnon. I, you know, I have a giant skull. I have a giant head. And they're like, that's probably pretty close. But it is weird. You go to the dentist, and th it sounds like a bit, but this is real, that... Uh, that when they want you to do voices while you're in the... <laughs> no! <laughs> like I'm doing, could you do some Morgan Freeman? <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. That's amazing. Now do John C. <laughs> yeah, the, the dentists probably would be good uh, code breakers because they can understand people talking yes. <laughs> while having uh, tools in their mouth. Right now, uh, we're hanging out with comedian Frank Caliendo. I want to remind you that uh, our friends at HelloFresh have something new going on including a new code 
which is BTS House Suite. I will explain why in just a second. HelloFresh wants to make mealtimes a lot easier and a lot better by sending you that box in the box, fresh ingredients, of course, and the recipe cards, and everything is pre-measured and ready to go. You put together delicious recipes, the kind of stuff you'd be uh, never be able to figure out on your own. You become a better chef, of course, and uh, you're going to have everybody clean their plates. By the way, HelloFresh right now has over 45 recipes on any given week and over 30 calorie smart and protein smart options on the menu so you can stay on top of your food goals. Don't spend a lot of time wandering around the grocery store trying to find ingredients and looking everything up. Nope. HelloFresh has everything in the box. You put it together. Have some fun. What are you working on over there, Jess Hooker? Oh, I just made the sticky spicy chicken with sesame rice. Uh, fresh, delicious ingredients prepped and prepared in less than 30 minutes. Uh, sign up today, by the way, and you'll get a, a free dessert for life. As long as you keep that uh, HelloFresh subscription up and running, free dessert. That's why we have the new code BTS House Suite. So you go to HelloFresh.com slash BTS House Suite. Join HelloFresh today and get that free dessert for life. Once again, one free dessert per box with an active subscription by going to HelloFresh.com slash BTS How Sweet. Coming up, we're still hanging out with Frank Caliendo, and we'll uh, review what happened in, on this day in history. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Hey. Hey, did you enjoy those videos played in that break? Check out the Bob and Tom YouTube playlist for more great stuff. Okay. I'm going to play a new song for y'all. See, if you, like it. See if you like it. All right. And be sure and Bob go, ha, 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 like you do. <laughs> okay, I can okay. do that. I was just getting ready to do that after I saw your picture. <laughs> That looks pretty accurate. Yeah, Have you ever had one of those days when nothing goes right? Your wife starts bitching about whatever it was she was bitching about last night. So you escape into the bathroom just to sit there on your throne. But after you finish your business, the toilet paper's gone. <laughs> well, it's a great day for me to whoop somebody's ass. It's a bad day. So you better get off of my back. You might get cold, cock. <laughs> If you cross my path Cause it's a great day For me to whoop somebody's ass yeah. Of all the radio shows I've ever done I've never done one where they could sing a song They've never heard Isn't that That's amazing? I was, <laughs> I was saying the same thing How do we know the words to a new song? <laughs> Y'all must be working for Dion Warwick and the Psychic Friends. <laughs> well, I was running late for work, so I poured me some coffee to go. And just before I had a flat tire, I spilled it all over my clothes. When the highway patrolman pulled up, I thought the help was on the way. But when he saw that tire tool in my hand, he shot me with pepper spray. Laugh. Well, it's a great day for me to whoop somebody's ass. It's a bad day. So you better get off of my back. You might get cold, cock. If you cross my path, cause it's a great day for me to whoop somebody's ass. All right. Mm -hmm. This last verse is for everybody that don't like their boss at work. Mm -hmm. When I finally made it to work, I was 15 minutes late. I told my boss about the flat tire, but he fired me anyway. So here I am in the parking lot, just waiting by his Corvette. I'm gonna give him a goodbye present that he never will. 
still forget <laughs> laughing thing. It's, it's a, a great day for me to whoop somebody's ass. It's a bad day. <laughs> <laughs> so you better get off my back. You might get cold cocked. If you cross my path Cause it's a great day For me to whoop somebody's ass Oh yeah! Thank you. Yeah, I like it. Paul Thorne. Hey, it's Tom from the Bob and Tom Show. Miss some of the show? Become a Bob and Tom VIP and subscribe to the audio and video podcasts. The Bob and Tom Show, on air, on app, and on demand. Oh, uh, ow. Oh, back. Oh. oh, hey, Josh. What's wrong? My back is sore. My legs. What's in your shoe? Nothing. Mm-hmm. I mean, here, look, nothing. Ah. Uh. Joshua, you have to have proper support. Huh. Orange insoles. Orange insoles, you say? Yeah, look. Yeah, yeah I see them. Look at this. They're great. Yeah. Orange insoles. I'll give them a shot. Great. All see right. you later, buddy. Give it a... Oh. Yippee! I can mow and dance while I do it. Ha! No more pain. Thank you, orange insoles. <gasps> oh, Josh! Josh that- did you get orange insoles? Jessica, I sure did. Thanks to orange insoles, I feel great. Terrific! <laughs> See you a- later. <laughs> orange insoles. Feel better, do more. The bumper stickers on that'll be horrible. Mm-hmm. You know, my orphan child is an honor student. <laughs> <laughs> Beautifully done. Uh-huh. Scott done, ladies we and gentlemen. Winner. Maybe it's just me. my wife and I will miss staying up and watching Ted Coppolate. Ted Coppolate <laughs> during rerun week. My wife spends her days wondering which episode will channel foreplay, foreplay. And every night after Ted's climax, we switch to Leno's show and we always ask, how nice would it be to be? BJ, how nice would it be to BJ? <laughs> Was I right? Mrs. K? I'm not disappointed. <laughs> how about that? It's big. Bob and Tom. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Just look at the news desk. There's Pat Godwin in the performance room. Hello. Josh Arnold. Is Hi. Here, Ace Cosby. Mm-hmm. I'm Chick McGee, and here's Tom with our special guest. Mm, he's Frank Caliendo. Yes, he is. The great comedian, Frank. Uh, Friday, uh, this is coming up on the 12th of April. It'll be the showroom at uh, Turning Stone Resort and Casino, starring Frank Caliendo. That'll be a great show. Uh, get your tickets now for a great, great weekend, actually, because you can go there, have some fun, then stick around, have even more fun. Now, um, it's time for us to uh, show Frank how we like to wrap things up by uh, uh, doing a little bit of a lesson for everyone. Today in history, what number is it in April, Tom? Two. Dose. Very good. The deuce. Wow. Um, <laughs> the dose. Uh, 1513. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that was a while ago. Uh, Martin Luther. Who is credited with um, the, uh, shall we say, European uh, uh, discoverers? Um, Ponce right de word. Leon. Yeah. And I used to love the... Uh, is the, it? Uh, yeah, yeah. The Scrooge oh. McDuck thing, Ponce de Loon. <laughs> Ponce de Loon. <laughs> That's how, what I called him when I was little. 
And that's when I first heard about the Fountain of Youth. Sure. Wouldn't that be great? That's a weird first name. Ponce? Yo, Ponce! Ponce! <laughs> Ponce, my man. Ponceinator! Sweet, sweet uh, Ponce. Yes. That's it's sweet. It's sweet. Short for Poncerelli. <laughs> <laughs> Arthur Poncerelli? Arthur Poncerelli, yeah. Hey. Mr. Um, C. <laughs> this is a really obscure fact that I think is more interesting than most of the other things on this date. In um, 1931, 17-year-old Ms. Jackie Mitchell purportedly struck out Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig in an exhibition game. Now, some said it was a publicity stunt, but uh, Babe and Lou never never let on that it was. Yeah. Hmm. Was she a part of the the female baseball teams? Uh, like or apparently. Uh, um, but it, uh, who knows? That That's just an obscure... So she just didn't come out of the crowd and... And have a baseball yeah, I'm not sure. The There's or... not that much information here. I'm just really? So it's on the roster here. But, uh, I mean, the babe was probably drunk, and <laughs> maybe the ALS was kicking in for, I don't know. Why. <laughs> okay. Or, or maybe she was just good. Yeah, could have been a real good thrower. Yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> you know what? Well, that was... <laughs> just, no, I don't believe it. <laughs> you know what? That's, that's far worse what you just did than having no information. <laughs> that was amazing. I know. Thank you. Okay. You're, you're welcome. All right. Uh, let's see. Wow. Uh, 1956, uh, Josh. Brooklyn Dodgers. Oh. Which soap opera premiered? Oh, in 1956? Yeah. I believe that was Guiding Light. No, <laughs> as the world, as the world turned. turns. Yeah. That's 54 damn... seasons, more than 13,000 episodes. Are they, are they on right now? No. No. It says it ended in 2010. As the world turns. A lot of them are just streaming now. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I've never really? been caught up in them. I, I've had friends that have, but have you ever been caught up in a soap opera? Um, yeah, we watched Passions in college. Well, that was the smutty one. That oh, was awful. It was so bad. <laughs> it was so bad. And then the uh, the was it Supernatural or something about Passions? Yeah. Yes, there yeah. was. There was a witch yeah. and there was a dwarf and yeah, yeah there was a lot of things. But uh, Tim and then Conway. I, I watched all the. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to do kiss me now. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to do, do the touch toes Dorf. first. Hey, Tim, Tim, the, the gag is enough. You don't need the accent, too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, birthdays. Happy birthday, 1742. Charlemagne. Yeah. One of the first uh, to go with the one name thing. Mm -hmm. Charles, great, buddy. Buddy. Uh, Charlemagne, Elvis, Cher. Um, Isn't there an awful Steely Dan song called Charlemagne? It's a great song. King Cher. God. Pick Charlemagne. a melody. Oh, it's a they tremendous a good song. Ones, Can't Josh. do anything with it. Oh, it's about a drug dealer. I love it. It's a, it's a great. Oh, you were Italian in there. A right? mess. Uh, okay, how about another one uh, for the one name thing? Uh, uh, I'll tell you what, Frank. You're of uh, Italian heritage. What was the first name of uh, this guy born in 1725? Casanova. Mario. So I'm so sorry. Uh, uh, good Giacomo. Guess. Giacomo. Giacomo oh. Casanova. Leave it Which, loose. Casanova means, of course, um, house that explodes, right? Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, uh, so, of course, yeah. New oh, house. I yeah. Oh, I that, that, well, okay, sorry. Oh. I don't know. Um, Hans Christian Andersen, born in 1805. He would make terrifying uh, Disney cartoons. And, okay, this is people, an easy one. Uh, people uh, got a lot of job interviews. They hope to have a Hans job. <laughs> they did. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I, I want, Thank you. I, I, I want Frank to go out on a positive one, so I'm going to give him an easy one. Okay. 1875, uh, this man founded a car company. What car company was it? His name was Walter Chrysler. Chrysler. <laughs> there we go. See? I'll make the guests feel good. Nope, it was Almost Waltz got... Vroom Vrooms. <laughs> no, 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 no. Did you guys? And the first model, the Jesus Chrysler. No? Uh, okay. okay. Uh, let's see. Um, Nothing uh, for Waltz Vroom Vrooms. Alec... <laughs> well, it was silly. Alec Guinness, born in this date in 1914. Okay, well, Can you do Alec Guinness? The bottom of the barrel. Uh, Even at the droids you're looking for. Yeah, just did it. Suck on that, Kelly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Marvin Gaye, uh, born in this date. Was not. 39. Yeah. yeah. Mr. Gay. Didn't we have a story about him yesterday? Yeah. It was, yeah. Uh, his, he was his, killed the day before, before his, his birthday. birthday yeah. Yeah. It's brutal. By his mm -hmm. dad. Probably something about his birthday. Don't say I never gave you nothing. Bam! 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 Hey, bam. Number one with a bullet. <laughs> Boy. Uh, Tom has mace. Uh, this is things we learned uh, to, on today's show. Tom has mace in his scissor drawer. Mm -hmm. Is that for dog attacks? Yes. Yeah. Uh, if, you're, if your dog ever gets attacked by a coyote or another dog, you want it's okay to spray mace on him. A, a coyote. A coy coyote. Coyote. Sorry. Coyote. My neighbor's dog was just killed by a coyote. 
Sorry for your neighbor. Story. <laughs> Boy, it's true. <laughs> what else we learned? So many things are true. We, we don't mention them all I'm the trying to help people. I'm just saying. Josh, guess, 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 we, learned, so we, uh, nice. uh, we learned that you don't end the show on a high note. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, we sure don't. Oh, that's not, thank you very much. Uh, what was your name again? <laughs> Bunch of white chicks going to go do comedy. Isn't that right? Yeah. Like that. Southern ones. Yeah, southern white chicks. <laughs> Josh had a dream. He adopted two children that came from a lab. Yeah. They were, like, named D-103 and D-104, <laughs> and D-103 had a cold, and I had to give them some nose spray. And they, but they you were, my, that part they were out my boys. Now, see, so wow. you spent so much time in South Korea. I heard that uh, you were going to adopt a, uh, a a child from there. I'd love to. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. Name, name him Kia. Kia? What? <laughs> Kia. Hyundai? <laughs> Ford? Anything? Uh, end on a positive note, right? Yeah. Note. Are you walking out of the building. Okay. <laughs> positive for everybody. Up here, I'm halfway to the car. <laughs> Don't slam the door, Frank. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Just got to get a hold of us. Call, fax, mail, or email. Get all the contact information you need at bobandtom.com. This is the Bob and Tom Show.